where's Lydia? It looks like she's on with um, the, her video off. Oh, now I know. You guys couldn't hear anything I was saying. I had the mute off. I said, it's 6.30. Let's light this candle. <laughs> and then nobody responded. I'm like, wow, okay. I had my, I was <laughs> muted. That's Whatever. pretty powerful. No oh, exactly. one responded, huh? <laughs> <laughs> No one, responded one, a few, no one responded a few minutes ago either, but I you planned that one. Mary. That's another issue. Mary comes on, we're not going to answer. Just, you just talk like to no yourself, hand. Jim. Exactly. Otherwise known as Tuesday. All right. Kind of aging. Exactly. All right. Lydia, can you hear us? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, so after our conversation, you guys, I, I talked to everybody. Before we get started, I do want to let everybody know that we're going to um, uh, try to break at 8.30 because sometimes, I, you know, we go on uh, before we call the meeting to order everything. Um, I've asked uh, Stephanie to um, uh, remind me that when we get to the 8.30 mark, let's take like a five or 10 minute break um, just because we got a lot a big agenda and want to make sure we can stretch our legs for a few minutes and, you know, uh, take a, bit, a couple moments, just FYI. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to the uh, Federal Way Regular City Council meeting for November 17th of 2020. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance. To, the pledge allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic, and to the and Republic. Republic for which it stands. For what you stand, one nation, one nation, one nation, under God, under God, under God. God. Indivisible. 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 indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, with liberty, with and, liberty and justice, justice for, all. for all. Oh, we did so well the first meeting today. I think we've got a little bit of room to improve on that. Um, Continuous what, what improvements. We, well, exactly, exactly. All right, everybody, um, uh, welcome. And uh, we've got a lot on our agenda. So I will not, uh, uh, all of it is to the contrary. I won't uh, delay us any further. Um, as you know, uh, the governor uh, made a, uh, a big announcement. We knew that there was an announcement uh, uh, coming up and uh, um, with regard to the uh, uh, new restrictions. Uh, it was a press conference on Sunday at 11 a.m. And he talked about the new restrictions. As a result of the new restrictions, actually, Ade, can you uh, uh, can you uh, stop sharing that just for a second? Let me just talk for thirty seconds. Um, we can roll that back. Okay. So, as a result, I, I, I want to set the table here before we uh, before we uh, uh, get into it. Um, as a result of the new restrictions in regard to uh, the governor's order and the closing of in uh, 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 in restaurant dining, which will be a huge impact to the restaurants in our community um, and uh, the, uh, the restrictions in regard to local retail um, and the capacity, the closure of gyms and, and gymnasiums and fitness facilities. Uh, first, as a result, I made the decision as a result of all that to close the Federal Community Center I know that uh, the uh, council has probably received a few emails uh, regarding uh, the federal way pool. And while the governor did clarify the next day uh, that pools can remain open just because of the, 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 the wildfire that is the uh, pandemic right now, I, I think it's clearly, and you probably saw my email in response, um, I think we need to keep the community center uh, closed uh, for now through at least December 14th uh, because of the uh, you know, what it, what Patty Hayes with King County described today during a briefing of 181% um, increase um, that they're seeing countywide um, with an average of 547 test, uh, positive tests per day. That's the average. We're averaging 39 uh, tests per day positive, but we're getting um, a positive test in the 50s and now up to the 60s per day in the city of Federal Way. So we're, we're still at about um, the high 40s, I believe 47 for the number of fatalities in the state. But this thing is, um, as the governor has said, is, is really ramping up. And I, uh, uh, Wendy, my wife, uh, just forwarded me an article before we started here talking about how the state of Washington is actually 
what they refer to as a red state. It's a uh, in the red zone for levels of infection. So I am just really, I know that each and every one of you um, have, you know, are concerned about not only the health and safety of our community, and I know our community watching now as well, but and I know that you have a big heart for the businesses in this in the city and, and your on your request when we talked about CARES Act funding previously was that we get it out quickly. Um, and and that there would be a real emphasis on getting that out. Now I want to let the community know that we got out nearly nine hundred thousand dollars in federal CARES Act money um, to um, you know well over um, eighty nine. Uh, businesses, either in $1,000 or $2,000 grants um, in two rounds of CARES Act funding. Um, and we, um, I got that out to everybody who, uh, it's a reimbursement process. So it was federal money that we got uh, in two disbursements, one at 2.94 million, and then the second one, 1.5 million, totaling uh, uh, about uh, $4.4 million in, in federal funding. Um, and we've gotten that out and we're gonna give you a presentation about what the summary is of all that. The purpose of the presentation now is that we do, we have identified left, not left over, but unallocated and or unspent federal CARES Act money. We need to deploy this money in my opinion and I, and I want to share it with you as quickly as possible. We want to, we need to get that money out to our uh, primarily restaurants, uh, which are disproportionately affected. Um, as brick and mortar businesses in the city of Federal Way as fast as possible. We also need to encumber this money and spend this money prior to the end of this month. So uh, with that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to Ade, who's got uh, PowerPoint and uh, Tim Johnson uh, will be giving some commentary as well because we have been, um, before this meeting today, I signed um, uh, over 60 letters uh, to local businesses that we think, uh, restaurants that we think would be immediately eligible for up to five thousand uh, dollar grant, several thousand, depending on how many we get, uh, grants that we can get those out the door right away, um, and we sent those out via email uh, to these businesses. So we're moving fast, but we also need to make sure that we fully inform you, uh, the council, and also the public as um, uh, as we go through this process. With that, a day, please. Did I take your presentation today? <laughs> We're good. <laughs> okay. 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 Mm -hmm. We're good. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, good evening, Mayor, Council President Honda, and Council. This is just a, a recap of what we've done before. To give you a little bit of a background, I think uh, we got the four state grant award a while back, and uh, we did the grant process, and we went live with that in July. Uh, we did our budget amendment July 21st of that same month. Then we got the second state grant award, which was in September. You know, just so that you can see the gap between the time that you made the budget amendment and when we got the second grant award, which is currently not in our budget now. So on page three of the budget amendment that I made, the presentation that I made to the council a while back, this is the amendment that we made to general fund. And here is these that was specifically identified in that presentation. This is the first state grant, 2.3, 2.93 million. And this is the way we plan to spend it. At that time, we allocated 2,030,000 to fund the grant to the businesses. That is what was included as we explained it to you and as, as you approved at that time. So then we got the contract amendment, as our mayor pointed out, the 1.5 million. Uh, we briefed the council September 15. 
the mayor signed our contract September 22nd, uh, and the additional funding was one million four hundred sixty-seven thousand six hundred. Uh, the contract with the amendment was extended from October 30, 2020, to November 30. That means the spending, the items that we've acquired and paid for by November 30. That is all that we can get reimbursement for, and that is part of what you know. Part of why Mayor was saying we need to get this money out. If today is November 17, we have till Monday 30 to physically write the check and get it out for us to qualify to get this reimbursement. But the cash to this is Mayor doesn't want to leave any money on the table. And that is why we want to make sure whatever step that we need to take to make sure we're able to spend all of this money. The contract terms remain the same. So we've brought most of this to the council because the second grant is not included in the current budget, but we've brought all of these items to the council. Uh, the additional computer for IT, I think 337, vehicles for public works, about 360, cleaning facility upgrade for parks, 309, budget system for finance, that is the uh, uh, the budget software. I think that was probably the last one that was brought to the council. Then additional funding for grant. What I just pointed out to you earlier, the, excuse me, the 2.03, that is the first grant. So in the second grant, we're adding additional 99,000. So that is what we're supposed to spend on the grant. But uh, later on, here's the distribution of two, uh, the first grant. That is the original amount. The council reallocated a portion of this, put some into the rent assistance, a portion of it into the daycare program. That brings your original grant down to 1,300,000. And if we subtract <clears throat> as of today, we've paid, as Mayor pointed out, almost about 870,000 in grant to the businesses out of this 1.3 million. So we have outstanding 434 knowing that we have limited time to spend this money. And this is the second addition from the second grant. So we have about 533 left. Also, the allocations that we've made, public works or IT, if they do not spend that, we want to be able to use that to fund this business grant that the mayor is talking about. But that is where the money that we are allocating to. Most of it are part of these two million that you've already allocated from the first grant to the business grant. And that is my great. Thank you. Council, I wanted to let you know that um, I misspoke when I said 80 before. It was 80 restaurants, but we helped, we have, we've helped out hundreds of local businesses. With that, uh, this is the order. I've got Council President Honda and then Council Member Sefa Dawson. Council President Honda. Thank you very much. Um, I have three questions. So I'd like to know how the public works vehicle qualifies for care spending. Okay. I've been wondering that for a while. Um, what would this money have been spent on if this need hadn't arisen at this point? And if we can't get all of this money out to restaurants who, who need it for, for support for the next four weeks, could we buy some tents and then get tents out, have tents available, get those out later after the, the 30th? Uh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead today. 
to answer your first uh, question, yes, the public works through qualify for this because currently what we are doing is having three employees in one truck or you know, from uh, job site to job site. Part of social distancing do not allow this. And we check with the state and they authorize that to, in order to maintain social distancing. That is why they authorize this. Okay. Uh, uh, for the- Mayor, can I clarify one thing on that? Okay. Yes, please. would you please, EJ? That's so, EJ, Walker just... Public Works Director. Thank you. Just, uh, I guess, for the sake of clarity, so Public Works administers the fleet fund. So the vehicles themselves are not all for Public Works. They're vehicles citywide for parks, parks. Dumas Day, um, IT, you know, across the board. But the, the reason a day is listing is exactly right. Um, and, and it's listed as Public Works because we administer the fleet fund on behalf of the city. But this is a basically everything non-police. Um, it covered vehicles across many departments, and it, for exactly the reason the day said to get vehicle to get staff separated out to be COVID compliant. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank, was that it? Uh, oh, and you were talking oh. about possible tents. And and what what would this funding had been spent on if this hadn't come up? Uh, well, I think it probably would have been spent on, you know, we're still pushing the grant. I think uh, we will be able to use it for additional, maybe, I think um, uh, Mayor just agreed to help the school district in terms of uh, the uh, uh, Wi-Fi, again, which is allowed because he allowed the students to do social distancing. Yeah whatever it is that will qualify under the benefit, which we will have brought it to you, to you for consideration. And so the tents, if, if we can't get this funding out or it doesn't look like enough restaurants will be applying, if we had a stockpile of tents and this restriction goes on longer than four weeks, which is very possible because December 14th, we're gonna be hearing about the Thanksgiving increase in COVID, um, it'll be hitting about that time. So a tent would allow a restaurant or even a, a business to possibly be open. It's a good thought. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at this. Uh, we're looking at other ways to uh, make sure that we encumber the money. And I've got, um, in talking with area cities that I was meeting with today with SCA, um, I was, um, I, I, we've got some ideas about making sure that we encumber the money to where it doesn't go unspent. So I want to make sure before I kind of roll something out that I'm positive about it. So I, I'm having okay. legal and finance, check it out, but, but you're absolutely right. Let's do things that really help people in a real, it's a great idea. It's a very creative idea to, uh, to do everything we can to help our businesses. We cannot have them fail. And so I think that's what that, that's what that comment's geared toward. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and then EJ, let's talk about, can you write that down? Let's talk about that. And then, uh, let's, let's think about if we need to, if we need to deploy the funds in the, in that way. Um, council member, uh, Mayor, ju just oh, for, for clarity, I think yeah. we have to pay the invoice by November 30. Yeah. You know, so it's not just a promise to pay. It's not just to set the money aside for something we have to pay the bill by November 30. And what makes this really critical? And Tim Johnson will let you know how I've been you know, hammering on him. Next week, I mean, we have two days off. Boom, we come back on Monday and that is November 30. So we don't have much time left. So, if you, if that is uh, uh, what the council wants to do and what the mayor wants to do, I think that decision needs to be made now so that if the money is left, we don't have to come back to the council because there's no time. And I think uh, uh, we have to get this done in a short order. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. 
Councilmember Sefa Dawson, and then I'm going to have Tim talk after that. Thank you so much. Um, so one of the things I think hopefully we could also do is that I do like your um, suggestion, Council President Honda, uh, about the tents. Maybe hope um, we could also have the city logo on it somehow, but maybe we don't have time. My question really is, since um, now we're going back to you know uh, closing down, we don't know how long it's going to be, like we've all stated. And I wonder if um, they'll be willing to give us an extension because maybe when this first rolled out, that may not have been an option or they didn't think it's gonna continue. My concern is as the longer this continues, um, the closures and all the restrictions, um, the money is gonna dry, dry out, right? So would they right. allow us, or I mean, is that even a possibility that the governor would consider to give all of us who have this money um, an extension um, that way, then at least it could be used wisely when needed, even if it's January, February, when when money's going to dry out and all our people are suffering and we don't know how to support them. Um, so hopefully maybe we can explore that. There's a possibility of additional funding coming from the state. What form that will take, what kind of uh, extension they will give, I do not know. So there's a possibility of additional funding coming. But these are the current fund, and because it's a direct fund from the federal government, and of course the federal government closed their own books early because the state too, whatever it is that we submit to the state, the state will have to turn around and also send the bill to the federal government. In addition to the additional funding coming from the state, I think that's also discussion, you know, nationally of another grant coming again what that would look like what time frame that would be i <clears> think <throat> uh, you know is okay. yet to be okay decided. thank you and um if we're also going to consider to um work with the school district especially around wi-fi i believe it would be great to purchase um a few um, laptops because i'm hearing from families who the school only gives computers to um, I don't know if it's, if it's for every child in mm -hmm. the household. I'm not sure. But I know parents who can't even work because they're even, um, giving their computers to their kids or um, the, the computers they have are not compatible. I've also heard that. So maybe that's also another option instead of just looking at Wi-Fi, looking at um, computers or laptops. Thank you so it is much. A, that's a Thank you. It's a very good thought, Council Member. And I, I actually I spoke with uh, Director Campbell earlier today and, and affirmed our commitment of the $100,000 in CARES Act, just, you know, CARES Act uh, for the Wi-Fi hotspots. And it's something that I think they very much appreciate. And they appreciate the partnership uh, that we've been working on. Also, with regard to your point in regard to state funding or other funding available, <clears throat> As I mentioned, I was on a conference call this morning with uh, Patty Hayes, of uh, King County Director of King County Public Health, uh, this morning with other SCA mayors, and um, she mentioned um, the fifty million dollars um, in aid that the governor mentioned on Sunday during his press conference. Now, it's not official yet, but I, I think with the, the general parameters that at least she was aware of, um, to have an idea of what uh, could come later this week. Um, so don't, you know, don't hold me to this specifically, but I think they were thinking about in a distribution of the 50 million, uh, possibly $30 million would be for a revolving uh, loan program um, to um, area business, state businesses, and then $20 million in immediate aid. So I think they are working on plans to uh, get that out. Hopefully we'll hear it later this week, but I do think that the state is very focused on um, you know, doing what they can to deploy resources uh, to make sure we don't have wide scale failure of our businesses. Um, and so that's that's a key uh, point. Um, Councilmember Moore? No, I'm sorry. Before we go to Councilmember Moore, um, well, let's do Councilmember Moore and then let's talk to uh, Tim real quick. Councilmember Moore? Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councilmember Sefadas and I, I appreciate what you said. And, and uh, certainly, Mayor Farrell, thank you for continuing to advocate for the Wi-Fi, I know that we've been working on that. And that's, that's been important. Um, you know, one thing I would add um, is maybe that's something we can discuss for the legislative agenda is adding funding for, um, you know, uh, laptops perhaps. 
uh, for students and, and whatnot. So just just a, a thought there that maybe that's an, another area of resource as well. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Great idea. We're going to talk about the legislative session later. And you know that we always incorporate, well, the past few years, we've incorporated the uh, the legislative agenda for the city, for the school district into ours. And we help the school district down in Olympia. And so we'll, you know, I'll, I'll instruct uh, Aaron, we'll, we'll talk about that. That's actually in the proposed legislative agenda or the tentative one you'll see tonight. Um, but that's something that we can really uh, make sure we we're put our shoulders behind and, and assist with that as well. Uh, Tim, you want to give uh, just some uh, some commentary here and background? Um, Council President, Council Members, uh, I want to go through a, quickly a couple items. <clears throat> um, first and foremost, um, a day and I called the state and asked for an extension. It has been silent from Olympia. So. I would suspect that given the shortness of the time that we have to deploy this, they probably are not considering an extension. Stranger things have happened. We'll see what occurs during the course of the week. But in regards to this deployment, uh, the city clerk and the city attorney um, identified a fairly innovative uh, action. So those who restaurants that had received our grants before and receive grants again simply based upon an amendment to the contract. And so we're proceeding with those right now in order to help those restaurants, specifically those that are brick and mortar, not folks that are working out of their home. We're talking about specifically those that received grants from us before and those that have only dining rooms in federal way, which there is a fairly um, large sum of those. May I also add and remind all of you that our restaurants, our owners, operators are predominantly uh, women and minority owned businesses. But we're right there working with them. The other item I wanna bring to your attention was is that um, I hope that my answer from council member Baruso last week about a question regarding the city of Kent using um, these CARES Act grants for the tents and for heaters. Um, I spoke with the city. Uh, I did respond, of course, to Council Member Baruso. Um, <clears throat> those can, the, the COVID money can be used, can be used for those elements. As Day said, we'll have to move quickly. If that is something that you want to move on, uh, we'd like to hear from you tonight so that we could make those and get those ordered uh, and get those here, if that at all possible. Now, let me just share this with you. I think it's a great idea. It's a good opportunity. You've, you've helped the restaurants in so many ways since you began this process back in March. Again, let me recall, you did the change in the sign code. Uh, code. You did the change on allowing uh, the use of parking lots for expanded um, dining room seating. Kudos to you, you were one of the first cities in the region to do that in a comprehensive approach. Um, in the context of this and moving forward with this, uh, people ask, well, we're one and done after we get the vaccine. Oh, no, 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 no. There are plentiful locations and opportunities that you could use those in future opportunities with the city, whether it's for the red, white, and blues, um, you, excuse me, I can't, the, the uh, taste of federal way or the flavor of federal way. There's a whole host of opportunities to be able to use that, uh, uh, the, that, that, that the inventory that you would be talking about buying. So it would never ever go to waste. So it would be a great asset. Um, in the context of, of uh, helping our restaurants, I wanna share this story with you. Um, <clears throat> the mayor talked about King County Public Health um, unfortunately, last week on Friday, I got a phone call from King County Public Health saying that they had just been asked to leave the premises, the parking lot of the Commons Mall. Now, they had arbitrarily gone out there to distribute PPE to our restaurants, but they did not get permission from the Commons Mall, so they were asked to leave. I got a phone call later that afternoon asking where they could go. And I said, we would accommodate them post haste. 
look back for it immediately on Monday or Tuesday. They have been using the property um, pack on the 314th side and are passing out material. Now they concluded today, but they will be making other upcoming scheduled um, deployments. And I think that's really good for all of our restaurants to have that free um, equipment provided to them. I ask that when we find out again, if we could not make sure that that gets on our, our um, on your, your Facebook page and gets distributed that way. I'd appreciate that. In that regard, I wanna share with all of you a management issue associated with that. I had a lovely conversation with the three from King County Public Health. And they were incredibly intelligent on the issues associated that our, our restaurateurs are facing right now. And I suggested to them, I said, it's too bad that you're being deployed just to pass out PPE. We really need you in, uh, in meetings with our restaurateurs to explain what, what, your, what, your, uh, what your observations are and how for them to best uh, manage through the pandemic, particularly now. So I'm hoping that what we could do is work on a strategic direction with King County Public Health, Mayor, President Council and council members to deploy that kind of service here into a federal way as a template to our 273 full and limited service restaurants that we have here. That's what I know today. Um, we need these restaurants really, really bad for a variety of reasons. And of course, um, big events coming our way after the first of the year in the way of the Northwest Conference Women's and Men's Swimming and Diving Championship, the Pac-12 Swimming and Diving Championships, and still the NC2A Men's and Women's Swimming and Diving National Championships. But we've got a lot coming at us in a relatively short period of time where we need this hospitality sector to be strong and um, uh, vibrant. Mayor, you're on mute. Mayor, you're muted. Wow, all right, take two. Um, <laughs> where was I? Um, all right, well, Tim, thank you very much. And thank you, council, uh, a good discussion. Um, we're gonna get this word out uh, wide and far and very fast. We've already sent all those letters out via email tonight. We're already getting some responses back. I wanna say thank you to Tim and uh, to Pam and Kathy here in the office that have just been working and our intern, Ben, um, uh, that has just been going absolutely uh, uh, 100 miles an hour to try to get this, uh, get this money out and do everything they can. <clears throat> Tim's already busy, so this is going to send him into hyperdrive, or has already done. So thank you very much, uh, Council. I want to let you know what we're up to. Okay, next. Oh, uh, Council President Honda. Uh, thank you. So should we amend this to have something in there to buy tents and heaters in case there's any funding left over? Um, well, what we... Um, Ryan, do we need to do that? Actually, I think it'd be less than 20,000. I think I could do that with, uh, but I, I, I doubt that we would exceed. Uh, Ryan? Sorry, I'm having issues here. Uh, there's no action. This is just a report. So I think most okay. of this money has been allocated. Yeah. Um, if I think we've heard you, if there's a way to make that work and the mayor agrees that we should buy the tents, then we could try to make that work and bring it back as a budget adjustment. Um, but um, I don't think any actions needed. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we would do the budget adjustment after. It's a good thought because yeah, I, I appreciate that because you want to make sure that, <clears throat> and we want to make sure that we're agile enough to do what we need to do to deploy the funds. So thank you. Um, okay, um, let's go ahead and uh, uh, thank you, Council. Uh, let's go ahead and, and move to the next item, which is item B, Proclamation for American Indian Heritage Month uh, on November 2020. Councilmember Moore. Uh, to Catherine Festa and Puyallup Tribe um, uh, Indian Chair uh, David Bean. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mayor. And um, as you've just stated, welcome to Catherine Festa and uh, Mr. Uh, Chair uh, David Bean uh, on behalf of the Puyallup Tribes of Indians. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to begin to read this proclamation and 
Um, I imagine that they would be invited to say a few words. Is that right, Mr. Mayor? Of course. Great, thank you. Uh, Native American Heritage Month. Whereas Native American Awareness Week began in 1916 with recognition expanded by Congress and approved by President George Bush in August 1990 to designate, to designate the month of November as National American Indian Heritage Month. And whereas Washington State is home to 29 federally recognized Native American tribes, including the Muckleshoot Indian Tribe and the Puyallup Tribe of Indians located in Federal Way and surrounding areas. And whereas Federal Way was built upon the ancestral lands and village of the indigenous people of this region who have been here since time immemorial. And whereas Native American tribes have made and continue to make invaluable contributions to the, to the diversity, arts, knowledge, labor, technology, science, philosophy, and economy of the state of Washington, and whereas the historical and, co and cultural contributions, particularly those of the Muckleshoot Indian tribes and Puyallup tribe of Indians have substantially shaped the characters of the city and Whereas Native American tribes in Washington state are leaders in environmental protections from protecting treaty fisheries to strengthening the national efforts to protect lands from environmental destructions associated with resources extractions. And whereas Federal Way is committed to strengthening our relationship with Native American people and Native American tribes and support their efforts to improve their people's quality of life. And whereas Native American Heritage Month is celebrated annually to recognize Native American cultures, history, tradition, arts, land, and contributions. Now, therefore, we, the undersigned mayor and city council members of the city of Fedway, do hereby proclaim November 2020 as Native American Heritage Month in Fedway and encourage all residents to recognize the accomplishments and contributions the Native American community has made to our society and salute uh, all of the local organizations that work with and support the Native American community. Signed this 17th day of November, 2020. And Mr. Mayor, it is important to recognize that we are uh, on the lands of the stated uh, tribes. And with that, I'll hand off um, this to Ms. Catherine Festa um, and Chair David Bean. Thank you. All right, Catherine and Chair Bean, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, did, did you want to go first, Chair Dean? No, go right ahead. Okay. How, uh, this is hello and thank you and Haida. I am the granddaughter of Elizabeth Collison. I am the daughter of Marina Jones. I am Catherine Festa. I'm a Haida. I'm a Raven from the Double Fin Killer Whale Clan. Today, I am honored to accept the proclamation to celebrate Native American Heritage Month for the people who first called this land home. Remember the struggles and the tragedies they endured. We honor their place in, in and contributions to the shared story of America. My mother was taken from her family at five years old and put in a residential school on Alert Bay. She lost her language and her culture. She was the youngest of 15 children, only nine of which became adults. Before she left, she remembered their life on Haida Kauai Islands were rich with family, seafood, singing, and dancing. A land acknowledgement is a simple, powerful way of showing respect and a step toward correcting the past history and practices that were used to erase indigenous people's history and culture and toward inviting the, and honoring the truth. Therefore, I would like to begin by acknowledging that this meeting is being held on the traditional lands of the Puget Sound Salish, the Puyallup tribe, the Duwamish and the Muckleshoot. In past and present, we honor with gratitude the land itself and the first people peoples across the entire country. How, uh, thank you. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, Mayor Farrell, mem uh, members of the Federal Way City Council, Hot Slachel, CEO of the Isha, DC Yaya Good day, honorable friends and relatives. I want to thank each and every one of you for, for taking the time to acknowledge um, Native American Heritage Month. Mm -hmm. you, know, it, you know, it's something that we're seeing that's being widespread amongst our, our neighbors from all directions. And, you know, going back last month to Native American um, Indigenous Peoples Day, Indigenous Peoples Month, um, you know, it, it's an opportunity for us to tell our story. But I tell folks every day should be uh, Indigenous Peoples Day uh, because we're here, you know, we stand for taking care of the land, taking care of one another. And, you know, with, uh, you know, climate change, you know, going on, it's, it's important more now than ever to listen to Mother Earth. You know, one of my elders, Billy Frank Jr. from the Nisqually tribe, uh, Medicine Creek Treaty relative, um, encourages each and every one of us to tell our story. Um, and, and so that's what we do. You know, first and foremost, we let folks know that we are still here. We are so much more than uh, mascots and, and costumes and, and can casino owners. You know, we are, you know, Native Americans live amongst each and every one of you. They walk beside each and every one of you. Uh, we are doctors. We are lawyers. We are construction workers. We are police officers. We are educators. Um, we have so much in common. And I think by recognizing Native American Heritage Month, I think it opens up the door for expanded dialogue. You know, being a, a, a representative of the Puyallup tribe, I engage in dialogue with our neighboring governments in, you know, Pierce County, Tacoma, Fife, uh, Puyallup. And um, I let them know that, you know, we have so much more in common than differences. And when we break bread, you know, I encourage each and every one of them to get together, um, not with me, perhaps not with myself, but my colleagues. Um, and I welcome the opportunity to do the same with uh, my relatives here in Federal Way to break bread. You know, when you break bread, you, you really get to know one another. You get to know each other's values and priorities. And, and in doing so, we find ways to grow together and work together. Um, while this is the ancestral homelands of the Coast Salish people, it is now our shared homelands. And I think that, you know, the more we can sit down and get to know one another, the sooner we can uh, work together and, and, and grow together. Now, as a side note, uh, as a child, I, I you know, I got to tell you, I spent my childhood uh, in, in Federal Way. The SeaTac Mall, I have some fond memories of the SeaTac Mall, which is now known as the Common. Uh, but I spent uh, many, many uh, weekend afternoons sneaking in and out of uh, the many theaters. <laughs> <laughs> You no longer do that, but uh, those are my memories of, of Federal Way and the SeaTac Mall. But, you know, we're connected. You know, we're all connected. You know, we have children, you know, in, in the um, school district there. Um, and, and I get to visit with uh, many of the kids and, and, and educators in that area and, and, and tell our stories. And so I, I just, again, can't say thank you enough. Gratitude is one of the lessons that <clears throat> we're taught um, in, in, in circle, you know, growing up at Chief Leshai. Um, you know, we had over, you know, 200 students from representing over 65 tribes, but we have circle and, and during circle, our songs, you know, were shared stories were, were, were shared and in these stories and songs, there were lessons. And I think when you listen to some of these stories and lessons, uh, they will resonate with each and every one of you in, in the lessons that you were taught growing up, be kind, be helpful, be caring, be sharing. Those are some of the many lessons that we, we were taught growing up. Um, you know, I'll, I'll share one, two that helped me as a, as a tribal leader. Um, uh, one is, you know, a, a person will be remembered for what they have done for their people, not what they have done for themselves. The second one that resonates with me and listening to you folks talk about taking care of your community, that, you know, through COVID relief funding, you know, um, one thing that resonated with me is um, our way is sharing and caring. A greedy person will lose everything in, in the end. And, and for me, that, that was a tough lesson growing up witnessing my mom giving away a lot of stuff. For, for natives, wealth is not measured by what you own or possess. Wealth is, is measured by what you give away and how you take care of one another. And so I just uh, wanna thank you for this time on the floor and sharing that brief glimpse into Native American culture, 
Native American history. And I look forward to future opportunities to engage um, and perhaps break bread, you know, when it's safe to do so, you know, be it coffee, breakfast, or lunch. Uh, you cannot see me, but I'm raising my hands, uh, thanking each and every one of you uh, for recognizing this month as, as Native American Heritage Month. Uh, Chen, I'm finished. Thank you, Chair Bean. Uh, great comments. Appreciate it. And uh, <clears throat> it's fun to hear about your uh, uh, earlier experiences, uh, younger experiences in federal way. Uh, so thank you. Um, okay. Uh Mayor yes, Farrell, yes. I'm hearing from uh, the audience that the YouTube hat is gone and channel 21 is not working. I see uh, channel 21 sort of coming in and out here. Yeah. Um, yeah. We are, okay, we anyway, are I just, working on that right now. Okay, thank we're, you. We're experiencing technical difficulties. Is uh, I, I, Mayor, it's it, 2020. Um, yeah, yeah, well, we're using 1990s technology, so for that part. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so the um, ideally, if people are on over Zoom, um, if they if they can hear this, um, it would be relatively easy to join over Zoom uh, as a normal attendee for this meeting. Um, but we are working on getting uh, getting that back online as well. Thank you. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, and thank you, Catherine, and uh, for, for this presentation, and thank you, Councilmember Moore, and thank you again, uh, Chair Bean. Uh, it was great to hear from you. Thank you. Oh, okay, um, on to the Mayor's Emerging Issues and Report. <clears throat> what do you think, Council? Should we wait till these, uh, see if we can get this resolved? Uh, Thomas, what do you think is going on? It, Mayor, it's a, it's a known issue that we've been um, this is the first time it's actually done it midstream. It usually does it when we first turn the, the system on. And then after 10 minutes or so, it kind of takes a, we've been, it, it, it fixes itself. Um, and then we're able to just go on with our, our normal business. Um, we never really identified where the problem is. There's several pieces to this puzzle. Um, hmm. But I'm, we're actually, Sean and I were talking about this um, right now. Um, people can hear there's, they can hear, but they can't see. Let's see here. Hold on. Okay. It's, it's intermittent. I see it come in and I see it come out. What do you think? Should we uh, press forward? We got a, I we think got a so. big, big agenda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually go in there uh, to our, our broadcast booth and uh, work on this right now, Michelle. Okay. Um, well, I, I, uh, let me just go through my report real quick. We've talked about the press conference. I think we talked about all that. Um, so we are working on, uh, uh, and I, I think we mentioned that we closed the, uh, uh, the Federal Way Community Center uh, and uh, that's the next item. Federal Way Community Center is closed uh, until December 15th. Um, let's see, a report on the city's 30 year time capsule. As many of you know, <clears throat> we had um, a great celebration on uh, December 6th, uh, where we had, uh, you know, a great crowd, probably approaching about 100 folks um, to uh, socially distanced, um, in which we dedicated uh, the time capsule and the artifacts that are going to go into it. I'd like to thank the staff and the council and everybody that were the members of the community and our local partners. And, and uh, we also had um, uh, Diane Noble Gulliford uh, with the Historical Society, and she was there uh, and, and said a few words. And it was really, it was great. It was good to see everybody. And, and uh, uh, we're going to get that uh, uh, time capsule uh, planted for the next 30 years. And we've got the, um, um, uh, the monument that we'll put um, essentially where I spoke from uh, at the pack, uh, right outside the pack. Hey, Mayor. Okay, uh, Mayor. Yes. Mayor? Yes. Hey, remember when I told you I thought we had a time capsule already? Well, we did. Uh -huh. <clears throat> it, it has been 30 years. Uh, the, the original talk had been putting it on the corner of uh, Pack Highway South and 320th, uh, where mm -hmm. the Rite Aid is. If you will look uh -huh. at the garbage cans on that uh, corner, you will see uh, a monument there. But it's not under the monument. It's actually inside the Historical Society. And Diana has found it. 
and she's going to let us know when it's time to open it. So we did have a time capsule. It has been 30 ah, years. Great. And so great. much smaller than yours, but we will be able to open it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, our, ours, uh, it's, yeah, it was like a sarcophagus. Um, all right. So, um, all right. <laughs> Enough said there. All right. Um, a lot of jump off points from there where we won't go there. Um, okay. So, um, wow, we've got a, I've got a Facebook live town hall meeting um, uh, this Thursday at noon. Hope you can make it. And uh, we'll talk about all kinds of issues. I already starting to get some questions and uh, some questions I just couldn't help but answer right away. But uh, we really want people to uh, dial in and, and ask anything that uh, uh, that's on their minds. And, and we really want to make sure we reach out to folks. Um, I actually spoke to uh, Lakeland Elementary via Zoom classes. It was five different classes, um, and it was uh, Mrs. Uh, Scown's class, and uh, it was a really fun uh, opportunity to talk. Uh, I, instead of just uh, um, doing one message to each of the class, I actually uh, uh, Zoomed in, as they say, for uh, uh, five different 15-minute, uh, and they asked some really good questions, um, so uh, it was a lot of fun, so I'm looking forward to that. All right, I did, you know, look, uh, that was fun and it was fun to do and I was looking forward to that. So um, uh, December city council meetings, remember that uh, pursuant to the new council rule, um, we, do not, we do not have a, council, a second council meeting in December. Um, and that's just uh, to make sure that people can enjoy the holidays. And uh, I wanna say thank you to the council uh, for our sound transit uh, public art uh, letter and standing up, I uh, wanna let you know that I did have a phone call with, uh, immediately, like the next day, I had a phone call with um, uh, Peter Rogoff, the CEO of Sound Transit, and uh, um, I think the letter got their attention, and, and uh, in that phone call the very next day, um, uh, he made a commitment that he followed through with uh, by, via letter the, uh, the very next day after that, on Friday, in which it was announced that um, uh, that they would not uh, move forward with that uh, elephant art uh, that was uh, designed or scheduled for um, uh, or proposed for the Sound Transit uh, light rail, link light rail connection. So anyway, uh, great job where our voices were heard. You know, it's always awkward and something like this. And one of the things I had to, uh, that I said to Peter, uh, who's a, who does a really good job at Sound Transit. I really, I really like, I like Peter. And um, and I think we're very lucky, the region's lucky to have him um, heading up Sound Transit. Uh, but I did tell him that I, you know, oftentimes that art is very subjective and that oftentimes people don't wanna be impolite. Um, and sometimes you really, you get down to it and it's like, well, you just, you know, uh, you just gotta give a full dose of honesty. And, and so sometimes that comes in a form that, that uh, may be a little bit jarring, but it, it was necessary for our city. So thank you, council. Um, we got it solved. So that process is gonna restart and uh, there's gonna be an outreach and the uh, Sound Transit's gonna have uh, some public outreach with the community and we'll get a piece of art that more further reflects our community. Okay, let's uh, now turn our attention to council uh, council committee reports. First, we've got the Parks, uh, Recreation and Human Services Public Safety Committee. Uh, and that is uh, council member uh, Coach Mar. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, I'll make it short. We had a meeting on November the 10th Two of the items on that agenda uh, are on this agenda for uh, approval uh, later on in the evening. Our next meeting will, if we hold it, our next meeting will be December the 8th at 5 p.m. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Uh, land use and transportation, Council Member Verso. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, our last meeting on November 2nd, we had multiple items, six items from B through G on the consent agenda for tonight. Uh, so I'm trying to save some time also. We have revolution. Resolution adoption of the 2021-26 Vision to Transportation Improvement Plan, the TIP, and Arterial Street Improvement Plan. And then we also have two ordinances for first reading, uh, Council Bill 790, Ordinance Transportation Impact Fee Code Amendment, and 791, Ordinance Federal Way Link Extension Alteration Number 1. And our next meeting again is December 7th at 5 p.m. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. All right, thank you. Finance, Economic Development, Regional Affairs Committee, Council Member Tran. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, our next meeting is going to be on November 24th at 5 p.m. Uh, and it is going to be on Zoom again. Thank you. Very good. Okay, uh, Lodging Tax Advisory Committee, Councilmember Sefa Dawson. And also if you could talk about PIC as well during this during that time. Sure, thank you, Mayor. Um, oh, I'm not, okay, have, yeah, go ahead. 
Good. Nothing to report on um, um, LTAC, except our next meeting is scheduled for December 9th at 10 a.m. And um, Martin, is there anything you want to say about PIC before I jump in? No, oh, okay. So um, the meeting was last um, Thursday instead of Wednesday. And um, so they, there were um, um, some great discussions around um, the new boards and commissions appointees, as well as um, emergency plan. And then um, each city also um, shared their legislative agenda. And so I'm um, pleased to see ours coming out. Um, so we weren't able to share it then, but it's good to see that, um, um, yeah, ours is um, in a draft form. And um, the next meeting, oh, I don't, um, I don't think we have that, but yeah. So yeah, that's, that's, that was what was covered at um, PIC last week. Thank you so much. Very good. Mr. Mayor, uh, Councilor Moore. I do want to add, yeah. thank you so much. I do want to add my thanks to, to Councilor Sofa Dawson for attending that meeting um, as the alternate. So thank you so much for being there. Appreciate it. And um, that's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Council President Honda, your report. Thank you. Um, on November 5th, I had an opportunity to have a telephone conversation with the artist that uh, has designed the elephant on the tree. And um, I think he's a, a great artist. I think that he actually has some really great art out there. But it, uh, it doesn't belong in federal way. And I'm glad that Sound Transit has listened and responded to us. I really appreciate that. And I have had a number of people ask if they can have input in having in what the art is in federal way, no matter if it's from the city or Sound Transit. And I'm glad to hear that Sound Transit may allow that. I, it's our city, uh, it's our tax dollars that, that pay for this kind of stuff. And um, I'm sure that the artists would be open to, to listen to us. I also uh, was able to attend uh, Miss Samantha Scone's fifth grade classes at Lakeland. And they had really awesome questions. And we talked um, that they're learning about legislation and how laws are made. And so we talked a lot about how laws are made in a federal way and taxes and it's awesome to hear children and their their opinions and and uh, and what they think and it was a great time and I have to just really applaud the teachers. Uh, it's got to be really difficult to be teaching children on a screen. It, it just has to be hard. You know, it was it was even hard, I, I couldn't see the whole class. I could only see who was talking to me. And um, I just have to, to applaud the teachers for hanging in there and educating our youth and doing the best job that they can do. And whatever we as a city can do to help that process is, is right on target. So um, on Thursday, we have a Board of Health meeting and I was pleased to be reappointed to the Board of Health for next year. Um, I also attended the briefing today with uh, Director Patty Hayes and that's, I believe it's every other week. It interferes with skateboards. So I hadn't been able to attend one of her brief briefings before, but uh, skateboard, uh, I wasn't able to attend skateboard this morning due to a previous appointment. So I was able to jump into uh, the briefing with Director Hayes. And um, it was you know, a lot of questions about restaurants in King County and how we can get restaurants back open again. And they, she, uh, Director Hayes even talked about schools and children and educating children. So it was a great meeting. I believe it's open to all SCA members if they'd like to attend. Uh, Deanna Dawson does send out the information and the link if you're interested in attending. Unfortunately, it is in the daytime, and I know a lot of council members are unable to attend 
a lot of those meetings because of the daytime and the fact that they have to work. This week is the National League of Cities annual conference and both council member Estefa Dawson and myself are attending. It would be down in Florida if it would, you know, without COVID and Florida is having hurricanes. So it's probably best that we're not in Florida at this point. But um, yesterday I attended a class on getting information out to the public. And it was given by two public information officers in Florida. And they talked about how email is one of the best ways to get information out to the public. And if you're at all able to get email addresses of your um, residents, that that is one of the very best ways to, to, um, to get word out because you can do it really quick and you can change it at, when you need to. So um, something I will be talking with the mayor about later. Anyway, uh, thank you and it's uh, onward. We have a long meeting. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, okay, um, let's see here. Um, all right, now we're on to public comment. Um, uh, Stephanie? Yes, Mayor. The first one we have up is Lori Lucky. I believe that she's on the line. She just needs to unmute herself. Yes, Mayor. She is on the line and I have allowed her to talk. She just needs to unmute. And she's not calling in over phone. There you there she goes. I'm... Hello? Hi Lori. We can we can hear you, Lori. Hi. Hi. I Hi. am just making a comment about hello. Um, about renewing or having an an additional score contract. And the idea is that SCORE remains a problematic facility. Um, and it has this huge lawsuit pending against it because of the death of Ms. Rodriguez there in 2018. The suit was filed in December of 2019. Um, and for all intents and purposes, the law firm is uh, saying that it, it functions like a private prison. And if it has a reasonable charge per day, part of that is because they're saving money on things like food for the inmates. Inmates testify on places like Yelp that they're hungry 24 hours a day at SCORE. Uh, there are several comments from both inmates and former employees that give me cause to be concerned that we're continuing a relationship or that Federal Way is continuing a relationship with SCORE. Thanks. Thank you, Lori. All right, Mayor, the next person we have, um, we have two people signed up. I don't see them on the list, but they might be under a different name. So Randy Hynek, or Sai Samanini, if either of those can digitally raise your hand so we know that you're there, we can unmute you. I don't see any hands being raised at this point. Okay, so we will move on to Lynn Idahosa. Are you there, Lynn? Guys, oh, sorry, I am multitasking, so I'm actually in another meeting. Um, and I've been listening so patiently, so I didn't have the time to prepare a speech per se, but thank you guys all for being here, Mr. Mayor and uh, members of city council. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys tonight about some of the budget proposals that we're considering. Um, most importantly to me, um, as far as on a professional level, the executive director of the Federally Black Collective, um, I'm interested in hearing more from, from council about uh, your thoughtful consideration of this consideration and re-entering re this score contract. Um, just about a year and a half ago, we exited that contract and I'd like to know the benefit our community is gonna get. Um, I see that it seems like there's some concerns that there's additional federal contracts that that jail has now uh, entered into. Um, and with the last proclamation, how mindful are we being in the agreements we enter into and what they align with, with those proclamations? Um, so if that jail is, is uh, one of the closest that it looks like uh, 
that federal way would get into that has is, issues with uh, they maintain detainees that have issues with ICE, for instance, and that's currently not something we deal with. What is our value set on that? And why are we entertaining contracts with spaces that don't line up with our values? So um, I have said it before, and I will be honest, I don't feel like I've quite heard a response from council since you passed these proclamations that say that Black Lives Matter, what lens are you using when you vote? So what specifically are you thinking about differently? We just passed this. So what are you doing differently from right now? What is different about your perspective? Because things have changed. That's what that proclamation meant to me and many of our community members. Um, on a personal level, I just know that I've always been slightly bothered by that contract. Um, and outside of it, because I only have about 50 seconds left, there's several other areas of that budget where I'd still like to know from council, what are the things that you guys considered for the black community when you guys are voting yay or nay on this? Um, we've done a ton of activity in the community to make it known that our voices should be heard. And what we also wanna hear on top of the thoughtful partnership with the mayor's office from council members is what are you doing differently for our community now that we've shown the investment we're making in better way. Um, I think there's a lot of other areas as far as public health on things. I'd like to hear from you guys when you're voting. What are you thinking about when it comes to the COVID-19 pandemic and how is this investment that we're making going to multiply? So they're not just one-time investments because we simply just don't have the time or money for that. And what is the plan for legislative session and additional funding? Um, I am out of time, but I just thank you guys so much for your time and I encourage you to consider and respond what those priorities are. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Okay. Any other uh, public Yep, we have Tirza Idahosa also on the line. Hi, Tirza. Hi, how's everybody doing? Uh, let me say hello first, and I'm glad that every, I can see everybody, and I pray that your families are all well. Um, I do have some concerns, and one of the main concerns as well was our reconnecting with SCORE. And I really hope that we get past this saying one thing and then doing something different like we don't see you because the world is watching and the world is upset about these same issues that we continue to keep having. Although on one hand, it looks like we're doing well, but then if no one's paying attention, they're doing backdoor things like, I don't know how we got back involved with SCORE. We were very clear about that, the community was. So I think as officials, your job is to hear the community. And that's what we thought we were getting better than last year, that we were actually listening to one another. Um, my other concern is that we continue to, um, allow the police department to continue to get additional monies and additional fundings and um, their grant writing per persons. Um, obviously they're very good at getting money because they have a lot of money. Most of the city's money is for the police department. I would like to see how that department or somebody else in the city can also look for money and funding to help us. I mean, our IT department is like archaic and it's embarrassing that we don't have money for them, but yet we find money for other things that, um, we probably should be finding money for that department. Um, I am concerned that um, in the, the grants that they're writing for traffic enforcement and the law enforcement liaison, and I don't know if that's a community member or who that person is, um, but I also wanna know, are you also looking for money and having somebody write grants for those cameras that we continue to ask for? Police cameras and uh, money to set up the community police oversight board. Those are very important things as well that should be considered in the budget. The next thing that I really wanted to also, all of the contracts that I just saw that you placed with contractors, I'd like to know how many black and people of color actually got those contracts. Um, you've awarded a lot of them. How many people of color got those contracts? And I also see that you um, have a contract out for the police department to cover Kiwit and Bridge, the Marine construction part for their extra security. Were those contracts also given out to private security companies so they can cover them and keep our police officers safe when they're off duty resting versus having to go get a second job? Um, the other thing I wanted to really talk about real quick was Linda Coachmarcher and uh, you guys talked about this elephant that you were on the city council when you guys made this major decision. How much money now is that gonna cost us to change? I think we should leave the elephant because the community has said it affects a lot of community members that elephant is important to them. I do think we should go away with the log um, 
but I don't think, how much is that going to cost us to redesign the whole thing? I don't think we should throw it all out because that's a lot of money that we've already invested and that you guys gave the city um, sound transit uh, the thought that they had the right to do whatever they wanted to do. So we need to rethink how we do our contracts and how we enter into them, as well as, again, I don't think you should waste our money by throwing out the whole thing. The elephant, the bird can stay. I think the log should go. Thank you for listening to me. Um, and we will be listening and watching to see how things handle. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Next. Mayor, that's all I have signed up for general comment, unless we have Sai Semenini on the line yet or Randy Hynek. So, Mayor, I do have a uh, somebody that raised their hand. I'm going to allow them to talk. Hello. They're still they're still currently muted. Oh, okay. Are you? I'm I being heard there. Okay. Thank you very much. What, uh, I would like to thank the uh, council and the mayor for your time. Uh, I, what I'd like to address is the closing of the community center pool. Um, I, I didn't know that the uh, that it was under local control, and I was wondering why the pool is closing when other South End pools are not being affected. I understand the YMCA is being is allowed to be open. Um, the safety measures there at the uh, community center, <clears throat> excuse me, um, are being applied. They're very very strict about uh, distancing and uh, checking in and out, temperature check, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I, work in, in the, uh, I, I work in the retail business, and so I'm very well aware of all the safety measures that are followed in grocery stores and other businesses. And the uh, community centers are doing just as good jobs as those uh, businesses that I work with. Um, also, the loss of the gym at the, at at the community center and not affect the pool. Uh, the safety measures, like I said, are being applied in the, the citizens there. Um, we need some healthy activities. Uh, you know, we, we're getting constantly being shut down and for good reason. We're in the middle of a pandemic. But uh, I just would like to throw in my two cents. I'd like to see the pool at least being reconsidered. Uh, I think it's a good I think it's a good idea. And if they can keep that pool safe and well for all our citizens, I think that might be a plus. Thank you once again for your time, guys. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much. Mayor, I just want to get that gentleman's name for the record. Oh. oh your first my and last name, name is sir? Matt Jones. Matt Jones. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Oh, appreciate my it. My first name is Matt. Yes, Matt Jones. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. I, I would say that, as I, as I mentioned before, uh, we're going through. Um, a historic level of, of positive tests. And the governor did close um, uh, uh, gymnasiums and um, uh, fitness centers. We made the decision on Sunday to close the facility. We found out on Monday that pools could remain open. It would have been the only thing that we left open at the community center. Uh, I made the decision, it's my decision uh, to close the community center uh, because we have um, a historic number of of COVID-19 positives in our community. We need to get a hold onto this and we need to make sure, I, I think our staff does a tremendous job, but I think we've also got a situation in which, um, you know, in our consultation with the King County Public Health today, uh, the director of that, they were having countywide uh, 547 uh, positive tests per day uh, in the last week. And um, here we've been averaging at least 39 positives, but there have been some days we're over 50 and 60. So um, we need to do what's necessary for our community, for our staff. And um, the, the governor um, uh, said that gymnasiums and fitness locations are closed. I made the uh, uh, decision to close the facility. So uh, we're communicating that to people that are reaching out, but we, we got to make sure that we uh, get past this. This is this is really, really, you know, nearly a quarter of a million Americans have died from this pandemic, and we just need to be very careful. So we'll get through this. Uh, we, uh, as I said earlier, the state of Washington, out of uh, out of all the countries, uh, uh, the states in the country, is one of those states in the red uh, for our uh, level of outbreak, and uh, it's been very, very concerning about the number of positive tests. We're going to get on top of it. This will be part of that. 
Okay, uh, we'll we'll do our best at, at least through uh, December 15th, um, uh, the community center will be closed. Um, next. Uh, I have Allison Fine who just signed up and then I do have one email to read. So I believe Allison is on the line now. She's ready to go. Very good, Allison. Stand by, I'm gonna unmute her. Hello. Hey, we can hear you. Hi, Hi. Allison. Fine. Uh, thank you, um, Mayor Farrell, Council President Honda, um, Council. I don't think I've actually been on a call since um, Council Member Kraft has become Council Member Kraft. So congratulations and welcome. Are they all jacked. What? Oh, oh Tom. <laughs> hey, Tom, it's alive, man. Sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, re I'm gonna reclaim my time real quick. Um, okay. So I just wanted to echo the voices uh, ahead of me about that score contract. I do feel like it's something um, that we talked about getting away from both for financial and for ethical reasons. Um, and I'm really not sure why we are jumping back into it at this point or why we are considering that. Um, the reality is that we are going to be committed um, to, to um, equity in our community. And I know that we have a lens of equity that we are trying to work through at all times these days, that we have to be mindful of the way that people are being treated at SCORE and say, uh, it's not okay for our, our citizens to be there no matter why they end up there. Um, I, I think that we have to be humane in the way that we make decisions. Um, and financial decisions shouldn't always come, should never really come before humanity. Um, so I just wanted to echo that. I also um, just wanted to, I wasn't going to say this, but after listening to the, the last gentleman, like I fully understand the frustration. Um, I do think that the best thing that we can do is continue to make sure that this, the residents of Federal Way are safe. And I think doing that includes keeping that um, that pool closed and that community center closed as much as you guys know my daughter is such an active member at the community center and she it's miserable that there's no special olympics it's miserable she can't see her friends but um safety is always first so thank you guys for all you're doing i know that there's hard decisions being made um, but i definitely i really hope that we're taking a good lens of uh equity when we're looking at this score decision and making the right decision for um for the, the ethical reasons behind it are being considered on top of the financial ones. Thank you. All right, thank you, Allison. All right, Stephanie. Mayor, that's all I have uh, on the line. Who wanted to comment? I did have one email to read in. It was from Zena Courtney. It just says, please do not close the Federal Community Center pool. The lakes and sound are pretty cold for swimming measured 50 degrees today. Thank you, Zena Courtney. That's all I have. I hear you, Zena. I wouldn't get in the sound either. It's uh, not without at least two wetsuits on. So thank you. Okay, uh, Chief, do you want to talk about the? Uh, I know we've got it on the um, uh, we've got it on the um, uh, consent agenda, but do you want to talk about the jail services contract uh, with SCORE while we're doing it? How many beds we're talking about, and and uh, some details about why we're looking at that on a contract basis, and how many beds we're talking, and and any issues that you're aware of. Um, uh, with regard to equity or any concerns uh, there? Sure, Mayor. Um, as you're aware, and as Council's aware, we've, we've been an owner city with SCORE for many, many years. Uh, we were involved with the uh, development and construction, and we operate in that manner uh, for many years. Uh, they're a professional organization. Our decision to leave uh, the council decision to leave in 2018 was strictly based on cost. Our jail costs in 2018 peaked at $6.4 million. And with us uh, deciding to leave SCORE, and when we left, uh, that brought us a savings of uh, $2.1 million. And 2020 is a year that we began a uh, contract with various jurisdictions uh, in the region, and also with Yakima Jail for our jail contract services. So as part of, uh, we have multiple jail contracts now. So a SCORE contacted us and asked if we would be willing to come back as a contract city, not an owner city, contract city. 
So prior, when we were an owner city, we were paying about $240, $250 a day for an inmate um, at SCORE. Uh, with a contract, we're contracting three beds at $128, about half the cost. So it really made sense for us uh, to have uh, another contract jail facility. Um, I'm not aware of any issues. I know uh, ICE issue came up. They have same policy as King County Jail. There, there's no difference uh, between the jail facilities. And um, so I'm not sure where that, there's no difference. They're a professional organization. It really, for us, came down to cost. In fact, I think the, facil for the facility is outstanding and they provide exceptional medical service, psychological service. Um, it, it really was cost. So that, that's our decision of going back. It just gives us another uh, facility for us to house our inmates uh, when ordered by the court. I, I do want to say that I, when I sat on the board for um, actually for uh, five years, maybe six years from 2014 uh, through actually, uh, actually through 19, because I think this was the first year uh, we've been out. Um, there was always a commitment by the board uh, not to do any of the controversial uh, issues that the Department of Homeland Security was involved in. I and I what I'm talking about were the um, the issues of administrative uh, booking people on administrative warrants instead of actually a judicially author, you know, a judge signing a warrant. Um, there had been a longstanding practice. This is just to my knowledge, a, a, a longstanding administrative practice um, that was then uh, disfavored and, and uh, ruled inappropriate uh, for jails to hold people on administrative holds or warrants um, from the Department of Homeland Security. The, the, uh, um, but the SCORE jail, uh, we, our concerns and the way, reason we left SCORE um, and, um, and was uh, exclusively because of the incredibly high cost uh, that, uh, that we were expressing and we were trying to renegotiate. So, um, so why is it, Chief, uh, operationally, why is it important to have these three extra beds? Well, I'll give you one little technical thing that we run into operationally. Uh, with Kent Jail, they don't take our uh, DUI arrest because of a uh, court issue, bail issue. So for us, uh, having SCORE is uh, logistically very important for us because if we make a DUI arrest, right now we need to go to either Puyallup Jail, uh, Issaquah Jail or King County Jail. And we want to avoid King County Jail because they're about $250 a day. Um, so having SCORE will be will make us more efficient operationally being able to take DUIs to SCORE Jail and process um, arrestees from there. So it also, uh, long-term wise, it also gives us leverage when we're negotiating with other jails. Uh, SCORE is not the most expensive. Uh, they're kind of middle, middle range in terms of costs. We have other jail costs that are much higher. So what this does for us is when we have more contracts, it gives us uh, ability to negotiate better rates when we're talking with other correctional entities. So uh, SCORE is in um, CTEC, it's fairly close to us and operationally it's efficient. It's good for SCORE uh, to have us, have us as a contract city. And it's also good for us. It's it's a, a, a good agreement. So when we're when citizens see that we're going back, there we're not going back as an owner city, and things are not the same. It's strictly cost issue and efficiency issue for us. Yeah, our departure from SCORE cost uh, saved us at least two point two million dollars this year, and actually almost another another full million after that. So uh, it's been good for us. Councilmember Tran, you had a question. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, Chief, thank you uh, for, for that information. I just want to make sure that I, I understand correctly. So we are signing um, the agreement with the score for only three beds at this time. Is that correct? Yes, sir. It would be uh, we're contract beds for three. Um, so our staff is determined just having three will meet our needs. If we go more than three, then the cost is $180. So any bookings after yeah. three, it's $180 a day, but that's still cheaper than King County because King County is about $250 in the door and they have a booking fee of hundred something dollars. So it's still cheaper, but we probably won't go too often over three beds. Okay, thank you. Okay. 
All right. Well, thank you. All right. Now we move on to the uh, um, uh, consent agenda. Uh, these items have uh, gone through committee and can be um, approved all at once, or uh, a council member can um, ask that a particular item be pulled for separate consideration. All right. 5A, minutes for the November, November 4th regular and special meeting. Item B, Citywide Adaptive Control Signal System ITS Improvements Phase 1 and 2 and Phase 3 Authorization to Transfer Funds and Expenditure Increase of the Project. Item C, 2020 Pavement Markings Citywide Project Acceptance. D, Southwest 320th Street Preservation Project Bid Award. E, Southwest 356th Street Preservation Award, uh, Street Preservation Project Bid Award. F, Horizontal Curve Warning Signs Bid Award. G, South 348th Street Entrance Sign, Final Acceptance. H, Jail Services Contract, Score Jail. I, Agreement between the Washington Traffic Safety Commission, WTSC, and the Federal APD to provide grant funding for law enforcement liaison. J, Agreement between the Washington Traffic Safety Commission, WTSC, and the Federal Police Department to provide grant funding for traffic enforcement. K, Cuit Bridge and Marine Extra Duty Police Services Agreement. L, Regency Cleaners and Good Service Goods and Services Agreement for Police Uniform and Plain Clothes Dry Cleaning. Council, is there an item that you would want pulled for separate consideration? Uh, Councilmember Moore. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to take item H um, out of the consent agenda item. Thank you. All right. Item H is pulled. Council, any other items? Okay. Um, Council President Honda, do you have a motion with respect to A through G and I through L? Boy, I'm doing what you're doing. Talking with my mute on. I move approval of items A through G and did you I can't remember which one he pulled. H? H H H H. H. Okay. And H. items I through L. Second. 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 All right. There's been a motion, a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, matter passed unanimously. Item H, jail services contract. Uh, Councilor Moore, did you uh, need some more information or would you like to speak to the matter? Yeah, thank you much, Mr. Mayor. Um, you, you know, I, I'm, I'm simply gonna be voting no on this item. Um, I don't think uh, this is the right time for, for such an item, especially for uh, the reasons that you've heard during public comments and for the very reason why we took action uh, to um, that we did a couple of years back. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll let, uh, um, you know, it's my understanding that there's also a lawsuit that's taking place uh, with SCORE. Um, and, um, but I, I pulled this item just because of the fact that um, um, I'll be voting no on this. Thank you. Okay. Council, any other uh, comments? Councilmember Baruso and then Councilmember Kraft. Uh, we can't hear you. Uh, Councilmember Baruso, yeah. we can't hear you. Got it. Thank you. So I, I was kind of agreed. I was thinking about pulling that too. The only reason why is because I'd like to know more information. If uh, the chief can find more information on that. And just wondering too, is there, do we do any type of uh, forms audits on our, on our prisons, excuse me, prisons, but our jails to see how if there's problems, if uh, how they, uh, you know, if there's anything like that that comes to fruition through, throughout the year when we're using these jails. So that's the thing I'd like to find out too, if possible. Chief? Chief Wong? Yeah, I guess the question is, do we do audits with these facilities? Yes, Chief, I just want to know, is there anything that, that type that happens during the end of the year um, through, you know, our, uh, what you do or anything else, or anyone has some type of thing that happens uh, with the jails throughout the area on performances and audits and stuff like that to see exactly how they're operating and, and if it's something that we should stay into. I guess that's the question too, so. Sure, I mean, as, as a government entity, obviously they, you know, most of the jails that we deal with are accredited or accredited at the national level. Obviously, we're monitoring complaints um, or issues that might come up with the jail. 
Sure, those things take into consideration, but um, a lot of uh, government agencies can certainly be involved in a lawsuit. I'm not aware of uh, any um, uh, mistreatment of inmates or uh, concerns about the care and concern of inmates at the SCORE facility whatsoever. I, like I told you, uh, we've been owner city with them for many years. It's one of, I think, I would say it's one of the better jail facilities in the region. Uh, they're a professional organization. They're owned by Renton, Auburn, um, um, Tequila, Tequila. Marie, you know, South King County jurisdiction. So it's, it's, it's well run, well managed. It's a, a very uh, professional uh, jail facility. There should be no concerns with the policy group about us entering an agreement um, with score jail. Okay. There are Thank no, you, concern, there are no concerns that I'm aware of, sir. Thank you, chief. Councilmember Kraft. Thank you, Mayor, um, and uh, thank you, Chief Wong. I did want to point to your attention to, I do believe that there is currently a lawsuit against the SCORE jail facility, which was mentioned during public comment. It's uh, due to the death of Ms. Damaris Rodriguez, and it was a mishandled, um, it was a mishandled situation where the main claim right now is that um, the family believes that the SCORE jail, jail facility did not treat her properly, um, and she, in fact, ended up passing away, which, again, was mentioned during public comment. Without more information um, and a more valid reason why we should put the concerns that the public has for this facility over the cost savings that we would have as a city, I don't think at this time I would be able to um, vote for this. I also would uh, mention that due to the current lawsuit that is pending, the SCORE jail facility did mention that there had been two deaths in the facility in 2019. I have no additional information at that time, but I did want council members to be aware of that also. Thank you. All right. Council member um, Lydia Sefadawson. Thank you, Mayor. And. Um, I too wanted to um, speak to that. I think if we're hearing um, um, allegations and, and concerns from the public, we should take heed. Um, I, when we heard this presented at um, at the last meeting, Parks, Recreation, Human Services, and Public Safety um, Committee meeting, the cost savings were fine, and I, you know, um, but I think as we're hearing all these different things that are coming up, and what Council Member. Um, Kraft just shared um, additional lawsuits. I think we should um, hold off on um, that decision and maybe not participate at this point um, until those things are cleared or anything that we've heard, especially if there's any humanitarian or, hu or um, human issues that are not um, addressed, then I don't think we should participate and um, getting more information about that would be very helpful before we move forward. Thank you. Councilmember Kraft, excuse me, uh, Councilmember Kochmar. Thank you, Mayor. I would be uh, interested, uh, uh, Chief, if you would look into the testimony that was given this evening that uh, some of the inmates had gone on Yelp and said that they were hungry. I, I do know that uh, sometimes an institution will cut back on the uh, food budget if they're worried about um, other, um, for example, the lawsuits coming up. And so would you, I would like it if you would at least look into that. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Tran. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and I would agree with the uh, um, majority of the council members in regard to this uh, particular contract. Uh, under normal circumstances, uh, I would uh, do anything as long as we can save some money. Uh, but uh, in light of um, ongoing legal uh, issue uh, at the score and uh, allegations, um, you know, against this facility, I think it's, it's prudent for us not to proceed with this uh, contract and maybe we can wait a little bit longer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council President Honda. Uh, thank you. So as we have prisoners in several other jail facilities, 
if we're going to investigate what is happening at SCORE, then we might want to know if other facilities have issues. But, you know, it seems to me that it, it could be um, issues that, uh, that other jails in the area also have issues. And if we have contracts with them, perhaps the, the council would like to know what's going on at any other jail instead of just calling score out. Okay. Mm. Well, I mean, it just, it just seems to make sense if, of, if that's the information that the council would like, and I, I see no reason that it's a problem, but you know, it, it's possible that other jails have lawsuits against them also. It's possible that other jails have complaints from inmates about not getting enough food or, or being hungry, which we certainly don't want our prisoners to, to, to do that. You know, we'd like to make sure they're fed. And, um, you know, it may be a problem with other uh, sites also, just to, just to be fair. To Yeah, thank you. So I, I see, uh, um, is there a motion perhaps to uh, uh, maybe uh, put this back down to committee and uh, um, for uh, further research to be done with regard to the facility before moving? I'll entertain whatever motion. Uh, uh, Council Member Kochmar, Tran, and uh, Council President Honda, would you please uh, uh, lower your hands and then I'll ask for if there's a motion before the body uh, for, uh, for me to consider calling on. It's, this is uh, uh, this is your business meeting, so let's. Uh, Mr. One Moore. of the things you could, yeah, uh, Councilmember Moore. Thank you. Um, I appreciate uh, uh, my colleagues uh, and their comments and and Councilmember Kraft's um, <clears throat> insight as well. Um, you know, I, I'll make a motion um, that that we just table this indefinitely um, and. Uh, We'll leave that as my motion. Thank you. There's a motion table indefinitely. Is there a second? Second. Okay. There's a, a motion and a second. Uh, is there any discussion? What does indefinitely mean? I mean, are you seeking <laughs> more information? No. I. It, are you seeking more information from? I, the, yeah. Because we, we can't. You know, we can't leave this in limbo. They're looking, obviously the police department is looking for more beds so we can't leave this in limbo so what is it that you would like done uh, that's and, a really good question oh sorry no go ahead please thank you uh that's a really good question and, and, I, and I appreciate it you know i, I think this is uh, we just need to look at other options um i think this this is uh, not a good option at this time uh, for a number of reasons, uh, from what we've heard in the comments, public co public comments, uh, and with what we've heard today, uh, I I've chosen to to make the motion to make it indefinitely because I think this is just a, a bad time uh, to look at, into this. So I think so we need to look the, at other options. Uh, let me just ask, ask for a point of clarification: mm -hmm. is your is your bill just a vote no on this? I mean, is that really what you're saying? Instead of table tabling, what indicates I think what the council uh, president is indicating and essentially asking is, are you essentially saying no, as opposed to, um, I think some sort of clarity would be, uh, would be, or are you saying if you sure. found out more information, that you'd be open to it? Would, uh, 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 to just, I'm trying to kill the contract, can't kill this item on, on the agenda. Okay, so uh, was your motion vote, yeah. actually to just vote no on the council? Uh, on, yes. Excuse me, vote no on the, uh, would you, uh, Councilmember Tran, would you accept that as a friendly motion, a friendly amendment to your second? Um, I, I have not? a little bit dif different uh, opinion. I mean, I don't think we need to just go ahead and kill it at this time. Uh, what we can do is we can table it and then we can do some more research or perhaps, uh, you know, until the outcome of a lawsuit, for example. Uh, there's no reason why we 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 keep this in indefinite. So let's go the other so direction. Mayor, Mayor, can I? Can yeah, I please. Uh, there, yeah, please. The motion 
to table indefinitely is the the effect is just to table, and that means we won't okay. vote on it tonight. It just is tabled. Uh, table no vote. All right. So yeah, you you there, took the words out no... of my mouth, Ryan. Okay. Yeah, you took the words out of my mouth. I I feel like the the word indefinitely uh, is is that's a, actually where I was going to pivot back to. Councilmember Moore, um, would you consider it a friendly amendment if we just said to table this motion? Period. Um. It, not. It's your Mayor, motion. it honestly, it doesn't matter. There's, there is no motion to table indefinitely. It's either table okay. or take a vote. Okay. Okay. Um, well, let's do that hmm. then. Uh, Councilmember Moore, uh, you've made a motion. That motion was seconded. Um, Council, uh, Councilmember Kraft, uh, it, it's your turn to speak. Um, thank you, Mayor. I move to send this back to committee for them to, for further discussion for the uh, ability for the public to um, also make comments then if that is um, what they choose. That way we will be able to get more information when we come back for a council uh, and, uh, and the next council meeting. And Council Member Kraft, yes. uh, there's, a, there's a motion before uh, the body at this point that has been seconded. Um, so I think your your uh, I think the intent of your motion is to have it brought up at the at the committee level again, and the committee chair uh, can choose to do that uh, at the committee level. That'll be an agenda setting item, uh, but I think that's that's in line with the motion. Um, Mayor, yes, uh, Council Member Kochmar, I was just going to call on you. <laughs> so as chair of the committee, I, I'm seeing a broader issue here than just what could be discussed at the committee level. So I'm wondering if it might not be better. I mean, this motion is on the table to table, which is fine. Yeah. But I'm wondering as a suggestion that we might bring it back to the full council with the um, topics of um, concern so that the full council can hear it as a body. That's just a suggestion. So we're not, we're not making a motion at all. Right now we're tabling it. We can discuss it later, but uh, right. I, I think it would be better, I, and, and thank you, uh, Council Member Croft, it was a good idea. I, I think it might be better, personally, if we just brought it back to the full, full council for, you know, because you have some concerns and the, those concerns should be addressed and the people should be able to ask their questions and they're not all at the committee meetings. In fact, we may not even have a committee meeting on December 8th, I'm not sure yet. Okay. Okay, Council. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, then we've got, okay, I'll, I'll get to you, uh, Council President. I've got Council Member Baruso first and Council President Honda. Council thank Member you, Baruso, you're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was going to, uh, I would like to support uh, Council Member's Coach Smart's suggestion that we do that because if it does come back to committee, it's coming back again back to Council. So I would like the, yeah. all the information to be out there uh, also for the public. And so um, I support that uh, with. Councilmember Koshmar would like to do. Thank you. Okay. Council, thank you very much, Councilmember. Council President Honda. Uh, thank you. And I would also like to get information on our other uh, jails. I, I'm sure that they have lawsuits against them too. I, I don't think that's an unusual thing to have a lawsuit against jail. Uh, but if we're asking for this information for SCORE, then we should be asking for it for all of the facilities we put prisoners in. Yeah. And I'm uh, sorry, okay. Chief, to, to cause more work. I know you're you're pretty busy, but it's information the council would like. Well I I, I, I go ahead. Well, I do uh, go ahead, Chief. You you go first. Sure. I mean we I can have we can research this and have probably Commander Schwan uh, do a full report to council. We can also have uh, the director from SCORE come speak to council. Um, about the facility and the accreditation that they have. Um, and I also want to echo uh, what council president said. If we look at King County Jail or even Kent Jail, I mean, SCORE Jail at one point housed 650, 700 people. And I know from time to time, sometimes you're, you're going to have, uh, you know, in custody death. And I know it's happened at other facilities too. So, um, you know, it, the problems or the lawsuits that was brought up, uh, it just, it didn't recall with me when I spoke, but it was brought back to me when uh, I was aware of that one incident. But I, overall, I don't, in the jail industry, I certainly don't hear scores being a substandard uh, facility by any means. 
but I would love to have the director come speak and have Commander Schwann speak so the council can have all of the information and, and make that decision. I do wanna say one thing, we made a policy decision to be a contract jail facility. If we don't do that, uh, we're not gonna have anywhere to put our inmates. So we need to be really careful about, we're not gonna do contract jails anymore because where will we put our inmates for public safety reasons? I, I do, thank you very much, Chief. I do wanna say that uh, Council Member uh, uh, Kraft, thank you for uh, having uh, uh, Jerry Lynn, um, the Council Administrative Assistant send out the article uh, that talked, uh, that deals uh, the uh, MSNBC article from um, from February of this year that deals with the 2017 um, uh, really tragic circumstances of the death of that inmate. And, you know, I think this is this has been a good discussion council um, because we obviously want to make sure that whatever we do as a city um, is uh, humane and fair and just and equitable just as the speaker spoke earlier. So it never hurts to have these conversations. In fact, it's it's what we need to do as a, as, as a an organization, um, as a city to make sure that what we do uh, comports with justice and, and all the things that we, uh, that, that we look to. So with that, um, I, I think this is perfectly aligned with that and there's no, there's no problem uh, whatsoever uh, or downside to taking a step back and really thinking about whether we wanna do this. So council is my understanding that the motion made by Councilor Moore was to uh, table the matter. And um, uh, and then it was seconded by Councilmember Tran. We've had a robust discussion. Uh, Councilmember Moore, before I call for a vote, yeah. um, oh, let me just say that should this pass, then we would have these matters uh, reviewed, looked at, and then we could potentially bring it back up uh, at an agenda setting meeting to put it back up on the main city council. But we're a couple of steps away from that. The motion before on the floor and before the body is to table the matter, period. Councilmember Moore, would you like to speak to the motion before the vote? Uh, actually, just just um, nothing to add uh, other than just a quick little question for the chief. Uh, by um, um, we, um, the SCORE jail facility, would you consider that to be a private jail facility? I'm just curious about that, chief. It's publicly owned. No, it's publicly owned by multiple okay. jurisdictions. Perfect, perfect, okay. And we, were, and we were one of the owner cities. Okay, cool, thank you. Mr. Mayor. But, but Councilmember Moore, I, I think that's a great question because there's been a lot of concern about privatized jails. And I think that, thank you. you know, anytime that you have a question like that, that's exactly what this process is for to make sure that we're upholding the standards that we want to. Councilmember Russo, did you have a comment? Yeah, yes, I do, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the original um, motion was to table indefinitely. I'd like to have yes. Council Member Moore amend that, please, to okay. table. Okay, Council Member Moore, is that your intention just to, to, to table at this point and then subject to further information? That is correct. Okay. All right. Council, we've had a robust discussion. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak on the matter before I call for a vote? Council President Honda, I see your hand is up. Is that because you want to uh, give me soda money? <laughs> Soda is not healthy. You shouldn't be drinking it. <laughs> Thank Speaks you, Nurse Harta. <laughs> yes. What, was Call there for a vote? Okay, I was yeah, actually vote. waiting to see if you're going to say something. Oh, okay. oh, I'm sorry. No, let's vote. Let's move on. Let's vote. We have a lot of stuff to cover. We do. We do. All right, Council. All those in favor of Council Member Moore's motion to table the matter. Aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Council, what we'll do is I will speak uh, to the chief. And uh, if we see this again, it, it'll be, uh, I'll, I'll discuss this at agenda setting with uh, the council president and uh, council member Kochmar and uh, the city attorney. And we will certainly give you any kind of information and we'll gather up some information and get back to you on this. So thank you. Uh, the matter is tabled. Okay, now let's move on to item six. Good discussion council, thank you so much. Item six, public hearings. Consideration of 2021-2022 uh, biennial budget. Public hearing uh, per RCW 35A.34 continued from November 4th of 2020. I do wanna note that um, first we're gonna have a staff report from a day or finance director, public comment uh, for three minutes each and then council discussion. And then it is on, I believe for first reading as well. So um, with that, a day, you're on.
<laughs> uh, good evening, Mayor Farrell, oh, hey. Council President Honda, and hey. Council. Uh, this is just to the first uh, uh, reading of the ordinance for 2021-2022 biennium budget. And the current proposal, proposed ordinance, which is included in the council packet, and the council may move this ordinance to the December 1st for second reading with the selected options of adoption. Uh, just for the record, I think uh, the, uh, the uh, King County actually often, which in the past we've submitted these in December, but now they're asking we need to submit our tax and uh, uh, before the end of November. So it is uh, critical that we're able to come to some conclusion uh, by December. Uh, over the past few months with uh, the deliberation of the council, these are some of the items that uh, uh, came up with that uh, the council wanted to make sure are done. Uh, first is a section 108 debt payment to insist that we do not use the money from section 108 to pay the outstanding debt on the Performing Heart Center. So what we will be doing is now finding money within the city uh, to pay for this bill without using section 108. Uh, secondly, our consultant of advisors that uh, we need a 5% increase for the next three years. So what we negotiate with them is to have 448, which is 4% 4 in 2021, 4% 4 in 2022, and 8% in 2023. Based on this budget, we are coming up with the funding for 2021, and we still have 2022 and 23 to go. Uh, lobbyist contract, which I think uh, is also part of what the council is requesting. I think the lobby, if we were to get this done, is to be able to, uh, 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 to make sure that we're able to get some revenue, you know, for that 60,000 to pay out by getting some funding uh, from the federal government. Uh, in order to do this, we will be, because we are foreseeing that in 2020, we will be able to have some savings in jail. And that is where the two, where the 269 is coming from. So we will increase our beginning fund balance uh, by this, you know, 691,000. In the past, what we will have done is wait till next year to do this. You know, at that time we will know what savings or what carryover we have. But based on this uh, budget proposal, we will have to amend uh, the beginning fund balance in the current budget to be able to accommodate this. Uh, number four, I think uh, the council suggests that we create a separate fund for the jail service. So we will be moving 3.3 million out of the general fund and into a separate fund by itself so that the council can see how much it is and should there be a savings or whatever it will retain remain in that fund also to fund you know an economic development staff you know that would be 80,000 uh, uh, for 2021 uh, to point number seven consultant for planner to be able to help us with the downtown uh, code uh, that would be 100,000 for 2021. Yes, uh, director, uh, uh, CD directors have pointed out that, you know, uh, when we solicit contract, that may be about 200,000, but the contract probably will go through two years. So at the end of this year, when we know what we actually end up with, there'll be another opportunity uh, probably sometimes in March or April to do budget amendment to the 2021-2022 budget. At that time, we will know exactly how much we're actually carrying forward. But for now, we're setting 100,000 for that consulting work. Uh, inclusion and diversity program also we're setting 
$70,000 aside to do that in 2021. Uh, so we are funding those three items, the economic development, the consulting uh, for planners, the inclusion, uh, by taking the money that was in the proposed budget for the non-REP uh, salary adjustment in 2022. So uh, that is where that is coming from. Uh, also, uh, there's a CDBG grant that we know we'll be getting next year uh, that we found out after the original uh, budget was submitted. So it's revenue and expenditure. So that will just be a wash. These are the changes that will be needed to the proposed budget that is before you. So before we move forward, you will have to accept all of these and do the second reading and move on. So the council action that I'll be requesting today will be to consider amending the proposed budget as outlined in the previous page that I just outlined and uh, also consider a first reading of 2021-2022 biennium budget. And consider moving it to December 1st, 2020 for second reading and adoption. And I'll be glad to answer any question. Okay, um, that's member Lydia Sepadawson. Thank you, Ade, and thank you, Mayor. Um, on your presentation, line number six, seven, and eight, the three positions that we talked about. Mm -hmm. The first one says um, economic de development staff, I believe. And then the second one says co uh, consultant. And then the third one says equity, and um, um, it says program. So those three distinctions are a little, they're all different. They mean something different. When it says program and 70,000, would that also include training and everything? Or is it really the position that we're talking about for 70,000? Can I? Because, uh, uh, go ahead. Oh, go, go ahead, no, go ahead, Lydia, finish, please. No, so my, my point is, if it's, if it's about the program as a whole, then um, I, don't, I don't know um, if 70,000 would cover it. But I don't know what program means. So if, if yeah, that's my question really. So I can I can understand the three different um, descriptions of those three positions. Okay. So the way I, uh, as, as you know, I forwarded to, to the council. One of the things I did after our last meeting is I sat down with the day, and um, and said let's try to find you know, this money as I, if I as I've worked it out with you. I think it was about two hundred and fifty-two thousand, and now we've also added in the sixty thousand for it, the possible lobbyist. We've freed up money, and we talked about where those funds will come from from one-time sources. The idea, if if this is how you want to proceed, this was what where I what I was trying to work out for uh, to present to you, is that the economic development the economic development position to help Tim would be a full-time employee. This is if you want to go this way, but this is actually what 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 I meant to propose uh, for you to propose if you wanted to. So the economic development position at that stated figure would would be a, like a regular full-time employee. The um, the uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion position would be on a contract basis. You know, essentially a half-time equivalent and that person once they got hired would develop a program so it's a part-time or you know like a, essentially we took half of 150 which is 70 75 that we would have somebody be a consultant to essentially start working on a program that will, will would need to be kind of rolled out and and really think about which direction we want to go in but it would be a consultant um, uh, for uh, that period for essentially a half position. Um, and then the third position would be the $100,000 for both 2021 and 2022 for the economic, excuse me, for the community development planner position to help with our downtown. And then there's also the 60,000 for the lobbyist. That's actually, I hope that's clear. That's what I was trying to relay. Now it's your council budget, I, you, excuse me, it's your, it's your budget council. Um, so it's up to however you want to proceed, but that's what I meant with regard to the information and uh, 
the assumptions that we're making in freeing up the dollars for you. That being all said, Councilmember Sepha do you have a comment on any of that? Um, yes. So 2021, maybe part-time developing the program. Okay. Um, but then what are we saying for 2022? Um, is that going to change or is that something we're revisiting? It would be for Just, both years. It would be 70, 75, I think. I'm, I'm not looking at the exact dollar right now, but what's ever in that presentation. It would be for year. both years. It would be for training. And I think what we, you know, it's sort of a, 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 qual, a crawl, walk, run approach as we sort of start this. It would be a matter of identifying, you know, who would we want to reach out? This would be, who could we get to come in and, uh, you know, and what programs and trainings, it would be essentially an in-house trainer uh, that we would have, you know, on staff and we would have to sit down and, and work in conjunction with somebody, listen a lot, learn a lot from this person and really kind of figure out our way forward as opposed to hiring a new person without any kind of work plan or any kind of identifiable, um, this is a, essentially an introduction into that position. And it could, in, yeah. in the next budget, yeah, go ahead. No, and, and I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Mayor. I didn't mean to interrupt you. So okay. for 2021, yes, developing the program makes sense. And then 2022, though, I think there's there's got to be a continuum to where we are doing or we're, we've landed somewhere um, in a way. So maybe um, uh, at that point, either the job description would change and or um, uh, we have something tangible that we have that we're working with. So, but I think we have time for, you know, amendments or whatever. So, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, but at least I wanted to make sure I clarified what, what we're talking about in regard to part-time positions and, and contract positions. And so we're talking about a contract part-time for the diversity position, a uh, contract position for the planner, a full-time position for economic development, and then also contracting the 60,000 for the lobbyist. That's the money we freed up with you that we think we've got. But again, I'll, I'll wait for the motion. Council Member Tran. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, I wanna give kudos to uh, Mayor Farrow and, and Ade for trying to help us uh, locate the money uh, to uh, fund these uh, position. Um, I, I do have um, a concern in regard to the inclusion and diversity um, uh, position. If we are gonna make this as a consultant, uh, I, I think I, uh, I have some reservation about that. What we try to do, in my opinion, is to build a culture of respect, diversity, inclusion, and equity. We are building this culture in the city of Fairtrade Way. If we are gonna bring a con consultant in, he or she will do it for a year, uh, wrap it up, turn it over, and somebody else will have to pick up and run with it. Versus if we are invest into this position as the employee of our, even uh, a part-time basis, I think is give more meaningful to this position. Uh, th because the thing that we do is not just a project. It's not something that we just do it for a few months or a year and then we call it good and everybody will be fine. We are building a culture and it would take years to build this. Take my agency, for example. It took us seven to eight years to build this culture. And we have our own diversity and inclusion person on board for the last eight years. And we st still not finish. So I am concerned that if we are gonna turn this position into a consultant, this is not going to address the concern that most of us have on the council. Thank you. Okay. 
I do believe that the money could be used for a halftime position. Um, and, but it, again, it's up to you and on, on what you want to, um, you know, a, a halftime, but a, like a regular employee that's employed halftime. Um, council member, actually, actually you guys, uh, as I said at the beginning of the meeting, it's 835. Right now I have the following speakers lined up. Council member Baruso, council member Sefa Dawson, and um, in a day, actually, did you have a quick comment before we break? Yes, sir. I just wanted to say, I think uh, in order to, if I fully understand what the council is looking for, you actually want somebody to help us design what this is supposed to be like, what the position will be doing, what function, what the accomplishment will be. You know, just hiring, throwing money to hire somebody without articulating on what that position should be doing, what the program will look like. I think it will just be another government project where we just throw money. I think the council needs to be engaged to be able to fully understand what the program is, what it, what you will get out of it, how you will measure what you are accomplishing. So I think that is why to some degree, it is called a program to be able to engage the council to design the roadmap of what it's supposed to be like. Let's, uh, it's 8.36. Um, I, it's 8.36. Uh, why don't we, um, um, uh, let's break for, let's see here, uh, nine minutes. Let's go uh, to 8.45. Uh, is that acceptable to everybody? Okay. Uh, so we'll be in recess for nine minutes, 8.45 sharp, okay? And I'm talking as much as to myself as to you. So uh, we will reconvene at 8.45 and uh, we're in recess uh, for just a few moments. Thank you.
with those raised eyebrows. Thank you for saying eyebrows. <laughs> Why, you get the eyebrows sometimes? <laughs> sometimes people say eyebrow. <laughs> Uh, that's good. Okay, we are back on the record. <laughs> Sarah Leandra, I'm so used to saying that all the time. Is this on the record? Is this off the record? Um, all right. Let's go back. Let's see here. All right, Councilor Brusso, uh, did you already speak? No, Mr. Mayor, I was next. Okay, all right, yes, you are. You're, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you. I'm going to lower my hand so that doesn't go again. <laughs> I want to give you another 15 cents. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Day. And, you know, I, I'd like to also echo uh, Council Member Trans um, um, saying that, you know, I, I appreciate what you, what you both are tr doing and trying to find also uh, trying to get to the end point of what we're looking forward to. And so that being said, so in that position, I understand what today just is saying, um, but I still am on the same page with uh, Council Member Tran and some other council members about being invested into the community. Consultant to me could work, but then again, I want someone, I feel that that person that even if it's part-time would grow into position to, to know, to work with the council also, um, to be able to do what we were looking for them to do that person to do but i think that the being invested in the community trying to figure out where we're going together would be a better thing than i'm just afraid of the consultant too who are done for the year and gone um i want this to be a sustainable position uh, to be able to move forward and again also to remind folks you know that are listening to that you know again this is just about just training uh diversity training things like that it's it's more about uh, inclusion, equity, and diversity within everything that the city does again, whether it's policies, promotions, hiring, um, how our ordinances read, uh, how we move forward in our, in our city vision, our land use uh, vision, everything like that has to be included in that. And so that position I feel again is something that should be, if we can do that, a, a part-time position within the city staff itself, work with the council, I don't have a problem with doing that. I'm sure others don't about what we want to see in that position. Um, so on that one, I do have some other questions, but I'll save those for uh, later in there. But that's what I want to make comment on that one position. Thank you. Now, before I I, we've got Councilmember Sefa Dawson and Councilmember Kraft next, I will say that one of the things I'm, that I'll, what I'll try to do uh, after this council is um, is listen to where I believe the majority, you know, the where the consensus is. I'll use the word consensus, and then um, I, I believe that uh, later on in the discussion, um, if uh, Council President Honda makes a motion, I, I think that we're going to hopefully come to some consensus on some of these items. Um, and one of the key issues is whether that's a part-time position or whether it's the contract position. So it would be good to hear people weigh in, and then. I believe where Council President Honda and and staff and I are, are working on is is that um, if uh, to move forward from tonight would be to move forward with the first reading and to incorporate the the understandings of the council uh, for the actual to get the actual language for the second reading. 
Does that make sense, you guys? That way we don't have to like take out pencils and figure out exact words right now. With that, Council Member uh, Kraft? You answered my question, Mayor. Thank you. Oh, okay, great. Um, Council Member Kraft, is it, what is your, can, can I just ask your position in regard to having a halftime position or um, a contract position for the diversity position? Thank you, Mayor. Yes, my current position is that I think there is more valuable value in having a part-time position, so somebody more permanent on staff. Um, and I just wanted to emphasize what Council Member Baruso said. This is not just about programming. Really, it, there are measurable, measurable outcomes um, to respond to Director Arawula. There are measurable outcomes that we can take to see whether or not this position is valuable. For example, is the city staff reflective of the federal white community? That is one measurable outcome that we can um, have. And, and even if I'm not on the council in the future, that's something that the council could actually um, take statistics and see, is this position bringing value to, uh, the, to the city? But we can't really do that if there is just a contract position where the person is not invested in trying to understand where the city's culture is and is going. Um, and historically where the city has been. Okay, thank you. Council Member Sefa Dawson. Thank you, Mayor. I um, yeah, I think everybody said it. I, I do also support that we have, even if it's part-time, because then we understand and know that the city is committed to the future um, continuation of this process. Uh, but if it's a contract and somehow somewhere we decide we don't have the money or the, you know, we, we don't like what the contractor is doing. We could always, um, it, it could go in on the back burner, which I don't want. So um, I think um, it's just that we do want a staff position that is dedicated to this. So thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, and um, okay. And are you are are you okay with what we're thinking about right now in regard to a halftime position at this stage based on funding? Okay. I'm okay All right. with thank that. You. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And Council Member Sefadas, and I want to thank you publicly for your suggestion that we break every meeting at 8:30. I think that's going to be a great tradition moving forward. Uh, we talked uh, b between the last meeting, and I it's good to get out and stretch your legs a little bit and clear your head. So thank you so much. Okay, Council Member Moore, and then Council President Honda. Council Member Moore. Well, that's a tough act to follow. Yeah. No uh, kidding. Yes. Councilmember Dawson, thank you so much. I appreciate that break. Uh, it's it's good to get that. Um, you know, um, clearly, Mr. Mayor, you, you already have uh, the majority of of, of uh, the responses here, and and um, I think I'm I'm uh, fine with either a staff or a contract. Uh, I I will say that if if we dare sign a contract with a consultant that's not dedicated or committed then we should terminate that contract immediately. Uh, because I have every faith and confidence that um, uh, the, the council uh, gives authority to the mayor and in terms of contract uh, that we'll uh, find uh, a good um, uh, consultant. Um, and, and I also uh, will dare myself to say that uh, I don't think, even if it's a contract position, I don't think um, future councils, and I can't speak for them, uh, would um, ignore such a pivotal, pivotal um, opportunity uh, for Fedaway. I mean, we are a changing community. We've seen it happen um, and whatnot. But, but look, mark my words, I'm, I'm uh, supportive of, of uh, having a part-time staff. I think it's fine. Um, you know, I, I, I do want... Uh, to find out, and I think this is, um, I tried to, to communicate with our finance uh, director. Um, so, uh, but, you know, I would like to find out what it, what does it cost uh, the city to, to have a part-time staff member uh, with part-time benefits uh, and wages. And, and so, um, you know, I, I know that I had a good conversation with, uh, with uh, Councilman Bruce, and I appreciated that. Uh, as well that led to that type of question. So I would like to get a snapshot of, of what that looks like. Um, and, um, and I think, you, you know, 
actually, uh, I'll wait and say that a little bit later. But um, that's that would be my two cents and thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Council President Harnda. Um, thank you. So I'm fine either way with, way with a contract or a part-time position, but I believe that the city of Renton, their inclusion and diversity person is under a contract and she's been there for many, many years and is you know, in demand just to speak and to train other cities. So it's, it's worked for the city of Renton to have that. I could be wrong, but I, I have been told that she is under a contract. If this person were to be um, hired part-time, what department would it fall under? And who would write the job description? It would go under human resources and okay. um, and work uh, directly um, with, under the supervision of our human resources manager, Jean Stanley, because this is so, a human resource issue. Okay, uh, you know, I know that um, Jean does a lot of contracting out for training or does the training herself for staff. It's possible that by hiring a person to do some of the training, could, there could be cost savings there, it's possible. But I don't want this person just to do training. That's not my vision of an inclusion and diversity staff member. I would like much more than, than just training from this person. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, and you know, maybe what we could do, well, yeah, I, I think what we're hearing is a consensus about uh, uh, likely a half-time person, but if that were to change, I would certainly uh, come back. Well, maybe there's a way to give us a little bit of flexibility in the language of the budget, knowing that the will of the council would be to hire somebody, uh, you know, in a half-time position, uh, but making sure that we allocate the dollars for it. I'll, I'll just uh, leave that to the budget writers. Um, okay, so council member Dawson, did you, uh, Sofa Dawson, did you want to speak again? Oh, soda money. Uh, council President Honda, okay, council member Moore. Councilor yes, Moore, you're muted. God, I thought that would never happen to me, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> take take uh, two. Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe that just happened to me. Um, yeah, no. I, I uh, the other thing I would add, um, um, and you know, Councilmember Coachmark can maybe shed some more light on this. Um, it's my understanding that we've actually had this. This is just point of information and, and perspective. It's my. It's my. Um, understanding that we've actually had such a position before. Um, no? Or did I misunderstand I, that? Council Member Sefer um, Dawson? Or oh, was that Council President Honda? Council President Honda? When we had two assistant city managers, one of them, his, one of his jobs was as a diversity manager. And he were, I was on the diversity commission and he worked with us. Yeah. It was Brian. Thank Brian. you, Council Brian, President Honda. Yeah. 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 So I just. And then the I recession to... hit, and then we had to lay people off. That's right. So, okay. uh, Councilmember Sefa, oh, go ahead. Uh, oh, Councilmember Moore, you. you want to finish yeah, your thoughts? Yeah. And then, you know, this is just my, my perspective as well, which is, um, you know, if obviously, and I, I hope this is a given, that if, if we move forward with the staff person, and Mr. Mayor, uh, certainly I'm not telling you. Uh, what to do, but just my two cents. And I know you value advice from your policy partners, uh, but I, I would advocate that we obviously hire a person of uh, BIPOC, but I know that I'm getting from the BIPOC community, um, which there's a lot of value in, in that effort. Uh, but obviously I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but uh, e either way, uh, I'm, I'm pretty supportive of this and I see the value and the importance of, of this in our community. So thank you. Okay. Now, this is the public hearing. I believe it's during the first reading that we would do any kind of amendment. Is that right, Ryan? Uh, Mayor, there's lots of ways we could handle this. So if, if yes, I think that that's a reasonable way to do it, just forward this to first reading and then make the amendments at first reading. Um, if there's a consensus tonight as to how council wants to modify the budget, the motion could include direction to modify the budget 
before first reading. It's just, it depends on how much work gets done tonight, I think. Okay, one second. Either way, we'll work. Um, Council President Honda, what's your, uh, what's your preference? You wanna just uh, take care of it now? I, I think that we're in consensus that this is what we'd like, so we might as well take care of it now. Okay. Mayor? Uh, yes. We Governor. do have public comment. Okay, yes, we do. Okay. Um, and the mo just to be clear, the motion on this is gonna be at the, uh, hold on. Do we have a motion to forward this? One second. On public hearing, just first... close the public hearing and then we'll have first reading under ordinance. Oh, tonight is first reading. That's right. So yeah. we change it between first and second reading. Right. So That's we should I... try to handle yeah, it tonight. I know, but my, my thought was we're in the public hearing now. Should we do it during first reading is what I was saying later in the yes. agenda. Oh, I misunderstood. I'm sorry. Th that's what I was asking. The motion is yes, later. Yeah. So it. we would okay. do it between this this reading and the final reading. Correct. Yeah, what we'll, you'll, at, when we get later in the agenda, as I was saying earlier, thanks, Ryan. Um, <laughs> when we get later in the meeting, <laughs> sorry. When we get later in the meeting, I thought, oh, darn, isn't it first reading tonight? Uh, when we get later in the meeting, when we handle first right. reading, you can make your motion and then we'll get the exact language put in there based on what our understanding of your consensus is. And then at the second reading, I'll be there. And we'll just make sure that we, you know, capture all that, which to my understanding, again, uh, will be a, um, a, uh, a, an assistant in the economic development. This is the consensus I'm hearing from council, an assistant for Tim Johnson in economic development, a, uh, a lobbyist at $60,000 a year, a uh, halftime position for diversity and equity and inclusion, and a contract position at $100,000 a year for 21 and 22 for community development, for strategic planning uh, for downtown and other areas around the town. Um, Mayor, Go just ahead. to be just to be clear, yeah. Brian said we do not have staff to be able to do that. It will have to be a consultant. So it's not a position; it's a consultant. What? Are you talking about the diversity and equity position? No, I'm no, talking the planner. about the, uh, the planner. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Okay. Well, I'm not making myself clear tonight. Yes, that's my understanding. Yeah, that's yeah for the for the community development planner would be a contract position at $100,000 a year, both in 21 and 22. Okay, all right. So uh, let's uh, let's open it up for public comment. Stephanie, do we have any public comment? Mayor, I just have one letter to read that I received Please. from Anna Patrick. Okay. okay, it reads, hello, Mayor, Council President and Council. I'm a resident of Federal Way and would like to share some comments regarding the budget. I've been listening to your discussions about potential new positions to add to our city should funds become available. With rapid change to our downtown, please consider which position will create an identifiable downtown with social and economic focus for our city. Which position will strengthen the city as a whole by providing for long-term growth and employment and stable housing, maximize the benefit of public investment in infrastructure and services, provide a central gathering place for our community and improve the quality of urban design for all developments. These are some of the key points in the downtown core vision statement that you all put together at your last council retreat. Our council has done a great job partnering with local nonprofits and utilizing relief funds to bring services and financial support to our community members in need. Child care facilities, small businesses and renters have received relief. And while this has not served all in our community, it is impactful to many. The mayor and council have taken steps to hear the voices of our biopic community and help make our city inclusive, safe, and welcoming. As we move out of this pandemic, Federway will be looking to a future with sound transit light rail, an opportunity zone in the downtown frame, and changing dynamic of housing, jobs, and the way we do business. I ask that those on council who are leaning towards an equity and diversity manager position, consider that we have diversity and state representation chosen by our voters and on the council who represent the biopic communities. Unless we are planning for staff turnover in our city, will this human resource position benefit those in our community more than any other position? Our city desperately needs revenue and opportunities. We can find a way to support our community members in taking advantage of the housing and job opportunities 
via nonprofit supports and services. We can provide a pathway to these opportunities through the Diversity Commission in partnership with the Economic Development Department. Therefore, therefore, I am hoping the city will consider a city planner consultant to revise our comprehensive plan for our downtown core and frame to benefit our community for future growth and opportunity. Further, I'm asking that the council please look at each position carefully and ask yourselves the following questions. First, how much will the position bring opportunity and financial stability to the citizens of Federal Way? Last, which position is going to be sustainable? Let us make Federal Way a shining example of what a diverse community of people can do together to benefit all in our community in a way that unites us all. To do this, we need good planning for our changing city. Thank you, Anna Patrick. All right, thank you very much. Okay, uh, Councilor uh, uh, Tran, do you have a motion with regard to the public hearing? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I move to close uh, the public hearing. Second. Is there a second? It's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Uh, an action on this item will take place under ordinances. Right, Ryan? Okay. Item B. Yes. Just kidding. Uh, thank you, Aday. Uh, item B, consideration of the 2021 property tax levy um, per hearing, uh, public hearing uh, per RCW 35A.34, continued from November 4th of 2020. First, we'll have a staff report from a day. A day? Okay. Good, good evening again, Mia Ferrell, Council President Honda, Council. Uh, this is uh, to levy the property tax in 2020 to be collected in 2021 for the city of Federal Way. According to the RCW 8455-120, we must have a public hearing. The minimum that is required is a single public hearing. And uh, even though the city have done a couple of them and we're still doing one today, so we are conforming with the law. Uh, in the ordinance, ex uh, except as provided in B of this subsection three, no increase in property tax revenue may be authorized by a taxing district other than the state, except by adoption of a separate ordinance or resolution pursuant to notice specifically authorizing the increase in terms of both dollars and percentage. And later on, you know, the ordinance will be before the council to do the first reading. So, but it must be adopted with an ordinance or a resolution. Uh, we've done public hearing October 20, October 21, October 27, November 4th, and also today, even though what the council is required to do is just to have one. So as of now, we've, you know, by the end of today, we would have had five. And with our tax levy, the rule says we must take either 1% or the lower of 1% or the IPD for this year, the IPD is 0.6%. So without the, uh, the, need, uh, the need resolution, we will have taken 0.6%. But last, the last uh, council meeting, the council passed a resolution substantiating that we need the 1%. So we will be claiming the 1% because you passed a substantial need resolution uh, on November 4th. So with this uh, 1% for the tax that is collected this year in 2020, the rate per thousand is 0.9765 per 1,000. With this new uh, levy, it will be 0.90225 per 1,000. So why is the rate going down? Probably the value is also going up but the maximum that we can collect on last year's property tax is 1%. And actually, if you look at what it actually is, 
it's actually less than less than one percent the reason why this often happens, even though we are taking the maximum limit factor is because the property that came into the service this year were not calculated last year so over and one percent is only the property that were levied last year the total property revenue increase over last year will be about 95,000. So by increasing our property by 1%, you know, that we're doing here is only giving us additional 94,000 or 95,000 over the property tax levy last year. Uh, we will certify, you know, when the council passes the, the, the final ordinance, it will be certified to the King County uh, by December 2nd. And this is the one that is really critical that they said it must be done before November. So next year, when we're doing the tax levy for 2022, it will need to be done before the end of November. So consider first reading of 2021 property tax levy and consider moving it to December 1st, 2020 for second reading and final adoption. All right, council, any questions? Okay, uh, do we have public comment? No, Mayor, I don't have anybody. All right, council discussion, anything else? All right, uh, council member Trandy, you have a motion. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I move to close the public hearing. Second. Sir, sir. It's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on closing the public hearing? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, matter passes. Item C, <clears throat> resolution ado adoption of the 2021 to 2026 revisions to the transportation improvement plan and arterial street plan. I'll now open the public hearing. Staff report, Rick Perez our traffic engineer. Okay, now is that visible? Yeah, yes. All right, great, thanks. Okay, there we go. So the question tonight is, should the council approve the proposed amendments to the 2021 to 2026 transportation improvement plan? So the city had applied for two grants for projects um, for a road diet on South 288th Street. Um, the authorization to submit the grants was too late to incorporate into the TIP that was adopted back in June. And so at least one and probably both of these grants appears that it, they will be awarded. Uh, projects must be on the TIP to be awarded for the grants. So um, the projects here, um, we originally submitted um, one for um, just the portion east of Military Road to 34th Avenue. And then uh, we also applied to the Transportation Improvement Board for the entire corridor. And uh, the idea behind these projects is it will connect to the uh, 16th Avenue South Trail that um, we currently have funding for uh, design and right of way. And so it will provide a nice continuous corridor actually connecting um, Thomas Jefferson with Federal High. So that's the purpose of those projects. So, um, and I suppose I should uh, explain a road diet is when you remove, um, you re restripe a four lane street to three lanes, you put in bike lanes and um, add a two way left turn lane and you only have one lane in each direction. So um, that's the basic concept. They tend to not reduce capacity, but also provide bike lanes. 
and also better manage speeds because people can't pass each other. So with that, um, options considered, one, to recommend approval of the resolution, adopting the revision, two, do not recommend approval and provide direction to staff. Mayor's recommendation is to forward option, oh no, I just forgot to change that again. Um, so uh, approve the resolution adopting the revised 21 to 26 PIP. So um, with that, happy to answer any questions. No, thanks. Sorry, Mayor. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, do we have any public comment? Okay. No. Mayor, your mic's up. Public comment? There you go. No, we don't have anyone signed up for public comment on this item. All right. Council, any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none. Uh, Councilmember Bruso, do you have a motion to close the public hearing? Yes, I do, Mr. Mayor. I move to close the public hearing. Is there a I'll second? second that. Second. It's been a motion a second. Is there any discussion? All right. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Madam President, unanimously. Councilor Bruso, do you have a, a as to the main motion? Yes, I do, Mr. Mayor. I move approval of the proposed resolution. Second. All right. It's been uh, moved and seconded. Is there any uh, any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, matter passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Item D, Federal Way Link Extension, FWLE, Development Agreement Alteration Number One. I'll now open the public hearing. We'll have a staff report from Ryan Bedlin, our city liaison uh, with Sound Transit. Ryan? All right, good evening, Mayor, uh, Council President, and Council Members. I'm here tonight for the public hearing and first reading of the uh, first change to the Federal Way Link Extension Project Development Agreement. The policy question tonight is, should the City Council approve the change to the Federal Way Link Extension Project Development Agreement between Sound Transit and the City? Uh, I won't go into this in too much detail, but just as a reminder on some of the recent project history, last year in 2019, uh, both the transit way agreement and the project development agreement was um, passed by council and Sound Transit then elected to proceed with the design build process by selecting Kiewit Infrastructure West and issuing a notice to proceed. Uh, the issue that we are here tonight to discuss is that within the development agreement, the city granted the Sound Transit a code modification. The modification was to not have active uses on the ground floor of the new parking garage. And as mitigation for this, um, they agreed to install a city fiber optic line for the length of the alignment. Uh, the development agreement included a conceptual alignment as well as a description of certain standards to be met. The design build contractor did start to include this in their design, um, but design options emerged that uh, resulted in it being clear that um, the original alignment as, as uh, intended would not meet access issues, would create access issues for the city and result in cost overruns. So we are here tonight to discuss changing it essentially from the one we see on the left, which follows the alignment as um, has been approved for the Federal Way Link Extension. And the right is a concept that the city used to base an estimate on, on what would it take for us to install one with comparable functionality. So the total, what this would do is it would no longer require Sound Transit to install a fiber optic, but instead require them to pay fee and loom mitigation. Um, in the amount of $2,647,985. Uh, this estimate is based on the pathway we saw on the previous slide, um, and it covers the design and construction of that fiber optic pathway. Um, and that pathway is intended to provide comparable functionality as the one that was originally planned. Um, having the city take lead on implementing this project will allow us to build a better product for ourselves. Um, one that meets our needs and provides Sound Transit with a certain level of certain, uh, certainty in their design effort as well. Um, and the parties believe this to be a mutually beneficial solution um, to the design challenges that we're 
presented with the original fiber optic alignment. Um, so some of the key facts and findings is um, basically the implementing fiber optic um, as was envisioned in the project development agreement was infeasible um, or would result in greater development impacts than originally anticipated. Uh, the fee in lieu amount is based on a construction estimate prepared by city staff and that was not adjusted following Sound Transit's internal review and cost estimating. Um, and the amount includes an allowance for both design and engineering. Uh, designing a custom fiber optic path compared to one that was that was limited to the Sound Transit Guideway can prove to provide a better benefit and resolve uh, design challenges. And the last uh, key fact is that the original intent of the project development agreement remains unchanged and that all other effects, conditions, and requirements um, remain in place. So the summary for how we're implementing this is under our code and under, we have to um, enact these changes by an ordinance to give the mayor approval to execute a change to this agreement. Um, Sound Transit will have to complete the contract change on their own process in order to approve it. Um, and once that is complete, uh, agreement will be executed and the city will no longer require Sound Transit to build fiber optic and Sound Transit will pay the fee in lieu amount that uh, is referenced in the agreement. So just in closing, in 2019, following the execution of the agreement, um, they instructed the design build contractor to design the path and the design changed over challenges. We believe this to be a mutually beneficial solution. And the question before city council tonight is whether to enact an ordinance allowing this change to the agreement. Options considered are one, to approve the proposed ordinance and forward it to the city council on December 1st for a second reading. Uh, option two would be to reject the proposed ordinance and provide direction to staff. Mayor recommends option one to approve the proposed ordinance. And with that, I will take any questions. All right, thank you. Councilor Kraft, do you have a question? Thank you, Mayor. Um, briefly, it's more just a comment. I wanna confirm my understanding. For uh, since Sound Transit isn't going to be putting in the um, fiber optics for the city, but is instead giving us the money to do it ourselves, that money that we'll be receiving from Sound Transit is solely going to go towards um, the fiber optics for us to put in, and the city is not going to be spending it on anything else, right? Correct, and I'll let um, EJ follow up with that, but I believe the intent of the money is to first build the fiber optic with comparable functionality as was agreed to for mitigation. And if there's any um, leftover, it would essentially go to further build out fiber optic to support um, both city center and the guideway. Right, thank you. And uh, I think that you explained this um, Director Walsh, but if you could explain it for everybody who's um, viewing today as well, please. Sure. So um, it, in summary, the funding will go into a restricted account. It'll go into our capital construction account, um, which is not available for general use. It is something that goes through the council for allocation um, so that this funding will go into that restricted account in a specific project number that'll be created when we receive the money. Um, with that, it can only be used for this purpose. It cannot be pulled out and transferred into another fund. It can't be used for operations and maintenance, even within public works. It, it has to be used for this purpose. Great, thank you. And then it's uh, just to further clarify, the number that we came up with in settlement with Sound Transit basically would ensure that we would have something comparable and even extra just in case it costs a little bit more, right? Yes. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Council, any other questions? <clears throat> Council Member Sefa Dawson. Yes, thank you. So in the event that there's a shortfall in funds, are we, can we go back to Sound Transit or we're, this is it? This is uh, what we're agreeing on and we're on our own at that point. No, this is what we're agreeing on. Um, so city staff developed the cost estimate 
Um, I will tell you, we've reviewed it. We've peer reviewed it. We, at a staff level, are very comfortable with this number. It is escalated to the construction year. Um, but this is a finish the project number. Okay, and how long would it take to complete it? We, um, it, the actual project, the design times about just under a year, construction's probably six to 12 months, um, depending on how busy contractors are, um, you know, and just the time of year we do the bidding. Um, but it is, um, the, the requirement is that it is uh, finished by 2024. So it, it aligns with the Sound Transit finishing their work in the same area of the city. Thank you so much. Okay, Council President Honda. Uh, thank you. I was just gonna confirm with EJ that this would be done uh, before the train started. And I believe he just said that. So uh, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Stephanie, do we have any public comment? No, Mayor, I don't have anyone signed up for this item. All right. Council President Honda, do you have a motion? Uh, yes. I move to close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion and a second to close the public hearing. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, matter passed unanimously. We've got an ordinance under uh, ordinance section. Item E, 2021 to 2022 Human Services General Fund Grant Recommendations. I'll now open the public hearing. Staff report from Sarah, Bridger Sarah Bridgeford, our Community Services Manager. Sarah? Good evening. I will share my screen. Um, Thank you very much for having me, Mayor Farrell, President Honda, and members of the council. This evening, I will be presenting the 2021 through 2022 general fund grants as recommended by the Human Services Commission. The policy question before you is, should City Council approve the Human Services Commission 2021 to 2022 Human Services General Fund, HSGF, grant recommendations in the amount of $536,000? General fund grants are for a two-year period with estimated annual funding of $536,000. The application opened on March 4th with a due date of March 5th. The city received 75 complete applications requesting a total of $1,488,907. dollars This is the highest cumulative request in the city's grant making history. Um, applicants identified one of three City Council adopted strategy areas that their proposal addressed. Strategy one is for basic needs, such as housing, health, and hunger. There's a minimum of 40% of the funds that uh, must be allocated to this strategy. Strategy two is to promote individual and community safety through prevention, intervention, and crisis services. And strategy three is to promote services that foster stability and self-sufficiency for families and individuals. Through the 2019 Community Needs Assessment, the principle of equity was added to the city's grant making programs. To implement this, a three-part training titled Grant Making with an Equity Lens was held for commissioners in the spring. The evaluation form was adjusted to incorporate equity into how the commissioners would approach scoring the applications. One thing to note is that this was a first step in addressing equity. It was progress and there's more work to be done. Uh, there was only so much that we could be, that we were able to do once an application was open and during evaluation. So staff and commissioners are working on a plan to uh, incorporate additional equity work leading up to the next application cycle. I will take this opportunity to thank the Human Services Commissioners for their dedication and quality work in putting together the recommendations that are before you this evening. The Human Services Commission puts in not only a great deal of time, but a lot of energy and investment uh, to put forth a balanced set of recommendations to address the broad array of community needs. To ensure a fair and equitable process, the HSC follows a set process with the top criteria being the score of the proposals. 
Other criteria include performance of currently funded, addressing the strategies adopted by council and specific population needs. This cycle, the commission made two sets, two sets of recommendations. One set is in the amount of $570,800. It includes an increase in allocations that is not in the city's proposed budget. The second set is at $536,000 per year, is included in the proposed budget and is recommended by Mayor Farrell. The commission voted unanimously to forward both sets to city council for recommendation. The recommendations include a total of 41 applications funded via the general fund grants and seven applications via CDBG. The CDBG funds will be addressed in a separate presentation. Speaking to the recommendations at that $536,000 level, 23 applications are funded in strategy area one for $349,000. 14 applications are funded in strategy two for $144,000, and four applications are funded in strategy three for a total of $43,000. I would note that while strategy three sounds low in the funding allocation, the, um, we typically receive fewer applications in that strategy area, and additionally, $70,000 of the CDBG funds uh, are allocated in strategy three. There's uh, the mayor's recommendation is for option one to approve the 2021 through 2022 human services general fund grant recommendations in the amount of $536,000 and the contingency plan. The contingency plan recommended by the human services commission is to make pro rata adjustments should funding be more or less than anticipated. And with that, I would be happy to answer any questions that you have. Council, any questions? Council President Honda. Thank you. Um, I wanna thank Sarah and her staff. And I'd also like to thank the Human Services Commission. This is a lot of hard work that they do to come up with these recommendations. And it had to have been even harder this year because they couldn't meet in person. So I'd like to thank them for their dedication to the city and to our, our residents and um, know that the council really appreciates the work that they do. Thank you. All right, thank you. Council Member Sefa Dawson. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Sarah. And um, I too wanna to echo what Council President Susan Honda said. Um, um, thank you to the commission for the hard work and the time they put into this. Um, um, it's a lot of work. Um, I, I can also say that from experience. Um, I know I brought this up to you um, last week, um, Sarah, about my concerns that um, the um, um, immigrant communities were not funded. Um, and unfortunately, historically, they are not um, um, agencies that are big and that have been funded by the city. I get that because a lot of them are grassroots. But also I noticed that um, other, other areas where there was no funding or they weren't funded was um, in relation to senior services like the Parkinson's um, disease or um, yeah, park, uh, what is it? Northwest Parkinson's Foundation, Sound Generations, Autism Alliance, all these things. And it just hit me that um, none of the priorities really look at health as part of this maybe, and maybe um, correct me if I'm reading too much into this. Um, so I wonder, should there have been another strategy that addresses healthcare or health related issues and or senior programs and immigrant programs? Um, or would we put that under um, strategy one, the um, housing, health and, and hunger, and did they just happen to be in a different, um, um, to call strategy. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out what could have been done differently for these organizations to, um, especially the, uh, the senior programs that were not funded health related programs. Yes. Um, that is one of the, uh, one of the things that I was talking about with our applications. So um, the evaluation is completed and the initial funding is based on scores. Um, and then there's a component with past performance 
there's a variety of reasons that the programs that you mentioned were not funded. Um, one of the biggest constraints being the amount of funding available. And then in looking at the specific programs, there are some that have uh, underfund, uh, underperformed significantly over the last two years, um, which was a factor in their funding this cycle. Uh, others, the application scoring was the primary deciding factor. That is one of the things that uh, we, we realized as we integrated equity in, into evaluation, it doesn't address the application, uh, the, the writing of the application itself. And we are going to put a number of measures in, in place that will uh, help that process leading up to an open application. Once we have an open application, we're limited in uh, what we're able to do in terms of technical assistance, providing that feedback. And we'll take a more proactive approach, especially with those applications that were not funded this cycle in providing that, that feedback going into the next uh, application cycle. We talked about it at commission last night and the uh, commissioners have, at, at least as they approach their 2021 work plan, have agreed that they would be uh, willing to consider providing some of that assistance in addition to staff, because we do recognize that as staff, we are not staffed to add a lot more uh, work, but we can do some and are committed to making that happen. Great, and I do appreciate the work that you do. Um, and um, my second question to this is, um, the funding amount was 536,000 or, you know, around that. And if I'm not mistaken, and maybe Mayor, can, you can help me with this or Ade, um, you know, I worked for the city of Federal Way as human services manager in what, early 2003, 2002-ish. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's the funding level that we had or close to. Um, so can we change or consider um, increasing the human services funds and make it some kind of a formula. And I say this just because um, Sarah just said that the request was over a million dollars and we can only allocate this much, you know, almost half in request and the need is great and our population is growing. Um, and so um, I, would, I would like to propose that we look at using a formula um, to address or to do to for human services funding overall. Um, that way, then we are keeping up with um, um, the the demand and the need to serve our population. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member. I think that's something to consider as well, as to make sure that you know, with it, it over time, uh, the the dollars lose their value, lose their lose their uh, comparative strength, especially over that amount of time. Council President Honda. Um, thank you. I, I want to just respond to something that Council Member Sepha Dawson said. Recently, we got an email, or I got an email from the Commerce Department, and they handed out some awards called Washington Youth Development Nonprofit uh, Relief Fund Awards. They had a community group. They asked for volunteers to to rate the applications so a few months ago, and then they selected some folks. And anyway, several of the, and this is for um, all of the state of Washington, but some of the very groups that applied with the city of Federal Way actually were awarded under this, this program. So um, I would just say that I know that it would be nice to, to give everyone who asked us for funding some funding, but there are other sources out there that, that the groups can go to to get funding if we're not able to fund them. So I can forward it to you if you'd like me to. Sure, so was that to serve federal way residents? Uh, some of them are, yeah. Um, it's, it's quite an extensive list, but there are some that are for federal way on here. Yeah, but and sometimes I think our scoring methods um, do dis deserve disservice to agencies that are either grassroots, new or small. And so I think considering that as part of our evaluation also would help elevate them and not um, penalize them for not having the capacity to do the work because they do do the work. It's just that their applications don't look as good. Uh, 
So I think that's something else we need to consider also. And But overall, thank you very much, Sarah. I do appreciate all the work that you and your team does. Okay. Okay, um, Councilor Korsmar, do you have a motion? Yes, Mayor. I move to Mayor. close the public hearing. Uh, Mayor, I'm Stephanie. sorry. We have public comment. Oh. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. Public comment. We have Cynthia Ricks Macatan on the line. Hi, Cynthia. Hello, Mayor. Um, uh, council President Susan Honda and um, the other council members, thank you for letting me speak tonight. Um, I'm coming to you not as a resident, but as your human services commissioner who um, read um, all of the applications, not just the ones that I was supposed to score. And um, I just want to talk to you about the process that we use. So we're very clear on what we did. Besides getting training on um, equity and inclusion and understanding implicit bias and how that might um, play into when you're reviewing applications, um, in addition to that training, we did agree to a process um, of reviewing the application, scoring them, um, making sure that we funded each of the three priorities. And then what I thought was really uh, unique this year is that we went back and we said, now of the ones that we funded, where are the gaps in services? Who are we not funding in each of the priorities? What groups are missing? And are there any that we need to address knowing that there are needs in our community? And when we did that, there were several projects and programs that we went and pulled back in and included in this process. And um, that was just an amazing feat because there were some areas where there truly was some gaps. Um, and then um, when we finished that, then we uh, uh, finished looking at the funding and came with our recommendations. And so that was very unique. And when we, when we did that, there were some organizations who Maybe, um, you know, um, they do really good work, but the application, the way it was written, might have been the issue, right? But good service, and we needed that service. And that was something that was important, and it was a gap in our community. So I just want to put that out there that we did do that. What I am looking forward to, and I'm really excited about, and we talked about this last night in our commission meeting, is that we are committed to doing this work with an equity lens being inclusive and understanding that there is a, um, a huge diversity in our community. And so during the off year, remember we do applications on a two year cycle. During the off year, we wanna spend the time working with those folks who applied and those that felt like they couldn't apply, right? These are your smaller organizations, the coalitions that maybe um, are not used to accessing mainstream funding like we are doing here and working with them and get to know them and talk about the application process, us as commissioners, right? And what we're looking for when we're scoring and, and build that relationship so we can provide some of that technical assistance and really work on the relationship. So when the funding opens up again, we've done our due, due diligence in reaching as many people that we can, okay? And that's something that's different. Usually we go out and we interview um, the, the applicants that were awarded funding and, and visit their programs and just do a site visit. This time we're playing a different role. We're reaching out to the community. We're saying, if you provide services in our community and you would be eligible for these funds, let's go out, let's meet with you. If you've applied and were not awarded, let's go out, let's meet with you, right? Let's talk about who we are, what this process is, what are your concerns, what worked well, what didn't work well. And we're being proactive. We're not just leaving that up to staff to do, but we as commissioners are taking an active role especially since we are the ones that end up reviewing these applications. So I'm excited about that. I think that's part of the equity um, um, work. I think that's also part of building relationships and being inclusive. So thank you for this opportunity. And if you have any questions for me, I'm available. All right, thank you very much, Cynthia. <clears throat> any other public comment? No, no, that's all I had. That's all I had for this one. All right. Okay, um, Councilmember Coachmore. Well, thank you, Mary. Thank you to Cynthia and to all of the Human Services Commission. I know, commissioners, I know that this is a lot of work and, uh, and they're very dedicated to what they're doing and, uh, and it's a wonderful thing that they're doing for our community. So, uh, Mayor, I move to close the public hearing. Second. All right. All right. 
Uh, there's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Uh, the motion, the public hearing is closed. Now we move on to the main motion. Councilmember Kochmar. Thank you very much, Mayor. I move approval of the proposed 2021-2022 Human Services General Fund grants in the amount of $536,000. The individual grant amounts shall be subject to the contingency that a funding for the Human Services General Fund grants is greater or less than anticipated, a pro rata adjustment will be made to all grants except those that would result in a grant amount of less than $5,000. Second. All right, there's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Matter passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, good job, Sarah. Thank you. And thank you, Cynthia. Okay, item F. Program Year 2021 Community Development Block Grant CDBG Annual Action Plan. I'll now open the public hearing. We'll have a staff report from Sarah Bridgeford, our Community Services Manager. Mm -hmm. I know your, your title hasn't changed in the last 10 minutes. I, <laughs> I don't need to fully introduce you again. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mayor Farrell, uh, Council President Honda, and member of the Council, members of the Council. Uh, I will be presenting this evening on the 2021 CDBG Annual Action Plan. The Annual Action Plan is, I'm sorry, the policy question before you is, should City Council approve the Program Year 2021 Community Development Block Grant CDBG Annual Action Plan? The Annual Action Plan serves two purposes. The first is as a technical document that is submitted to HUD. It's a document that is generated within their system and, and often feels uh, clunky for community use. There are some modifications that we are able to make for uh, for the use within our community so that it can be a resource to show how the federal funds will be used and the impact that we are proposing. Uh, the 2021 Annual Action Plan has a number of objectives that tie into the five-year consolidated plan. The annual action plan includes objectives to improve and expand affordable housing options, to expand businesses, creating jobs and assisting the development of microenterprise, addressing and preventing homelessness, strengthening neighborhoods through planning of strategic neighborhood revitalization, and then the administration of the CDBG program. The 2021 annual action plan is presented based on the 2020 award of 735,000 $417. Uh, despite the program year starting on January 1st, the city typically receives our actual allocation in spring or summer. If the, uh, the amount is comparable, we do make pro rata adjustments to planning and admin and uh, housing repair. If it's a significant change, that would trigger an amendment that would come back before city council. And, and those procedures are laid out in the adopted citizen participation plan. CDBG funding is divided into three categories. The first is planning and administration. This is capped at 20% of the annual allocation. The second is public services, capped at 15% of the annual allocation. And then uh, projects recommended for public services will be discussed in detail on the next slide. The final category is what the city has named SURF or Com Community Economic Revitalization Funding. This category encompasses the fin final 65% of the annual allocation in addition to any program income that the city receives. For 2021, we are uh, leaving this at the 65% of the annual allocation. And that would be a total of 478,000 $417. The Human Services Commission has recommended seven programs to receive CDBG public service dollars. The programs are the city's inclusion program in the amount of $30,000. This program serves adults with developmental disabilities. There are four programs that focus on employment and training. These include the multi-service center for the youth employment services in the amount of $10,000. Orion Industries for $10,000, the Apprenticeship for Women, um, 
I'm sorry, the Apprenticeship for Non-Traditional Employment for Women, or ANU. They actually will serve any, any adults in the program, not only women. They are recommended for $8,000 in funding. And then the final is Partner in Employment for $10,000. These programs serve residents throughout the community, including youth and young adults, people with disabilities, uh, adults, and refugees and immigrants. El Centro de la Raza is recommended for $19,000 for an information and referral program that provides a longer term engagement with residents. And Fusion is included for $20,000 for its transitional housing program. The 2021 CDBG SURF budget again allocates $478,417. This includes code compliance at $37,000, the city's housing repair program for $381,417. I'll expand on that um, in just a moment. Highline College is recommended for a total of $60,000, $30,000 each for start zone, provided specifically in North Federal Way in the approved neighborhood revitalization strategy area as well as $30,000 for their economic development programs available across the city. As noted with an asterisk, the housing repair program allocation includes $231,161.50 that had originally been planned for the 2021 payment for the Section 108 loan. Um, due to delays in the hotel project, the CDBG funds will not be used to service this debt. Because of the timing with this annual action plan and public process, the funds have been added to the housing repair program, but they will be reallocated. In discussion with Mayor Farrell, uh, one, of the, one of the ideas that has come up is allocating this to a single adult shelter. COVID-19 has greatly impacted our shelter delivery with reach out, not being able to operate locally. We recognize this as a significant gap in services uh, in addition, Reach Out, being a winter shelter, does not meet the ongoing needs of people experiencing homelessness when it's operating locally. Addressing homelessness is one of the four goals in the consolidated plan as adopted by City Council. Any changes to this allocation will come before the Human Services Commission. It will include a public process and then um, come to City Council for approval. We anticipate having an updated annual action plan uh, within the next couple months. Um, the goal would be to have that in place before we receive our allocation from HUD. The process for the annual action plan includes the human services allocations that we discussed earlier this evening. Those allocations were initially made at the September meeting. A public comment period opened on October 14th and closed closes today and no comments have been received to date. There was a public hearing at the Human Services Commission meeting on October 19th. It was considered by committee last week and is before you this evening for consideration. I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Council, any questions? Council President Honda. Um, thank you. I want to, uh, of course, thank Sarah and the others who have worked on this. This is, um, I think it covers a lot of needs in our community. The housing program, I wanted to talk about a little bit. We discussed this at, um, I think it was the Parks Committee. And their council had some questions about the housing program and how people found out about it and, and what exactly it was. But, I just wanted to, to um, acknowledge the work that Jerry Lynn Clark does on this program because it's, it's, it's darn right amazing. She has developed a relationship with the people that she works with. And even if, you know, maybe five years ago she worked with the family to help repair their home so that they could live in it and be warm and safe they still come back and talk to her. She has, um, she's a great ambassador for the city. And I really appreciate what she does. She'll come in on her days off to get contracts signed. And she doesn't live very close to Federal Way. So I, I am very appreciative of, of her work on this. As to the shelter, we're, all, we're a city of almost 100,000 people. And 
I do believe we need to have a shelter for men and women. At some point, I think it's December 30th, the men and women being served at, C at the SeaTac Hotel will be out in the street with nowhere to go. I know that this isn't going to address their needs right now, but this is something to work for in the future. And I, I think it's time that the city of Federal Way started to, um, to seriously address how we can shelter men and, men and women 24-7. Uh, so thank you very much. Okay, council, any other questions? Okay, uh, do we have any public comment? Yes, Mayor, we have Cynthia ricks Nakatan on the line for this item as well. Right, hi Cynthia. Hi there, I promise to make this short. So um, <laughs> I wanna, I'm coming to you as a human services commissioner because um, of course we were um, involved in recommending some of the funding here. But I just wanted to uh, say thank you to the staff who um, uh, 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 Brittany and Sarah have been totally awesome and amazing um, in presenting um, the applications and presenting the process um, and helping us um, figure out and, and, and recommending um, our, our recommendation process and then to turn around and to put together a succinct action plan. There's actually a format that you're required to use by HUD. And they're able to take that format and still make it personable so that um, those that aren't um, HUD and speak HUD language can read it as a, uh, as a citizen and understand how that funding is being used and what those programs are and how it might benefit residents. And I just want to say thank you for bringing that um, personalism to the, um, the, the HUD format of the action plan. Um, I would encourage and recommend the city council to um, approve it. And thank you for allowing us commissioners to be involved in this process. Um, so those are my comments. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cynthia. And thank you so much for your work uh, with the commission um, and for your work previously with the city. Okay. Um, all right, any other public comment, Stephanie? No, Mayor, that's all we have. All right, council, anything else to contribute to this or any questions or anything? Okay, um, Councilor Koshmar, do you have a motion with regard to the public hearing? Thank you very much, Mayor. I want to say uh, thank you to Cynthia again for her comments and Deputy Pre uh, Councilor, Councilor President Susan Honda. <laughs> thank you again. Very well said. Uh, and Sarah, I know that you do a lot of hard work on this on this as well as uh, Jerry Lynn. I believe that uh, after the Parks Committee meeting, uh, Deputy. Pre um, keep wanting to call you deputy mayor i'm sorry it's it's ingrained in my brain uh council president honda put that on our council um website on our facebook page so that people know how to apply for housing repair program for the low-income folks shake your head up and down susan if that's correct yes yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> i knew i saw it. So, thank you so much so blink Mayor, your uh, eyes twice. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Once for yes, twice for no. Okay, so I, I move to close the public hearing. Second. Second. All right, it's been, been a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, thank you. Go ahead, Linda. Thank you, Mayor. So uh, I move approval of the pro uh, program year 2021 Community Development Block Grant Annual Action Plan with the conditions recommended by the Human Services Commission and authorize the mayor to execute all necessary documents to implement the plan and the corresponding funding agreements with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Second. Second. It's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Matter passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Thanks, Linda. Um, and thanks again, um, Sarah. Uh, great work. And thank you, Cynthia. Um, item seven, council business. Uh, Approval of, oh, excuse council me, Mayor. President Honda, yes. I hate to interrupt you, but it's almost okay. 10 o'clock. So we need to ah. have a, a motion to extend the meeting past 10 o'clock. Thank you. I move that. I move that we extend the meeting past 10 o'clock. Second. All right, thank, 
Okay. Uh, there's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I, th I think actually the council president did it. Um, oh, uh, I second yeah, that's that. No problem. <laughs> Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> I know. I don't want to just run over your motion there. So the, uh, the record that. should reflect that the council president made the motion. Very timely. Sure. Thank you. I was oblivious and should have my glasses on. I didn't see the time. Um, and uh, and that you seconded the motion. So um, uh, with that, is there any discussion about continuing the meeting? Um, past 10 p.m. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, matter passes unanimously. Thank you very much, Susan. Okay, uh, now we are on to the um, uh, 7A Council Business, approval of the uh, PSSA Collective Bargaining Agreement. We'll have a staff report from Ryan Call, our city attorney. Ryan? Thank you, Mayor. Mayor. Uh, good evening, everybody. Let me oh, share my screen. Okay, I'm here tonight to uh, present the uh, proposed collective bargaining agreement with the Police Support Services Association. This is the bargaining group that um, represents all of the non-management police support people. So basically non-uniformed or I guess non-sworn officers. We do have um, the new group in here, which is the transport officer. They are uh, limited commissioned officers. Uh, they do carry weapons, but they do, they do, do not arrest people. They uh, transport prisoners. Um, so here's the list of people uh, that is represented by this group. Originally, um, basically we've been out of contract uh, with this group since the beginning of the year. Our last contract ended December 31st, 2019. They had some issues with representation. Um, their lawyer quit and they got a new lawyer. And then um, we also had the compensation study start um, and they wanted to see the results of that before they started to negotiate. As that dragged on because of COVID, um, they realize now that they just need to get 20 uh, sorted out. We're about to step into a new biennium uh, and they would like to close out this contract. So they proposed a, what we call a rollover contract. There are no real substantive changes uh, to any of the work conditions or anything like that. We did do some housekeeping. We added the new transport officer uh, class to the contract and described the equipment that the contract uh, that the transport officers will be uh, using, but that's about it. The only real substantive issue is the COLA uh, for 2020. Um, they have proposed a 2% wage increase uh, retroactive from the beginning of the year so for the life of this contract. The cost of that for this entire group would be $37,000, uh, $37,240. Um, 2% is the same wage increase that the unrepresented staff for the city got for that year. The mayor's recommendation is to approve the 2020 collective bargaining agreement with the PSSA. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Council, Council you have any uh, questions? Uh, Council Mayor Tran. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Ryan. So I, I just want to make, make sure this is uh, for 2020, right? We are basically retroactively uh, approved this contract for this year, not that is correct. 2021. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Council Member Bruso. Um, Council Member Tran has asked my question. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Um, Council President Honda, do you have a motion? Uh, yes, I do. I move approval of the proposed 2020 collective bargaining agreement with the Federal Way Police Support Services Association. Second. Is there a, okay, there's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, matter passed unanimously. All right, now we've got the draft 2021 legislative agenda. Input is requested. I will have a staff report from Bill Vadino, our policy advisor. Mr. Mayor, Council President, and members of the Council, this will tee off our beginning of talking about um, two week two week process of talking about the uh, draft for the uh, Federal Way City Council legislative priorities. And so I'm going to run run us through a um, 
PowerPoint. We're going to look at, uh, as we talk about just the very early draft, also where we've been and where we could possibly go. So that's how we'll do that. And then, of course, we'll work over the next two weeks and then get together on December 1st again, and then also figure out when the, when the breakfast is going to happen. So what we're going to see here, hold on a second here. I got to click on this so this works. Um, you, you all received uh, this afternoon, the, it's a draft. It looks perfect, it looks all done, thanks to Steve Heiserman, but it, it is a draft. And so it's something we, we can work on. Uh, joining us is uh, Aaron Flygar, our legislative lobbyist, and he's now going to give us an overview of uh, where Olympia is and where it's going to go. So Aaron, take it away. Should I uh, unshare so you can see him, or what do we do here? Are we good? Whatever the mayor. On the line. There you are. There you are. Can everybody hear me decently? You can. You can Hi, Aaron. Right, yes. Can yeah, we can hear you. Cool. Yeah. All right. Um, so, good evening to everybody in this uh, early hour. Uh, for the record, my name is Aaron Flagar. I'm the uh, contract lobbyist for the city for state issues. Wanted to do a quick preview of the 2021 legislative session. Um, as with everything with this pandemic, um, I would say that everything is subject to change. <laughs> a lot of things are going to be subject to change between wow. now and when session starts. I'm going to go away. section by section. As session is, is underway. No, we're about to start that. But let's start off, kind of set the stage, see who is uh, going to be in charge coming into the 2021 legislative session. Uh, easy one re-election, uh, pretty overwhelmingly. All of the other uh, state executive officers that were incumbents were re-elected, except for the state treasurer, uh, who was uh, Dwayne Davidson, and he was defeated by 30th Legislative District Representative Mike Pellicciotti. Uh, the only open statewide open seat for executive office uh, was the Lieutenant Governor's office, which Denny Heck uh, was the victor. Every House seat was up and half the Senate seats. Uh, in the end, after tons of money being spent and uh, lots of campaigns, the, the net gains and losses uh, didn't change anything. So the majority that was in 2020 is still the majority. It's going to be 57-41 in the House and 28-21 in the Senate with one of those Senate Democrats of the 28 who caucuses with the Republicans. So some of the things that we're facing, uh, as, as we know, coming into 2021, uh, significant revenue shortfalls caused by the pandemic. Uh, between now and when, January rolls around, we could be anywhere between two and four billion dollars. It could even tick up a little bit more than that. We don't know what these latest um, uh, restrictions are going to do to the state's economy and tax collections. We know it's not going to be positive. Um, so the, the shortfall is what we have to deal with. It's what they have to plan for. The one uh, caveat or asterisk is if the feds can get their acts together and do another round of coronavirus aid uh, out to especially state and local governments. Uh, they've been talking about a $500 billion package for state and local governments. Um, so hopefully they can get something, something done, but uh, I wouldn't count on it until the next administration. Um, because of uh, the high un unemployment and the economic recession type of situation we are in, the legislature is going to do some measures to try and pump money back into the economy, uh, especially if the feds don't help out. The, the biggest tool that the legislature has at their disposal to pump money back into the economy and put people back to work is the state capital budget. It could be north of $3 billion this year. Uh, they're talking about one of the bigger ones they've done in quite some time. Uh, so that would be really good. Um, let's see, what else is there? So there is a significant uh, portion of the legislature that, that does not, they will not vote for um, 
ways to address the budget deficit with just austerity measures. There's going to be a lot of discussion about new revenue revenue proposals for the state general fund. Uh, that's new taxes. They're mostly going to be focused around probably high income earners. Um, there's also going to be a lot of work uh, done to try and pass a new transportation package. Uh, and that all of the proposals that that have been getting steam that are not just a gas tax increase uh, are based around some kind of carbon reduction, whether that's, you know, cap and trade or just a straight carbon tax. The way that the 2021 session is going to operate is going to be different. It's going to be all virtual. Uh, both the House and the Senate will be uh, completely virtual. There will be a, a minimum number of members that will be present uh, on the floor to help uh, move legislation along, but everybody else will be uh, virtual. Some will be in their offices, uh, but there's there, it's going to be a virtual session. All the buildings are going to be shut off to public access as well. So you're not going to go down and have hallway conversations and and those kind of things. Not going to testify in person. It, it's going to be a different a different world. Uh, and it's very unclear how it's going to function. Uh, very unclear. Because of the virtual nature of session, they've done some practice runs and they've come to the understanding that a, that a typical one week uh, span of legislative hearings is going to take three weeks. It's going to take three weeks to get through a typical one week. Um, and so with that, there's going to be a record low number of bills that are going to pass. They've asked members, leadership has asked members to sponsor uh, only up to three bills in certain circumstances. Now, people are going to sponsor more than that, but they are really trying to, to clamp down and, and have people only sponsor bills that they, they think are a priority to pass. Uh, some of the other uh, issues that are going to be kind of the, the hot button, really high profile issues this year, one is going to be police reform. Uh, that is that it, law enforcement reform is going to be a big topic. Um, Representative Jesse Johnson is co-chair of the, the House Democrats uh, Police Reform Leadership Committee. So he's been uh, inherently involved in a lot of conversations. I think at last count, there is around 50 different proposals regarding police reform. Uh, and it, it's a lot. So we'll see uh, what ends up coming out of it. Uh, we're going to have to track that very closely. Um, an, another significant issue that a lot of your constituents are going to be facing soon is uh, unemployment benefits are going to be running out. And unless the feds uh, come back and do a unemployment benefits extension, people are going to be really hurting. So the state and the, the governor and the legislature are looking at different ways where the state can step in and help those folks if the feds fail to extend unemployment benefits. That's going to be a big conversation. Uh, there's probably also going to be a lot of moves to uh, try and reform the state's unemployment system uh, with some of the things that happened earlier in this year when the, the virus really started raging and we, we shut everything down and everybody went on unemployment. The bottom line is things are uncertain still. I think things are going to probably change and this there will be a different update that I'll give you when the legislative virtual legislative breakfast happens. Um, this session is going to be extremely difficult because of the virtual nature of it, uh, not operating how it normally operates. Um, th there's no money. Uh, the pandemic is raging. There is significantly reduced economic activity, especially after this last weekend. Uh, so it's gonna be bumpy. That, that's all I can say is it's gonna be bumpy. So happy to take any questions, but there, there's still just a lot of uncertainty around it. So let's do, um, before we take any questions, do we wanna have, uh, why don't you go through the agenda real quick? Uh, uh, Bill, why don't you go do that? And then we'll take uh, questions all at once. So Bill, 
once you go through our proposed legislative agenda, that's been done in, uh, in coordination and conjunction and consultation with Aaron. So Bill, go ahead. Bill, you're not, uh, you need to, your mic is not on. So to take you from uh, the top, number one, uh, COVID-19 humanitarian relief. In other words, uh, asking the state to expand support for food security, rent support, transitional housing, and the extension of the eviction moratorium. So that, that's there at the top. Next is expansion of statewide business grants due to COVID restrictions for businesses and restaurants and support for landlords affected by the eviction moratorium for both residential and business leases. Expansion of broadband internet. This is something we're going to work on here in the next uh, 10 days to give you an idea. Uh, basically, we would uh, propose to expand broadband internet to support our businesses, our residents, our students, and our educators. And this, as you know, is a continuation of a partnership with the school district. We're going to uh, assess over the next 10 days where the gaps are and maybe uh, probably come up with a pilot for sure and then uh, the whole need so we all know what that is as a city and a mayor and as a council. Continue to advocate for the funding of the Veterans Monument, which uh, we've received some uh, county funding this year, but uh, we're going to continue to work on that and advocate for that. In the area of crime and public safety. 350,000 to initiate a body camera pilot program for federal way officers, safe city cameras for 100,000, support for maintaining capacity at the law enforcement academy, and then of course engage in meaningful discussions on police reform uh, leg legislation. Education, of course, support our uh, partners with the federal way public schools legislative agenda. And then uh, community programs, these are from, uh, from the past and we've got them here again. Um, established the community stakeholders group to coordinate policy and services response for people experiencing homelessness. And there the staffing is there for that. Uh, reintroduced the uh, resource center for youth, um, uh, the federal way and similar to the REACH Center. Uh, we're in the process of uh, through Representative Johnson and DCYF there was a study done last year, which should have been done August, September, October, that'll help inform us on that. That's something that uh, was done by our legislative uh, uh, delegation. Um, 100,000 to reintroduce the youth substance abuse program and 80,000 to reintroduce staff position to oversee youth violence prevention efforts. Transportation, uh, once again, this is uh, the third, fourth year for that. These are our, our city access center uh, for downtown access program, uh, which is constantly there. Uh, and as Aaron mentioned, there could be some sort of transportation package. The 5 million for the bicycle circulation, pedestrian circulation on 314th. And then the very critical, uh, and, and this also impacts at least another legislative district, the widening of South 356th and the widening of uh, 336th. Aircraft issues, we had some uh, victories last year, and now we're talking about funding uh, the next phase of the U of Dub study, uh, which would um, measure health impacts, and then of course, continue to be resolute in supporting any local, state, federal initiatives to ensure the health and safety of our citizens from aircraft noise and emissions. And then uh, above all, and, and this, this is uh, something that uh, the mayor's talked about as well. E pluribus unum, out of many one, which is our motto, we will look for legislative opportunities to bring our communities together in ways to enhance social equity, social justice, and increased economic opportunities for our BIPOC communities. And so that's, that's where we are. And then of course, the piece once we uh, discuss this is today, we can also figure out when we want to meet with our legislators. And then as part of, um, our presentation in two weeks, we'll have where the legislators took us uh, last time. For instance, Representative Johnson got us the $104,000 for the, the safe city cameras. There was funding for youth programs. There was funding for the, uh, the ball fields uh, over there uh, for the Little League. Um, and then, then there were, you know, of course, childcare. There were also education uh, initiatives. Uh, but uh, there were things that our three, uh, our three representatives, our senator and two representatives worked on, and we'll, we'll see where they're at before the breakfast. So 
next up is um, you know input questions and comments mr mayor okay council president honda and then council member uh Sefa dawson council president honda uh, thank you so is uh the ask for the cameras for the police department is that enough well we're, there's quite a number of asks and uh, mm -hmm. uh you know I, we want to be sensitive to you know how much we're asking for um i uh uh i think it's what we had had yeah. previous years i, I think so it's, i think i think a step by zero. step okay i think the um, first year mayor was fifty thousand that we got the very first time yeah the first time yeah, we're actually uh, uh, we're put actually over in Westway. We put in we're in the process of putting in more cameras right now, um, and uh, we're going to put some uh, more cameras up in another area of town uh, where we've been concerned about things. But these uh, uh, these cameras are, are incredibly helpful in regard to uh, 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 not not only preventing crime but also um, uh, helping us solve uh, crimes after uh, um, after they occur. Okay, um, I think with the, the way that the legislature may or may not work this year that we have to make sure that the highest priority is at the top so that as if the legislators do actually read the entire document that they're getting the very most important thing to the city of federal way. And I, I ask this every year uh, does the school district have on their legislative agenda uh, to support ours? And if they don't, could we please ask them to? Okay. Um, we will ask. Uh, thank you. We will ask. Um, I, you know, in regard to the priorities, I, I would think that humanitarian relief in regard to food, food security and run support, I think obviously just in the hierarchy of needs, I think that that would be, we spent some time discussing that today. Um, and then after the humanitarian relief, the business support. I, from my uh, perspective, we actually did go through that exercise today, and we're okay. moving things around. So there was there was actually some uh, <laughs> there was some uh, thought put into uh, the order in which it was presented. Oh, I'm sure. I'm just saying that you know <laughs> now that now that we've seen it for the first time that yeah we need to to make sure that especially when we're asking for any funding specifically for the city, that right. that is the, the most important ask is the first ask, the first yeah. box. Correct. And I actually, I'm, I'm also wondering how lobbyists are going to work if they don't mm -hmm. get to go into the building and walk up and down <laughs> the halls and go into offices. <clears throat> uh, how is that going to work? Good thing Aaron. we got cell phone numbers. Oh my! It's and Zoom hard. meetings. It's it's taxing, uh, Council President Honda. It's it's going to be really interesting. Some of the things they're talking about doing is legislators are going to have kind of like a, a Zoom waiting room where you can enter it, and then they'll pop in for thirty seconds. They'll pop out a committee and pop in and have a quick conversation. So. And that's not just with lobbyists, that's just with the public in general, right? Wow. Um, so it, it, it's really strange. It's, it's, it's a new world, and I hope it goes back to the old way at some point. It will. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, Councilmember Sefa Dawson. Yeah, um, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Bill, and thank you, Aaron, for putting this legislative priorities together. Um, I think my, um, and thank you, Council uh, President um, Honda. I think you kind of asked, um, asked my question in a way about priorities. Because one question I had for Aaron is, are we being, considering the situation we're in and what you state in your statement earlier, are we being ambitious when we're asking for all this, right? And then my second question is the, the, um, um, the priorities that don't have dollar signs attached to them, what does that mean? Or how do we move forward with those? So it's two questions. Well, we were talking, <clears throat> we were talking about that earlier today. Uh, some of these we are looking for, uh, we're, by the time you see this at the next council meeting, there should be some dollars 
associated with this, but probably with the business support, broadband internet, um, the first three items, um, humanitarian relief, business support, broadband internet, and the internet obviously is for students. And, you know, we're, we're coughing up, we're, we're um, uh, allocating $100,000 of our CARES Act funds to the school district, uh, but we're going to need more to make sure because this has an impact on uh, access to um, education and that kind of thing. Um, so, uh, and we'll probably have maybe a dollar figure with the veterans, um, uh, veterans as well. Can I take a stab real quick there? Sure. Um, so, like humanitarian relief, business support, and broadband, they don't have dollar figures attached to them. Um, it's a it's a big conversation. It's a big pot of money. We we don't know how much they're gonna put towards it. I think a significant portion of the capital budget will be dedicated to broadband. It's it's a major issue in this state, not just for the rural areas. Uh, there's a lot of broadband poor areas and urban areas. So um, and so it's just trying to get a, as big of a pot of money as possible uh, for that. You know, humanitarian relief and business support those go hand in hand. Those both help each other, right? Um, and so trying to make sure that the food banks and the social safety net is well-funded and resist cuts to it. And it's not just about asking for money, uh, additional money for those, it's also trying to resist cuts to those if, if it ends up being kind of more of an austere, heavy uh, decision package. In regards to crime and public safety, some of the places where I could see some new revenue get spent is around crime and public safety law enforcement reform. There's going to be a conversation about body cams. You know, this, the, the big thing about body cams is cities and local governments, they need help paying for those. It's, it's kind of an unfunded mandate without it. And not just the actual equipment, but the data storage. And, and that, that's a, a huge cost. Uh, for that and public records folks to help manage the body cam data. So, um, so yes, there's a lot of numbers on the legislative agenda, but I don't think it's, it's an overkill for what we're facing. The, the numbers are in pots, pots of money that are gonna get attention. Okay, um, thank you. So we can move forward with this, um, legislative agenda, agenda and we should, I mean, priorities and we should be okay is what I'm hearing from you, right? In terms of our requests. Yes. Okay. And then my other question is maybe I'm, I'm we're under crime and public safety. It says support for maintaining capacity at the law enforcement academy. What does that mean? So the criminal justice training center, um, making sure that if there are cuts or in the conversations around law enforcement reform, there's X number of slots for new recruits to send there. Uh, and it can be pretty competitive. I don't know if Chief is still on the phone and he wants to talk kind of more specifically about, about that, but um, making sure they don't reduce the spots. I mean, that's, that's what the ask is, making sure they don't make reductions in the number of available slots to send uh, cadets to the academy. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, and we, yeah, we need to make sure that when we do have people in the academy that we can get them through uh, quickly and <clears throat> so we don't have that pile up. Um, so yeah, we for the pilot program, we actually, uh, if you recall, I had the chief uh, work on a program to uh, come up with some estimates and he and I have worked out a figure that we think we can do a pilot program uh, if we got $350,000 for a one-year program, um, and a lot of that could be reused uh, moving forward, but uh, we would need that uh, because of the startup cost. Chief, did you want to uh, weigh in? Uh, sure, Mayor. A couple of things about the Academy. Uh, currently, from the date that we hire someone, uh, we're out several months just before we can even send them to the Academy. So it's, it's very important because it's statewide uh, that we have adequate number of uh, classes um, for agencies like our size, uh, Seattle Police Department, for example, they're guaranteed a certain number of spots for each class. And so is the King County Sheriff's Department because they're a large agencies. Um, and then we're all competing for those 
um, academy slots. So if, we do, if they don't have enough classes, it becomes problematic for police organizations. It is uh, our lifeline in terms of having adequate staffing uh, within our community. So um, sometimes the, the wait can be like five months before they even go to the academy, then it's five and a half months. So what we don't want is we don't want to wait longer um, six months or seven months. It becomes a problem for uh, communities. In terms of um, the body cam, uh, we're thinking if we did a pilot, we would maybe select 20 officers to start with. And then there's significant cost with staff because we have to do IT. It's going to have an impact to the prosecutor's office. Uh, every video needs to be um, observed and then there's people here at the PD that's going to have to um, well, manage it and present a certain amount of it because there's just going to be so much video. So we're going to need to hire uh, three individuals, a prosecutor's op a prosecutor, IT person, and a public disclosure person. Not on a full-time basis if we do a pilot, but we will need that type of uh, support. And then, of course, there's cost with storage. Um, and there's a lot of things to implement in terms of uh, what we disclose, what we don't disclose. Uh, there are privacy issues. If we go into people's homes, uh, you know, we shouldn't be sharing certain things with the general public. So there's all those things that go into play. But that would $350,000 is what we think it would work. There's going to be a labor um, cost at, at present time. But I think there's potential legislation to address that. If, if it becomes into law uh, during the legislative session. But right now we do need to bargain with labor groups for the implementation. I hope that information is helpful. It is, thank you. Councilor Moore. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Um, Aaron, it is always good to see you. I uh, see that you've grown a little bit of a beard and you just started, uh, so good work on that. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, hey, uh, so I'm, I'm very optimistic that, and I, I always say this, um, and I'll just say this for the benefit of Councilmember Kraft, uh, and that um, Aaron does extraordinary work for us at the state level and uh, certainly uh, works very well with our state lawmakers um, and getting uh, the bacon home uh, in, in that partnership. So uh, uh, really, I, I believe, and I've always believed this, that we're really fortunate to have you as your lobbyist. So, um, you know, uh, some of this question is, is for you, Mr. Mayor, but I'm just going to start kind of putting it out there. And that's uh, something um, that um, when I drive around, I see a lot of, uh, but I know that for the last couple of legislative sessions, we've been, I believe we've been advocating for this. And I just kind of wondered what would happen. Um, and I understand there's a central theme in our legislative uh, agenda, but uh, copper wire theft, if I'm not mistaken, it's a pretty big deal still. Um, and, uh, you know, I understand that we have to make decisions and what's on there and what's not, but uh, besides that being a reason, I mean, is there another reason why that just didn't end up on the legislative agenda? Because uh, I'm pretty sure John would agree that this is a big, big problem. And, and the reason why I'm asking the question is, uh, you know, it's my vision that we continue to chip away and asking little by little uh, so that we can um, get the technology in place to uh, hold people accountable when they're trying to steal uh, copper wire. Um, so that's my first one. Um, and I was just kind of curious about whether or not uh, or why uh, there isn't any sort of uh, funding being requested for our university initiative. Um, uh, and uh, I'll leave it at those two. I may have one more as well. So, well, we're still in the, <clears throat> the funding is in place. More. <clears throat> More. The funding is in place for the university initiative for the facility. We're still working on trying to get a location in consultation with Highline and uh, University of Washington Tacoma. So those efforts are ongoing. So that, that money is secured for a location. With regard to uh, copper wire theft, I think you're absolutely right that that's a huge issue for us. We've been hit to the tune of north of $100,000 just this year. Um, 
and it's, I mean, well, people will, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's it happens over at the, um, uh, well, all over the city. It happens with our street lights. It happens over at Celebration Park. We have alarmed some of these. Um, and, you know, we have done everything we can to, we've set up cameras. We've, um, you know, we've had a, a, a silent alarm. Uh, we're doing everything we can to capture these people. Actually catching them in the act is incredibly difficult. And if you think about all of the miles and miles and miles of the streets that we have in the city and the access to this uh, wiring, um, it's impossible to defend. So I'm not quite sure what we would, what our legislation, it's, it is illegal. Um, I, I'm not, you know, we did do some legislation, uh, requesting some legislation about 10 years ago regard to um, metal theft that had to do with this. But what do right. you, uh, uh, what's the, I'm, I'm not sure what the suggestion would be. You know, it's catching these people in the act. That's the hard part. Right. I, I just feel like that there's value in, um, uh, appropriating funds to get the technology to put uh, in uh, those places that would alarm police to come. Uh, obviously, I'm willing to make a bet that uh, where that technology is in place, it's it's helped us one way or another. Um, so, I mean, my request, I think, would be is, is to, uh, as we're discussing this and as this is a draft, for us to go back to the table and just... Uh, find a way to add uh, that to our legislative agenda in terms of funding for technology to continue to combat this, so. Well, I, if you think about this, you know, I, I mean, I've gone out to these locations like at Celebration Park or actually even on the street out here, um, they, it, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't believe all the locations where they have, where they've taken this. You can't have the city under constant sur under 100 percent surveillance it's i mean like uh, john ej you want to jump in here and talk about that ej first maybe uh, sure so yeah council member as the mayor said copper wire theft is is certainly a large problem and and he's absolutely right we're well over a hundred thousand dollars this year alone in theft most recently, we had batteries stolen out of three of the school zone flashing systems, which are not in use right now. But um, you know that's going to be about an eighteen thousand dollar bill um, that we're looking at just for that alone. I we have over the years um, hardened a lot of the systems, um, but you know we can't pour concrete over all the conduit. So you know effectively they just basically dig down next to where we stop. Um, we've welded lids shut. We've put cameras on there. We actually do have an alarm system on high um, theft areas. Um, it's not citywide, um, but we do have a um, theft system. And then we also, with the uh, streetlight program, the LED conversion program, we, as well as police, now get alerts when uh, there's power loss at a light head um, in real time. Uh, basically that's not expected it's not as pse not cutting the power or the power not going out so i go ahead council has that been has that i'm so sorry mr mayor and, and ej thank you has that been of benefit having those alarm systems in that i mean has, has it helped um in any way so I, I will say it's made us more aware of theft and it has it's allowed us to be more reactionary. So typically we go out and find it um, more, I don't wanna say in real time because it's, it's definitely not that, but we, we go out and find stuff and, and can get the repair process started faster as opposed to you know, three or four street lights being out. And you know, we're not out driving every street in the middle of the night, so you know, it, it takes a resident calling in to say, hey, the streetlights have been out on our street for the last month. And then we go out and say, oh, look, someone stole the wire. So it, it has allowed us to be more reactionary in that regard, which I think frankly does have benefits, at least from my perspective. You know, we get the system restored faster. We do, you know, which, which promotes safety and everything else. Um, has it allowed us to actually catch someone in real time? No. I mean, reality is, um, you know, and the chief can speak to this as well. Um, 
when thefts happen, they're, they're typically in the middle of the night and, you know, we get, sometimes we get an alarm if it's on the alarm section, sometimes it's not, but you know, a lot of our roads are not heavily traveled in the middle of the night. So whoever's committing, I mean, they're committing a theft. They know that they know what they're doing is illegal for the most part. So when they hear a car coming, they step off into the woods. So, you know, someone drives down, the alarm goes off and, you know, whether it's an officer or whoever drives by and, you know, someone steps off into the woods and then when the noise of the car's gone, they step back out. And we, we have on camera seen that a couple of times, um, you know, typically they're wearing a sweatshirt with a hood up, but, you know, we, we've observed that activity enough time on cameras that we, we know that's what happens. But, you know, catching someone in the act is, is really, really hard. So we've been more working towards hardening the system, um, which we've been doing successfully. Um, and, you know, we have a, a multitude of ways that we do that, some of which I hit on. But certainly if, if you have ideas, if you have suggestions, I'd, I'd love to have a conversation with you. Um, we're always open for ideas. Yeah, okay. let's talk between now and uh, perhaps uh, when we actually roll this out about uh, ideas uh, to um, uh, that would be helpful. I, I'm, I'm not quite sure where we're at right now, but we'll, we'll have a conversation about it. Yeah, and, and, and I'll just say thank you for, for that, what you just said, Mr. Mayor, because I think for me, I, I know it's been a problem ever since I worked for Roger Freeman in Olympia, and we've dealt with it for years, And and uh, but I'll, I'll work with your office and see if something comes up. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so I, I don't see any more comments and uh, I know we've got more on the agenda, but we will, this will be back before you and counsel, even if you didn't say, especially if, even if, uh, whether you said something tonight or not, uh, shoot me or bill an email. And uh, if you'd like us to maybe rework some language, I know that uh, as of even later, uh, later in the afternoon today, we were still moving things around and changing language. And, and uh, so, you know, um, uh, it's, it's a work in progress, uh, like everything. So uh, just let us know if we, uh, if you'd like uh, some more input. Okay, so, uh, thank you, Bill, Mayor, good job. Mayor, yeah. real Linda. quick, uh, on your agenda for your, to give to the legislators, is that table, is that what you're gonna give the legislators? The table that was presented? Yeah, well, it's gonna be come, it's gonna come before you at the next city council no, meeting. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm fine with the table myself. But speaking from as being a former state rep, it, it really yes. is, you can add it as an attachment, but might might be more helpful is, it's really good to put one, two, three, okay? In the body of your uh, letter, directing it to whomever, in the indent in the middle, and then just say, number one, priority, a, a cost estimated to be, second, priority, whatever it is, estimated cost, third, one, two, three, you know, because you have a lot on there and it's more simple, you know, it, to get it in uh, wherever you want it to go, the budget or appropriations or committee or whatever, one, two, three is the best way to go. But you can, you, you can use that as an attachment. It, it's just easier if you just have a bulleted uh, document. Got it. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. All right, appreciate it. All right, now let's move on to the uh, next item. We're into ordinances, first reading. Uh, hold on. Council Bill 790, Ordinance, Transportation Impact Fee Amendment. First, we'll have a staff report from Rick Perez, our city traffic engineer, have a comment, then the city clerk will read the title. Um, Rick? All right, good evening. Um, am I being heard this time? Yes. Okay, great. Thanks. So, um, yeah, here tonight to uh, present, uh, along with our consultants, our proposal for a traffic impact fee. A um, little bit of background. Um, in 2008, the city ha also used uh, Farron Pierce's predecessor, Mirai, uh, to conduct uh, the impact fee rate study. And uh, that was then adopted um, by the council, um, which provided benefits in terms of predictability um, and consistency and fairness um, for all developments. And then um, also enabled us to pool mitigation funds in order to um, uh, actually build stuff instead of having 
piecemeal bits of money here and there in different projects. Um, so since then, uh, we have constructed about 15 projects um, that were on the TAP. Um, and, uh, but that's been a while and uh, the rate study had never been updated um, and to reflect these changes as required by city code and state law. So um, that's the reason why uh, we're presenting this tonight. Um, and I will acknowledge our uh, consultants, uh, Sarah Keenan, who will be making part of the presentation and Kendra Braylon um, and uh, Sarah De Long on our side um, uh, has been valuable as usual. So um, with that, uh, the policy question is, should the city council adopt the adjustment to the impact fee? Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Sarah now to describe um, what we're going to cover tonight. Hi, yes, thank you, Rick. Um, as Rick mentioned, I'm Sarah Keenan. I was a project manager for Fair and Peers. And so I was working really closely with Rick and Sarah D on this project. Um, so here's a, the topics that I'll be discussing tonight. Um, first is transportation impact fees 101. So this is an introduction to impact fees. Um, I'll, I'll walk through the methodology um, that we use to calculate the impact fees. Um, we'll move on to program recommendations and then some information about the fee schedule and city center reduction. We'll compare our recommended rate to other cities and we'll move on to code updates and then we'll have time for questions. So um, transportation impact fees 101. Transportation impact fees are one-time charges paid by new development. And they were authorized as part of the 1990 Growth Management Act. And they're used as funding sources for transportation improvements. And these improvements need to add capacity to the transportation network. And that means that they can be used to fund facilities that serve new growth and not for existing deficiencies. So currently, uh, Federal Way's impact fee is $3,616 per trip end. These fees must be used within 10 years on public streets and roads. And the projects that they fund have to be um, in the capital facilities element and adopted as part of the comprehensive plan. And we've been doing many of these updates for a long time, and we've been seeing more recently many communities are funding multimodal projects meaning projects that serve bicycles and pedestrians. So this is the methodology that we used and we start with basically a, a list of projects and we take, out, um, we take out some funds that can't be funded through this program and we end up with an eligible cost and we divide that by the expected growth in trips over the next 20 years. And we end up with a cost per trip. And this cost per trip is the legal maximum that you're able to charge. And as Rick will present later, um, we're re um, recommending a, a lower fee than that. So the project list, we started with the 2009 transportation impact fee project list and that had 35 projects on it. We removed 15 projects and these picks were either removed by council action or completed. And so we had 20 remaining projects and there was some cost es escalation for these projects due to um, you know, just cost increasing over time due to inflation or um, possibly a, a small change in scope. And we also added 22 new projects to this project list to total 42 projects. So the new projects came from two sources and the, that was the 2018 to 2023 transportation improvement program, as well as the 2040 capital improvement project list. And as you can see, the, the project list totaled about $520 million. And here's a map of the projects. And you can see they're kind of, they're all over the city. Um, they include intersection projects, which is just um, the red dot on the map, as well as corridor improvements and, and um, a couple non-motorized projects. And the non-motorized projects are just bicycle or pedestrian. So as I mentioned earlier, um, we have $520 million as the total project list, but we do um, have some reductions for fees that aren't eligible for funding under this program. So we removed about 53 million for existing deficiencies. 
about 209 million for non-city travel. So this is if there's a, a growth in trips in the city, but not directly related to the city. So just kind of passing through the city. Um, and we also removed seven, about 700,000 um, that was either already applied um, transportation impact fees to projects remaining on the list or a balance are um, remaining in the transportation impact fee program. And we end up with $258 million in eligible funds. And so that 258 is the, the numerator of the equation. And to get the denominator, the growth in trips, it's what we expect to see uh, as a growth in trips over the next 40 years. And we estimate that based on the land use that Federal Way is expecting. And we expect about a 14% increase in households and a 35% increase in employment over the next 20 years. And that equates to about 11,363 new PM peak hour trips. And this um, turns out to be about $22,703 per trip. And again, this, this is the legal maximum that you'd be allowed to charge. So when, when we get that fee, we put it all into a fee schedule and this fee schedule kind of calculates uh, what a fee would be for a given land use. And we provided 41 typical land uses here. And if a developer comes in and their project doesn't fall into one of these categories, they can do their own independent study to calculate their fee. We also included a reduction for city center and it's about 30 to 40% for eligible uses. And the reason for this is because city center is more, more dense. So we would expect maybe just one vehicle trip for multiple stops or people are more likely to walk or bike in the area. Um, so that was the, the, the impact fee calculation portion and we also provided code updates as part of this study. Um, so a few of the updates, um, we updated the reference to the 2009 study to now be the 2020 study. We updated some definitions. We clarified that change of use pays for increase in trips. And we updated language to allow certified planners to prepare the fee calculation. And we removed an exemption that's no longer needed that was originally due to the initial adoption of this program. We clarified that the, the use of impact fees collected can only be used for projects listed in the rate study. We had a couple refinements uh, to reflect state law and that limits deferral of fees to 18 months for single family development. And we increased the time to, to expend the fees from six to 10 years. We also specified that rates will be increased annually uh, based on CPI. And we increased the administration fee to 5%. So in summary, this uh, calculation and this fee fairly assesses the traffic burden and associated costs. It was updated to reflect the more recent updates in the TIP and the CIP, and it promotes responsible development. So we are requesting approval from city council tonight. And I'm gonna hand this back over to Rick. Thanks, Sarah. So um, our current impact fee rate was based on an eligible project list of 320 million, which at the time we could have charged $9,800 per trip end. Um, so in reality, the TIF funded about 28% of the total eligible project need. Um, the remaining 72% would be provided by the city. Um, the rate study now identifies eligible projects that are about 200 million more. Um, and so recognizing that um, too high a fee will deter some development, but a lower fee also means um, that the public is subsidizing development and creating potential traffic safety concerns. And so as a result, um, the recommendation is to maintain the same percentage of funding, that 28% of the total eligible, and that um, equals $6,311 per trip end. So how does that compare to everybody else? Um, so right now we're on the lower end of um, other comparable cities in the region. Um, and uh, 
we would be eligible to charge the 22,000. Um, 28% of that puts us right about in the middle. Um, and so um, that's where we're going to recommend. So um, Planning Commission had recommended approval of the proposed ordinance on November 4th. Land Use and Transportation Committee also recommended forwarding the proposed ordinance um, and increasing the impact fee to $6,311 per evening peak hour trip end. So um, option one is to forward the proposed ordinance to second reading on December 1st, or two, do not forward the proposed ordinance to council and provide direction to staff. And the mayor's recommendation is option one. So um, with that, we are able to um, address any questions. Thank Councilor you. Moore. Uh, thank you, Rick. Councilor Moore. Thank you, sorry. Council, Pre Council President Honda. Uh, thank you. I have uh, three questions. One, any projects that are currently under review at this point in 2020, will they still be charged the 2020 rate or would they have to pay the, the fee for 2021? Um, two, when are impact fees paid? Is it at the point of when the permits are issued or for housing, would it be when a, a home is sold? And so this apparently was last updated 11 years ago, if I seen this correctly. Yes. Why has it taken so long to increase the fees? Because certainly in 11 years, other fees have increased, other impact fees have increased. So um, there has been an inflation factor that took a, we, we did, we held off for a little bit at first because of the recession. And then as recovery started, we um, actually recovered, um, increased the rate to be consistent with the rate of inflation up to that point in time and have continued to do that since. Um, but yeah, um, it has been a challenge to um, get the, uh, amount of uh, administrative fee in order to pay for the update, which was the intent when the uh, ordinance was originally drafted. And so that's one of the reasons why we're proposing the 5% uh, in increase to 5% for the administrative fee. Okay. Um, as far as um, assessing, uh, normally it's assessed at building permit for um, Every type of development, there is um, a deferral allowed for single family. Um, and uh, I forget how long that is. 18 months. 18 months. Yeah. So it, the state law changed so that we cannot defer until um, the house is sold. Okay. And what about projects that are currently under review with the city right now, if they're not permitted by the end of 2020? So um, I'm going to um, turn that one over to Sarah or Kendra. I can start that one and if Sarah wants to chime in. Um, so the city has some discretion. Um, you know, if, if the building permit is issued in 2021 um, after this impact fee program is in place, um, then generally the you know, default practice would be that um, that project would need to pay the prevailing impact fee rate, which would be at the rate that would be um, adopted by this council. Um, I, I think, you know, your question is some of these projects may be already going through some level of engineering review. Um, you know, do we want to think about uh, making a change there? Um, recognizing that they were under that process under your current system, which has a lower rate. Um, the city could elect not to charge um, the full rate if you wish to. However, um, the way that state impact fee law works is that the city um, would have to backfill any impact fees not paid um, with non-impact fee accounts. So you'd have to look to 
kind of other kind of city dollars, be it general fund or other sources um, to backfill those. And that's just kind of a, a issue of fairness within impact fee law. I don't know if that, that answered the question fully. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Um, it actually did answer my question. Thank you so much. Okay, council, any other questions? All right, uh, do we have any public comment? Mike, Mayor, and oh. no, we do not have any public comment. Yeah. Sorry, my mic was down or up. Okay. Um, oh, Mr. Mayor, I might make a point that we did receive two comment letters. Um, one from a developer that was concerned that we were going to be charging the full rate, 22,000. Um, and obviously that's not the case. The second one was a letter from um, Master Builders and um, they had some concerns and, and um, some of those are mirrored in, in uh, Council President Honda's um, questions. So, um, yeah, so they they had made a couple of recommendations, but generally were supportive of the ordinance. Okay, both great, thank you very mayor, much. Both those letters, Mayor, were forwarded to the mayor, uh, to the council. Yes. Right. Okay, thank you. Would the city clerk please read the ordinance title? Council Bill 790, Transportation Impact Fee Code Amendment, an ordinance of the City of Federal Washington relating to transportation impact fees amending Federal Revised Code 19.91.030 through 19.91.110 and 19.91.140 through 19. .19 All right. I, Council Member Bruso, do you have a motion? Yes, I do, Ms. Mayor. I move to forward proposed ordinance to December 1st, 2020 council meeting for second reading and enactment. Is there a second? I'll second that. Is that a motion and a second? Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, matter passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Item B, Council Bill 791, ordinance, Federal Way Link Extension Alteration Number One. Um, we, uh, had the staff report provided by Ryan earlier. Um, is there any public comment on this? I don't have anyone signed up, Mayor. All right. And, uh, Council President Honda, I see your hand up. Did you have a question? No, I have a motion. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, before we get there, um, would the city clerk please read the ordinance title? Council Bill 791 Ordinance, Federal Link Extension Alteration Number One, an ordinance of the City of Federal Washington approving a change to the Federal Link Extension Project Development Agreement between the City of Federal Way and Sound Transit. All right, that's President Honda. Oh, microphone. Unmute. I move to forward the proposed ordinance to the December 1st, 2020 council meeting for second reading and enactment. Second. It's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, matter passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Item C, Council Bill 792. Um, ordinance of 2021 to 2021, but, the biennial budget, <laughs> 2021 to 2022 biennial budget. Uh, say that fast three times. Um, we had our staff report provided earlier. Um, is there any more public comment on that, uh, Stephanie? No, Mayor, I don't have anyone else signed up. Would you please read the ordinance title? Yes, I will. Council Bill 792 ordinance, 2021-2022 biennial budget an ordinance of the city of federal Washington relating to budgets and finance adopting the 2021 and 2022 biennial budget. All right, uh, Council President Honda, do you have a motion? 
I move to forward the proposed ordinance to be modified by staff consistent with tonight's discussion and the consensus reached to the December 1st, 2020 council meeting for a second reading and enactment. Okay. Second. All right. Now I think I've got it. We, we went over it in some, uh, in some detail, but we'll, uh, we'll do our best and we'll make sure that we get you that uh, summary um, and the, um, uh, uh, well prior to the uh, second reading at the next uh, council meeting um, uh, for your review. Um, I think we got the general gist of the uh, consensus. Uh, with that, is there, um, there's been a motion, a second. Is there any discussion? Uh, Mayor, I, I, I do have a concern. Uh, council Mayor Tran. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I know that we, uh, we spent a lot of time uh, on this budget, and uh, I want to thank you, uh, everybody, uh, for that. But my concern is still on the 3% uh, pay increase for the non-representative employee for 2021. And I don't want to repeat myself uh, because I said this before, and I hope that I will say it one more time tonight, and that is this is not the time for us to give our employees pay raises simply because of the COVID situation. If we look around, there are more and more people getting laid off. There are more and more people getting their hours reduced. More businesses will close because of this second shutdown. I can't, I can't really support this. And as I, I look through this um, uh, for the last uh, 15, 20 minutes, uh, based on the information that provided uh, to the council from a day, most of our high paying position are on the, this list. And I don't wanna name anybody, but when I look at some of this position, uh, just a quick analysis, I see that some position are at 21.6% above the salary range midpoint that, that the, uh, the survey, salary survey that, uh, that uh, the consultant did for us. Some of the position are above uh, salary range midpoint at 11.8%. And then I look at uh, some of the position, the low paying position, for example, uh, they are below 25.4%. I'm talking about the people that uh, the frontline staff that don't make a lot of money and they are way behind on that salary survey. So if we are gonna give 3% pay across the board, the ones who make the least are still getting behind year after year. And the one who make the most money still come ahead year after year. It is not equitable distribution of, of the money. I mean, if we really want to level the plant field, if we want to bring our pay up to or comparable to other city, then my suggestion would be to look at the employee who are getting 25.4% less according to the salary range midpoint survey, bring those up. But the one that already make 21.6% above, why are, we, why are we giving this particular position three additional percent? It doesn't make sense to me. I'm sorry, but I look at this salary survey and the number of the position that will be uh, impacted by this 3%. I, I just can't 
wrap my head around this. Okay. So it, is that in the form of a motion? I mean, if we, if, if you would like me to make a motion, then I'll, I'll try. But no, I, I, I'm, I'm not asking, but I'm, I'm just, I just want to make sure it's clear. I mean, right now we've got a motion and a second for, um, uh, to approve the budget as, as understood to be amended. Um, uh, and the question is, um, yeah, the, 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 the COLA was not discussed uh, in, in any great depth, depth because we held off on the second year of the COLA. Um, so let me, let's see here if anybody else, have any, any uh, council, any other comments on that or any, um, right now we are in discussion for uh, the, the, the motion for approval at first reading. Um, so uh, yeah. Council Member Baruso. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, the only question I have too is I know that the Capital Associates were supposed to have a meeting with them to understand even the midpoint, the maximum on here. And so that was kind of my, my question also was where we still had questions on that for that. So, and the fact that um, I had asked before, and, the, and I've known everyone knows this, you know, to, to try to tier some of these, uh, to try to offset these percentages here. And so I'm not, you know, again, not knowing what Cabot, how Cabot Dow put this together. I'm not sure of these, where we are with these percentages, number one. Number two is, you know, there are boxes in here that are above when you look at the medium, the midpoint. And so that's what I think that um, Council Mayor Tran is trying to get to also is the fact that, you know, there is some really discrepancies in, in this study. And I would like to also see that, that we still meet. I know we have a meeting with Cabot Down on the, the third, I believe. Just try to straighten that out. So that was a question also, you know, if we're gonna do that, we haven't met with them yet to, to explain this to us, how they put this study together. Well, I, I do think it's important to remember that recall, if you will, prior to the COVID pandemic, um, the plan was, as a result of cost savings, we thought we were going to have at least at least two million dollars in savings to be able to uh, work with in regard to um, uh, uh, wages and to, to try to you know as, that's why we instituted the um, the analysis and also in regard to the ability to in regard to uh, workflow or um, um, the amount of work that people do and because sometimes people are doing a lot of work um, and uh, you know we're just trying to uh, make sure that there's an equitable distribution of work so as a result of the uh, pandemic and the the loss of millions of dollars in revenue um, the strategy that i rolled out and that i have explained um, was that at this stage the um, the ability to really respond meaningfully to the disparities in at this at least at this stage with the salary survey was um, uh, candidly uh, put on hold uh, because we don't have a million dollars to work with it. You know, we were going to take a million dollars of that of those savings and adjust salaries be, based on uh, wide scale discrepancies uh, throughout and try to really figure this out. Once we uh, once all the businesses were shut down and once we lost all that revenue. Um, we, we really, at this point, we're just focusing on balancing the budget, not laying anybody off, and coming up with a COLA that would be acceptable uh, to our employees. I can tell you, you're going to have wide scale, um, uh, wide scale, um, I don't know if it's anger or uh, concern, or we've had a lot of people leave the city because of, of uh, uh, you know, looking for different salaries, uh, you know. Uh, we've had a lot of turnover in our departments. I'm just being candid with you. We put one cola for the second part of this on hold. Um, I could see if you wanted to, you know, adjust. And I've, I've given you the numbers in regard to, um, in regard to what the colas are. It's eighty thousand dollars per percentage. Um, but my philosophy in in presenting this budget to you, and it's your budget, but my proposed budget 
was to raise the tide essentially, or, or, or high tide raises all boats. I, we, I think trying to get in to the minutia when we've got this meeting and the next meeting, um, I don't think that's workable. Um, but I, once again, if it, you know, it depends on how you, I, I think we're, you know, this is uh, uh, responding to a salary survey is surgical. Um, and what we're talking about right now are some broad strokes. So that, that's where we're at right now. Uh, we're on first reading um, and um, there's a motion and a second to pass the budget. And it, we're certainly open to amendments if you if uh, an amendment to the main motion with regard to the amount of COLA. But I think that's really what we're talking about. I, I, I think really getting into it in regard to a surgical adjustment in regard to position by position by position, I don't think that's, I don't think that's feasible between now and December 1st you know, or equitable, frankly, but that's, that's for you guys to decide. Council member Coach Meyer. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, and I certainly appreciate what you're saying, Council member Trent and uh, Council member Bruce. So it, it's a, it's a huge project. I did work for an organization where we did do that, where we brought the lower end up and kept the higher end either static or just remained static while the lower end came up, but it's a, it, it's a, it's a study. And it's something you have to do and you have to look at it. And there's a lot of work involved with it. We, we don't have the time, but we did uh, only, we did take away the second half of the COLA, the 2022. So they only have the 2021 for, 20, for now. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so uh, I, 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 that you, that's a tall order that you want. And I think it's something we certainly should look at. But I, I think uh, in the interest of getting this budget done, which we have to have done by December, uh, I think we just need to move forward. Okay, so um, any other comments? Yeah. Sorry, Mr. please Mayor. raise your hand if you have, who's got, who's got a comment? Council Member Moore? Thank you, you know, um, um, I, I, I will say that, uh, um, gosh, where do I begin? I think, um, we have indeed lost a lot of employees. Um, and, um, I really believe that, um, uh, we need to do what we can to, to keep them here. Uh, and we are extremely fortunate to, to have city employees that have stuck with us, for a very, very, very long time. Uh, and that's not something I wanna lose as a city. Uh, and I value that. And so, I, you know, I, I certainly value, uh, you know, some of the things that you bring up, uh, Councilor Tran, uh, but uh, I, I think that, um, you know, speaking for myself only that, that um, I do want our employees to, to get a 3%, non-represented employees to get 3%. Raise. I mean, they work hard day in, day out, um, and uh, I, I don't want to lose more people. Uh, and so um, that's kind of what kind of comes to my mind, um, you know, uh, with your comments. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Thanks. Okay. Councilmember Sefford Austin. Thank you, Mayor. And um, briefly, I, I, I do understand um, what Council Member Huang is saying in terms of if and when, or if, if, if the economy does not turn around, then how do we justify the 3% increase right now? And so um, that's the question um, you know, that is being raised because those same people could potentially lose their jobs, right? So it's just coming from that perspective of how do we navigate if our economy doesn't do well moving forward? And I, you know, so I think that's worth discussing, um, but I also do appreciate what staff does and I'm, I, we're not you know, by any means undermining their, their, work, their workload and the work that they do. It's just a matter of how do we move forward, you know, 2022, 2023, if the economy doesn't do any better. Okay. Councilor Verso. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, 
a council member a separate thoughts because that's I think was the biggest thing my concern is if dropping the three percent for twenty twenty one and having nothing in twenty twenty two or splitting it down to a marginal number to get something back in twenty twenty two. That's my big concern. To give them nothing in twenty twenty two and get the big big one in twenty twenty one and have nothing in twenty twenty two, that's my biggest fear. I'd rather see it split somehow to get something in 21 and get something in 22 instead of saying we're going to wait till 21. We may not have enough. And I don't even think we're going to have enough to tell you the truth. I can see how everything is. And then we're going to go back to our, to our represented uh, contract suit to do this. So I understand what you're telling me, Mayor, no furloughs, no layoffs, but that could happen if we, you know, if we drop this big bundle that possibly could happen. So I just want everyone to just remember that it comes 2021 where there's nothing to give 2022. We're also going back to a representative folks because their contracts up in 21, we may have to do the same thing. So I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there just for, just so everyone knows. That was, that was my thoughts on that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. The 3% represents $240,000. And I think in regard to where we're at right now with regard to the market, um, you know, we, uh, we're on the verge of these vaccines being released. I think, um, you know, uh, this is, as, as Tim Johnson has said before, that this is really an artificial interference with the marketplace that we are really going to see, in my opinion, a, um, uh, a bounce back once they open the marketplace. It's just, you know, you've got the artificial uh, uh, interference with the marketplace because of the COVID-19. What I mean by that is it's not like a natural disaster uh, where the stores have been destroyed or there have been some sort of, you know, everything is there. It's just a matter of, you know, being able to get uh, people out uh, into the marketplace, uh, literally. Um, okay. Um, okay, I see, uh, Councilor Tran, did you wanna speak again? And then Councilor Barzon Honda. Uh, yes, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to follow up on uh, the uh, uh, comment from uh, Council Member Russo. Um, I, I said before, I mean, I willing to consider uh, for a different uh, amount simply because I do want to let staff know that we do value them. We do appreciate the work that they do. So maybe not a full 3%, but somewhere lesser than a 3%, so that we can show them that we do value them, we do appreciate them, and this is our good faith effort. But at the same time, send a message to the community, to our neighbors that who lost their job or on follow that, hey, we, we try to do our best, okay? We've, we'll, we'll feel you, we understand what you're going through, but at the same time, we try to take a little care, you know, a good care of our staff here. That's the message I want to send. The, the, the second thing is, um, I don't want to bring this up initially, uh, but for those of you who know me, I'm very straightforward. I'll say it and then I will forget tomorrow. We were still friends. But the email that I received today, the response from a day to uh, council member Baruso, I read multiple times and I offended because somebody said that um, the staff that that uh, have a conversation with a day that they basically said something to the effect of, you know, anything less than three percent is an insult. You know, I work for someone too, but if my employer offer me a pay increase be it a 1%, half a cent, 2%, I am grateful. Why? Because I still have my job. So when I read that email, you know, I, I'm offended. Well, I think the people who work here have been offended for going six years without a COLA. Um, many of them left it, it, you know, the, they had somebody uh, who worked right outside his front office, who went over to Lake Haven after being here for less than a year to make more money. And she was upset that she had to leave, but you know, she needed to for financial reasons. We just, you know, 
and we've been trying to get them a cola. What we're really trying to do again is raise the, you know. Um, so I, I hear what you're saying, and it's not for me to debate with you. But I thank you very much, Councilmember Tran, and it's important that uh, that your voice be heard. Council President Honda. Um, thank you. I think that the council has put a lot of work into the budget and trying to get to where we are tonight. And I appreciate that the mayor has uh, been working with us this year. Uh, not that you haven't always worked with us, but this year you have certainly um, been more agreeable. Shall we say, shall we say it that way? <laughs> Growth. <laughs> uh, you know, we got some uh, positions that were really important to us and that will move our council goals forward. And I think that's really very, very important because that wasn't there when I first saw the budget. I was concerned about that. I think uh, going forward as a city, we have to watch spending. And we have to be very, very mindful of spending. We are in a recession. We're in a pandemic that, you know, it could be till next summer uh, until everyone has the availability of getting the vaccine if they want. But not only do we need a vaccine, we need a treatment for COVID-19. You know, we need the two things, not just the vaccine. So it, it could be a very long time before we're back to what we think is normal. And in that time period, when our families are hurting, our businesses are closing, and we're trying really hard to keep them open, we have to, as a city, be very, very mindful of what we spend. When someone comes to us at FedRAC and they, they want us they want to buy a truck or something for their department because it was in the budget and they, they could do that. We have to look at that. Is it the right time? Just because it's in the budget doesn't mean that it's necessarily the right time for that truck to be purchased. Or is it okay to purchase seven vehicles at, at one shot? Or should those be spread out throughout the year so that we have a better flow of, of money in the city. So as a council, I would ask that we look very carefully at the financial reports each and every month. We, we look at the vouchers and see where the money's going because that's, that's where you're gonna see where the money's going is in those, those vouchers. It might take you a couple of hours on a Sunday night, that's what it takes me, but I go through them each and every month. And um, just be very, very mindful of where the money is going. So uh, thank you very much. And thank you, Council, for your work on this. I understand where you're coming from, Hong. And I respect your opinion. And um, but I, I think it's time that we move this forward and continue the process of uh, moving the city forward and getting ready to uh, face 2021. Thank you. Okay. Um, it's been a motion and a second. Um, is there any further discussion? Uh, may I, if I may? Uh, oh. uh, Council Member Tran. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Council President um, Honda. Um, I just want to I just want to to uh, remind Council that we have asked for an IT position, and if we not to commit the three percent, the full three percent on 2021, some of the saving could be used to fund that IT position that we said we needed. Okay, council. 
Uh, Councilor Tran, are you done? Yes, you sir. More? Thank you. Okay. No, I'm Councilor not. Moore, were you, uh, Councilor Moore, were you going to say something? Yeah, thank you. Um, um, I guess um, I'll formulate this in a question. Um, when we do our budget adjustments, I mean, there could be another opportunity to look at an IT position like we did last time we hired a, an IT person. Is that correct, Mayor? Yeah, actually, in the uh, in the budget amendment we did last year, um, exactly. or excuse me, it was this year. I know it seems like a long, it seems like a year ago now. Yeah. Um, when we did the budget adjustment early this year, remember we added the litter control people, um, you know, with that uh, with that truck. That that is something that you could take a look at. Um, let, let's ask real quickly. I think Councilmember Tran brings up until he had said that I it had, it had you know I'd, I'd not forgotten, but it wasn't at top of mind. Um, but just for the information, um, uh, it's not something that we had been discussing uh, most recently. Um, and I think that we're talking about the administrative assistant position for IT. Thomas, can you please rem remind the council how much we were uh, dis how much we were talking about for that position? Uh, if you give me a moment to bring it up, I can. Uh, I was not prepared to answer that question right away, but it was roughly <laughs> roughly somewhere somewhere around seventy thousand, I think. But look, give me uh, fifteen seconds. I'll pull it up. And it's the AA position, is that right? Yes, that's correct. So let me, let me, let me, hold on. Let me, let me uh, throw something out here. So uh, council, remember each percentage point is $80,000. A half a percentage point is 40,000, which is almost exactly half of that administrative position. Um, so uh, not to just do this on the fly, but, um, we want to, we all want to, you know, I can tell you this, Council Member Tran, everybody here wants to make sure that everybody else's voice is heard and respected. And um, let me, let me run this by, you could always, one of the, one of the options that you could pursue, just as, a, let me just throw this out as a conversation generator at 11.30 p.m., uh, is um, you could reduce the, uh, the COLA to 2.5, free up 40,000. And then the only question to Thomas would be, whether a halftime position for an AA position would be of use and benefit for IT. Just a thought out there. And I don't, I don't know if that would capture um, at, at halftime. I don't know if, if you could um, compensate for the, uh, the benefits that would probably go along with that as well. But um, Thomas. All right, Mayor. Um, it, the total ongoing cost uh, for that position was budgeted at uh, seventy-five thousand nine forty-eight, and that was actually with, I believe, a two percent uh, increase for twenty-one, uh, based on the figures that I had. So, um, just just for the record, that that number could skew, you know, a thousand or, or two either way. Um, and then twenty twenty-two was eighty thousand nine fifty-six. Okay, so and if if the council, let me go back. So uh, if uh, the council would have the option of either um, shaving a full percentage off of the COLA uh, to free up that money, and that'd be a 2% COLA and free up the position for your IT position, or they could go 2.5 and do a halftime position, or they could leave it the way it is. May I, is that right? Uh, yes, Councilor Tran. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, I, I really want to appreciate uh, your offer and and uh, uh, the fact that you allow me to uh, to be heard um, on the dais. I, uh, I I just want you to know that I sincerely uh, appreciate that. Um, so to follow up with that, I uh, I can live with two percent uh, pay increase so that we can allow IT department to have uh, some help, uh, full-time help. Um, I can live with that if the rest of the council agree to it. Mm. And if it's acceptable to you too. That may be the compromise bill, Senator. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's an old joke. Um, council, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, can people, uh, Council President Honda, you've had your hand up. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So. I was thinking if we did 2.5, hired the IT person, um, I was actually thinking full-time until Thomas gave the new number, but then 
at budget adjustment time found the 0.5 to, to bump that back up to three. Because we know we'll have money at budget adjustment time. I mean, generally we do. I don't know after 2020, who knows? 2020 is 2020. Okay, so say that again. So if we did 2.5, okay. hired the IT person, and then at budget adjustment time, found 0.5 to bump it up to three, then in 2021, they would still get the 3%, but not all at one time. It would be at the end of the, closer to the um, middle end of the year. With all due respect to Council President Honda, I think by, um, how should I say this, banking that we will have money in the future to give 0.5%, uh, especially during this downturn in, in economy, uh, I, I think I would rather not do that. I would rather to spend the money that we think we have. Uh, so I'm comfortable with the 2%, knowing that we can fund this, um, the pay raises, and the full-time position for IT department, and not um, banking on what's going to happen in the future. I think that's the, that's the easiest way to do, the cleanest way to do. Um, so that's, that's, that's my input. Is that I, in the I've form said, of... Oh, go ahead. I've said over and go over, ahead. IT... IT supports every single department and hopefully reduces the workload of other people and in other departments. If, if IT was fully staffed, they probably would do that. Um, I, I, still, I still want to see somehow the 3% and I mean, I'm willing to, to compromise and, but I'd like somewhere to know that we're still looking to get that 3% by the end of 2021. Okay, let's let's move over to, if I could, thank you, Council President Honda. Council Member Correa, and I, I was going to ask whether uh, Council Member Tran was gonna put this in the form of a motion, but he hasn't done that yet. Let's move this over to Council Member uh, Kraft. Yeah, let, me, let me call this out real quick, but at some point the hour is late and we just, at some point we'll just need a motion to be made and start discussing motions. Council Member Kraft? I, I just have a quick question for Thomas. Would yeah. a half-time um, IT person be helpful? Um, I'd be lying if I said any any position wouldn't be helpful. Um, and in fact, Mayor Farrell and I had discussed a half-time position um, prior to the recommended budget as well. Um, it just didn't make it at the cards. <laughs> but that's, um, you know, I mean, it just, it is what it is. There, there was a lot of asks and, and to be completely honest, um, IT did get quite a bit of funding uh, for a lot of security initiatives, which, which we do need. And um, based on, on what we were, the, the work plan and, and how we are going to tackle this, we were just going to have to prioritize a lot more than we have in the past. Um, so, so that we could achieve those. So to answer your question, yes, a half time is valuable to IT. Um, and, and that is something that the mayor and I had discussed. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Councilmember Moore, did you have another uh, another comment? Uh, not at this time, but I may chime in again. I'll, I'll take my hand down. Councilmember Moore, I mean, excuse me, Coach Moore. Uh, thank you, Mayor. You know, um, what we're not remembering is that with uh, the new president in the new year, there may be money coming to the city in particular for cybersecurity, for IT. I think that's gonna be one of the um, most likely, uh, you know, they're going to give money for first responders. They're going to be giving money to cities and counties and states. But I think that um, there may be money coming for um, IT 
because they realize how important that is. And so I'm wondering if Thomas would be willing to wait until, you know, mid next year when money comes into the city so we can talk about this position again. Okay, uh, council, I, uh, one second. Uh, it is 1138 PM, is there a motion? Excuse me, there is a motion, there is a second. Is there an amendment to the main motion? Uh, Council Member Sefa Dawson? Yeah, um, thank you, uh, Council Member Kochmar. I think that's a great idea, but I believe it would be um, helpful to IT if they at least get the part-time now and then increase that position if and when that money becomes available. Okay. Councilor Bertrand, do you have a motion? Or excuse me, not a motion. There, are, there is a motion on the floor with a second. Do you have an uh, an, an amendment to the motion? Uh, yes, Mayor. Uh, I, I, I'll try. Uh, I probably need some help here. Uh, I move to authorize a two percent uh, pay increase for the non-representative employees, and uh, to authorize the IT department to hire one full-time um, admin position. And do you mean that as an amendment to the main motion that's on the floor, which is the, the uh, uh, passage of first reading for uh, the budget? Yes, sir. Okay. So 2% and then 2% uh, COLA and hiring a full-time position in IT. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, all right. Council, um, is there a second to that motion? I'll second. Okay. Okay. There's been a motion in the second uh, to address a, uh, an amendment to the main motion that would, uh, in addition to the other things that have been included in the main motion, take the COLA from 3% to 2% in, in uh, uh, 2021 and use that savings, which, is, which would be $80,000, to hire a full-time IT assistant. Is that, uh, Councilmember Tran, is that the understanding of your motion? Yes, sir. That's very clear. Okay. There's been a motion a second with, re with regard to that amendment. Is there any discussion on that amendment? Hearing none. All those in favor of that amendment? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The amendment, uh, the amendment passes. Um, now, as to the main motion, uh, to Council President Honda's motion, which was seconded, is there any further discussion on the main motion uh, to move forward as uh, understood by consensus and as will be amended prior to second amendment? And once again, we'll make sure that we get a full summary to Council uh, and make sure that it's clear uh, exactly what, what's contained in there, but I think we uh, have come to a common understanding. Um, uh, is there any further discussion? Council Member Dawson, did you want to say something? Oh, your hand is up. Uh oh, again. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, Susan's worried about my my uh, cola intake. Um, <laughs> I do have something to say, though. I just put my hand up. Oh, Council President Honda, go ahead. Um, I I still I I feel that this budget needs a seven zero vote, and the the reason I feel that is we've worked really really hard to get to yep. where we are. Um. However, and I will vote for I will vote for it, but I, I want it made very clear. I want to see where we're going to get the 1% in 2021. I want that to be a priority. And um, I'm hoping that in March or April when we're doing a budget adjustment, because we will have a budget adjustment, we don't know how big it's going to be, that we will be able to do that. In line with count, thank you, Council President Honda. In line with that, there will likely be uh, a proposal uh, put together if the funds are available for some sort of COLA for 22 at that time as well, just to let Council know. Uh, Council Member Coachmore, do you have a comment? Yes, thank you very much, Mayor. I was going to clarify you mean the 1% to give it back to the um, uh, employees that was, we're going to get the 3%. Is that what you're talking Correct. about? Yeah, Correct. thank you. I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Council, now Council Member Moore has his hand up. What do you Thank got? Thank you. You know, Mr. Mayor, um, if you recall two years ago, it was such a fun night when we were working <laughs> on passing that budget and 
And at second reading, yes. <laughs> at second reading, and there's just some fireworks that were just um, all over. Um, and you know, it, it simply put, it was it was a lively debate, a spirited debate, because uh, as I've always said, uh, this is probably the single most important thing we do as policymakers. And this is the engine to our city, as I tell our students in our school district. And so um, I, uh, I'm i gonna say this really slowly. And that's, uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I think um, you have done an extraordinary job with this budget. Thank you. Um, and uh, I think it, it is a true testament, an actual authentic testament that um, you treated us as policymakers, uh, partners, as you always refer to us as. Um, and I really do feel like there was a spirit of cooperation um, um, uh, uh, for us to work together on our desire, our budget uh, that you've proposed. Um, and I think, um, you know, I, I think in my seven years of, of service to this uh, city, I can say today, tonight, uh, that this is a uh, budget that has been collaborated over um, and has uh, has um, desires of the council and your desires as the chief operating officer of the, of the city, so to speak. Uh, and so uh, thank you for that, uh, seriously. Um, and uh, I think, you know, moving forward, I think there's always... Uh, um, innovative opportunities to continue to look at other strategies uh, to get the public involved. I do, I do worry that we didn't really get enough public engagement, uh, but I know that we tried. Uh, I know that we tried. Um, and so that, that would be my only uh, two cents. Um, and I, I appreciate it in terms of what you just said, which is you value all voices here in the council. Uh, and so Councilmember Tran, thank you for um, adding your two cents um, um, here tonight. Um, and, and Council President Honda, thank you. Um, uh, I think uh, in your role as Council President, I, I have really have seen a huge effort of collaboration and working together with this as our leader. And so I really appreciated your efforts. Um, and more important, I should say, uh, I appreciate what you just stated, which is, um, we need to find that 1%. Um, I think, uh, Mr. Mayor, you said something that was really critical that I really hope we're hearing, which is six years, six years of, of no pay raise. Uh, and I understand that times are difficult um, right now. Um, and you know, certainly I would be grateful to have a job, but still, I, I think it's the dignity of our employees um, and uh, ensuring that we send out a message of we value you. So I really do urge that we work together on that um, at, at the next budget adjustments. Uh, but I absolutely think that um, adding that IT uh, staff is, is, is really important. Um, I mean, I had that conversation with Council President Honda uh, just a couple of days ago. And so I, I value that um, compromise. So uh, with that, I'll just, by en I'll just end by saying thank you. I think this is a really good budget. Um, and um, I feel really good about it. And, and I appreciated your efforts. That's been very, very different from the last, what would you say, three cycles? Um, I don't know how many cycles we've gone through this, but it's, it's good. So I appreciate it. Thank you. And Wendy, Personal if you're growth. listening, <laughs> Mayor Farrell's doing well. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. All right, Council. There's been a, an amendment, but now we're on to the main motion. Um, there's been a motion and a second and a great discussion um, uh, for uh, the, on first reading. All those in favor of the budget for first reading. Aye. 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 Opposed. It's unanimous. Thank you, Council, um, and uh, really proud of you guys. Thank you so much. Great work. Okay. Um, now we just have one more item before we get to our Council reports. Item D. Council Bill 793, Ordinance uh, 2021 Property Tax Levy. Um, the staff report was provided earlier by a day. Um, Stephanie, is there any public comment? No, Mayor, we don't have anybody waiting. All right, would the city clerk please read the ordinance title? 
Yes, I will. Council Bill 793, Ordinance 2021, Property Tax Levy, an ordinance of the City of Federal Way, Washington, relating to fixing the property tax amount for the year of 2021. Okay. Um, Council President Honda, do you have a motion? I move to forward the proposed ordinance to the December 1st, 2020 Council meeting for a second reading and enactment. Second. There's been a motion in the second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? It's unanimous. Uh, wow, we're an agreeable bunch tonight. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, council, now we're on to council reports and uh, we start on the other end of the imaginary dais. Uh, council member Kochmar. Thank you very much, Mayor Farrell. I'll make it really quick because it's so late, but I want to just give credit to some folks. Um, you know, there's nothing more important than what we can do right now during the holidays is to take care of each other. That's really, really important. I've always believed that. And uh, I was so fortunate to get a call from some friends over in Yakima, some people I'd helped, uh, Dr. Raul Garcia, who had run for governor and uh, was unsuccessful, and, and some other folks, including uh, uh, Mayor of Rich, Rich, Ridgeview in Yakima, some fabulous Hispanic women, uh, came over with um, 100 boxes of food. They were actually, they were head of boxes of food. And it was uh, from the farmers over in Eastern Washington it was potatoes and milk and cheese and eggs and um, frozen chicken, frozen peas and vegetables. And they, they were large boxes. And they were gonna actually open up a tent at the commons and start giving it away to people. And I said, no, 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 no. Uh, so I called back at the, at the chamber and in a long story short, we, we, we had it taken over to the multi-service center. Meantime, I called the day center. I called the people with Family Caregivers Network. I called uh, Pastor Stefan McNeil with the Citadel Christ the King Fellowship Church. And also uh, then he called uh, a pastor at one of the Hispanic churches. So we made it um, with some minority churches involved and uh, the homeless and the multi-service center. And not only did we have the 100 boxes, but we got another 100 boxes. And I got a call yesterday telling, uh, for the Hispanic community. And I, I, uh, it was all parceled out. Some went to the day center, some went to the churches, some went to the community caregivers who, provide, who they cook the food for the homeless uh, once a week. And as does uh, Christ the King Fellowship. And I, I wanna tell you, um, I, it made me feel so good just to be a part of that group. And it actually came, it was actually purchased by the United Methodist Church and a person who lives in Federway by the name of Christopher, who belongs to the United Methodist Church, is the one who suggested it in the first place. So a whole network of folks came together and we got 200 boxes of food right at the holidays for our people who, who are in need in our community. Thank you for that. Let me tell you that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councilmember Moore. Well, that's a tough act to follow. Jeez, uh, that's great work, um, uh, Councilmember Coachmar. Uh, thank you for that. Um, you know, um, just um, I got nothing to say other than just say thank you to my colleagues, thank you to uh, the mayor for a job well done with the budget, um, and appreciate the the work of the of putting together the legislative agenda. Um, I am interested in, uh, uh, and I'll be working with Bill, potentially, uh, Mr. Mayor, on the uh, copper wire theft, and we'll, we'll just have a conversation to see where that leads us to. Um, and um, with that, um, that is it. Thank you. Very good. Look forward to that conversation. And I'm, uh, the, uh, the work on the budget was all of us, so thank you. All right, uh, Council Member Kraft. I just want to say thank you to all of the, uh, all of my colleagues, the council members and to you, Mayor, and all the department directors for the work on the budget, answering all of our questions, uh, staying up late, uh, you know, uh, for me, maybe even asking repetitive questions. I really appreciate it. I just want to give a shout out to one of our local businesses of Poverty Bay. Um, the coffee and breakfast place is 
so some place that I usually would frequent, uh, and they closed. Unfortunately, they were closed when um, COVID first hit, and I just recently saw the update that uh, they the owners were selling Poverty Bay to Fusion so that it could be used as a place for um, the people who would be using Fusion as a shelter to get trade skills uh, as a restaurant worker, as a waitress. And I think that that's a really awesome opportunity for our city. And um, it's that collaborative kind of work to help people um, not just provide temporary solutions, but more permanent solutions is a really great um, aspect coming from our community. So I just wanted to give uh, that company a shout out because I, I have personally appreciated that um, as a federal way resident and I also just wanted to say that if anyone else is uh, was like me on Sunday when I heard all of the new orders that were going to be put in place it's right now can be a really difficult time so just make sure that everybody takes some self-care it's especially at this time when you know the sun is not out often and then we're all told that we as social beings have to not be have to be socially distant it's important to make sure that we all get some self-care. So thank you. And I hope that we're all taking care of ourselves. All right, thank you very much. Okay, Councilor Tran. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just, uh, once again, want to thank you, Mayor Farrell, uh, Council President Honda, uh, the rest of the council members and uh, directors for working together and, uh, you know, put this budget together and, uh, um, I really appreciate that, uh, especially thanks to the mayor. Um, I do feel, I just want to repeat what uh, Council Moore said earlier. Uh, I do feel that this budget cycle, um, I feel uh, value. I feel my ideas, my uh, voice is heard. And uh, that really means a lot to me. So uh, thank you, Mayor Farrow. Um, so with that, um, I just want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. All right, thank you. Okay, and Council Member Peruso. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I wanted to just repeat, just about reiterate what everything and echo what everyone else said. You know, thank you to my colleagues, thank you, Council, thank you, Mayor, uh, for just some enjoyable budget experience here and the day. And it's like uh, Council Member Kraft said, you know, answering questions I've written the emails out on the weekends, and I know that uh, you yourself has answered them. When I come back in a day, thank you for answering and all the directors. So other than that, I know it's a long night. Uh, I think we did a great job today, uh, tonight, but thank you everyone. And I'm going to end. Thank you. Very good. Council member Asefa Dawson. Thank you, Mayor. And I do echo what everybody said. Um, thank you so much for um, the uh, collaboration that we did see tonight. And I know we're here late almost midnight, but uh, we got it done. And I think that's, we can we can go to bed knowing that this is over with. Um, that said, um, thank you, um, Council Member um, Kraft for what you said about self-care and about um, everything that's going on. And to top it off, uh, for me, especially, there's war going on in Ethiopia right now. So that's also unsettling. And so it's, I. Um, this year has really, I, it just dawned on me how daunting it's become and it's just exhausting to say the least. But um, at the same time, we move on, we do what we need to do to, to have some form of normalcy when it's really not normal. But um, um, thank you for what you said. And I think I'll really take it to heart and, and see what self-care looks like and how it could even be accomplished. Um, despite all the negativity and all the um, uh, chaos that's around us. But thank you so much. And um, thank you for listening to me. And um, yeah, I am honored to be on this, on this, honestly, on this great council um, for the camaraderie. And I appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you. Council President Honda. Thank you. Well, good work, everyone. You did it. Very proud of all of you. Uh, thank you, Mayor, for your work with us. Uh, Thanksgiving is just around the corner. I guess it's next week. I'm not really ready for it. And um, I know that there's guidelines out there that we don't always um, 
agree with and some don't understand. And they're very difficult to even listen to, you know, not to have your family over to wear a mask in your own home, that kind of stuff. But if you are going to have people over, please wear a mask in your home. Please encourage them to wear a mask in your home. Have sanitizer out. Be safe. Because we don't want to go into the rest of the holiday season after December 14th on the kind of lockdown that we're on right now. We want our restaurants to open up again and our businesses to go back to the percentage of customers that they could have. So um, take care of your neighbors. See if they need some food for Thanksgiving. There's food out there. There's a, um, places where Thanksgiving dinners can be had. And um, just check with, with people you know, see if they need help and direct them to the help. Wash your hands and wear your masks. Good night. Good night. Hope you all have a great uh, uh, Thanksgiving. Thank you for all you do for the city. I'm proud to be, uh, I'm proud to work with each and every one of you. Have a nice evening. And thank you to staff for all your hard work. Bye, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Great job. We're thank adjourned. you. Bye-bye.